Theo, A Dark Mafia Romance Written by Raven Scott Narrated by Jack Callahan Chapter 1 Ilya Counting my tips carefully, I set my bills in order from most crumpled to least, ascending, and a tiny smirk quirked my lips. The notes had obviously seen too much of the inside of a wallet, but I wasn't complaining because they'd go right into my savings jar at home. Pleasantness spread across my chest, but I knew this feeling would only last until Saturday night when my patrons realized they had to go to church on Sunday. They'd start feeling guilty for going to a strip club, buy their wives nice flowers, get their kids a football, and act like they hadn't seen their pastor here the night before. Which was ironic and kind of sad and pathetic, but hey, it was money in my pocket. Immorality at its finest. Ilya, mija, I thought you would be gone by now. Rohe's thick Mexican accent slithered up my spine, and I turned away from my money to smile at him. Short and squat, his beady eyes watched me intently from deep in his face. It wasn't surprising to me a man like him surrounded himself with hot, half-naked chicks half his age. He treated all the girls like a creepy stepdad that wanted to bang us, but also innocently take us out for ice cream if we were upset. Don't you ride a bike? It's late. His roughened and textured skin from years of sun and age wrinkled when he smiled, and Rohe's narrowed eyes scanned me under furrowed, bushy brows. I knew what Rohe would see. Some plank of a body topped in dyed pink hair that brought out the green in my eyes. I have curves, but you're just never gonna see them. No one will. Natural brown hair wasn't going to make me stand out here, so I had to get creative. I wore a full torso leotard and didn't have the option to take it off to arouse interest. Of course, being fully clothed in a strip club in itself was unusual, but it often wasn't enough on its own. I'll be fine, Rohe. I faked a Spanish accent at work just because it got me better tips, this being a border town and all. His smile morphed into a frown. It's not like it makes a difference. 3 a.m. or 4 a.m.? Actually, I think it's better because people are up and starting to get ready for their commutes and stuff. If you say so, I'll give you a ride if you need it. Like I'd ever get into a car with you or show you where I live. Even so, I just smiled and nodded gratefully, and Rohe wandered off down the lane, I guess, toward his office in the back. Stripping wasn't a very difficult job, and I was happy just to be making money at this point. Turning back to my neat stacks, I pulled up a stool and sat down to focus. I'll count it again just to make sure. I'm really bad at math. Grumbling to myself, I picked up the smallest stack of twenties and carefully plucked off the top bill. Twenty, forty, sixty. Setting it down, I snatched my substantially larger stack of tens and took a stabilizing breath. Seventy. Eighty, ninety, one hundred, one hundred ten, one hundred twenty. This was the hard part, and my brows furrowed in concentration as I grabbed the fives. My brain just didn't do math. I got languages much easier. Sure, I had to count using schoolhouse rock songs, but I also learned six languages easy peasy. Frankly, I'd gladly give up the ability to multiply high numbers to be able to go anywhere and talk the talk. Wait, I messed up. Groaning softly, I shook my head viciously and set down my fives to start over. Maybe I'd be better at math if I hadn't dropped out of school. Then again, I know enough math to get my GED, so... Scowling slightly, the crease between my brows deepened and I clenched my jaw hard behind thinned lips. Ilya! My mind blanked at the call, and I smacked my palm against the table as a frustrated, low shriek burst from my lips. What? I can't count for shit. Come on. I was louder than I intended, 
but I'd worked here for months and everyone knew I sucked at math. Glancing up as my face flamed in embarrassment, I chuffed harshly as Marcella shuffled toward me to pull up a stool. I've been trying to count this for five minutes, okay? Just relax, I'll help you out. I must have had, like, severe dyslexia, but for math, not words, and I rubbed my palms up my face and into my hair to groan in dismay. Ready? Don't ask me that. I feel like an idiot. Propping my elbow on the table to hold my cheek in my palm as Marcella started slowly counting my bills while I watched. This ugly sensation clung to my ribs, and I scratched my crown absently as silence rang in my ears. My face twisted in a grimace, and my eyes narrowed on her hands as she started to count while snapping bills from her hand on the table. Thankfully, Marcella didn't say anything to distract me while she helped me out, and I clenched and released my jaw absently. She counted all the twenties and tens, and I scooted a little closer when she got to the fives and ones. This, particularly, was my downfall, and I licked my lips heavily as anxiety gnawed at my gut. I was great at a lot of things, but it was simple math that kicked me in the ass. Ugh. So, your total is two hundred thirty-one dollars. Do you want me to do it again to make sure? I shook my head hard, and Marcella let out a twinkle of a laugh as she put all my bills in a single stack and handed it to me. Flipping her long brown curls over her shoulder, she smiled with a bright glimmer in her eye, and flames licked my cheeks as I took the bills. What are your plans for tomorrow? You're coming in, right? Tomorrow's Friday. Of course I'm coming in. I have Monday and Tuesday off, though. Why? I tucked my bills into my money pouch wrapped around my waist, and Marcella rocked back on her stool to shake her head. Really, it was just a glorified fanny pouch, but I didn't want to keep so much in something as stealable as a purse or losable as a wallet. I'm not slated to come in until 10 p.m., though, so I'll probably get some stuff done. I have to go to the store and find something to eat and stuff. My roommate never shops because she buys junk. Okay, I'll already be here. I get off at one, but I'll be sticking around anyway. Nodding in acknowledgement, I stood up and smoothed my shirt over my pouch as Marcella smiled up at me. I'll see you tomorrow, Elia. Yeah, thanks for your help, Marcella. Shuffling around her as her smile brightened, I pulled up my jeans over my hip absently. Patting my fanny pouch to make sure it was there, I felt around for my keys beyond the fake leather. Nodding, my anxiety of doing basic counting disappeared as I pushed open the door to the sales floor of the building. The DJ was walking around with a broom and picker-upper thing, and the catwalks had been turned off in favor of the big lights hanging from the ceiling. For a strip club, this place was fairly clean. We didn't serve food, and the drinks were outrageously priced, so people didn't want to spill them and waste fifteen dollars. Making my way toward the heavy double doors that served as an entrance, I was careful not to touch the chairs and bar stools that hadn't been wiped down yet. The crisp, clear air that filtered through the open door replaced the thickness of sweat and alcohol, and I stepped into the darkest part of the night to inhale deeply. Life was fucking good right now. Striding leisurely toward my bike, I patted my back for my switchblade and smiled at my own light steps and pulled my bike chain key out of my pouch. Glancing up at the neon signs that blazed at passing cars tantalizingly, I rolled my lips between my teeth as a sigh bubbled up in my chest. I mean, working at a strip club wasn't ideal, of course, but it was a job. Riding a bike everywhere wasn't ideal, but it cost nothing. Living in a studio on the verge of being quarantined definitely wasn't that great, but it was a place to live. There was always a but, a silver lining, and things might not be great, but they were good enough. Kneeling down to unlock my bike, I wrapped the chain around the handlebars before backing it up and straddling the seat. My mind whirred slowly as I pushed off toward the street, and I bopped my head absently to glance around. 
At this time of night, the roads were dead. The lights blinked instead of their usual rotations, and if I got too close to downtown, I'd see a lot of crackheads. Which was why I always took the back route. I had the added bonus of working out, too, so that was nice. Sylvie's probably going to be waking up right when I get there. Pursing my lips, I took a breath through my nose as I cruised down the street. I wasn't sure what was happening with her, but I knew Sylvie was being sneaky again. She was clean and doing well. We had a plan to pay off her drug dealer's debt, and she had a job as a busser. But something was wrong. I just couldn't put my finger on it. If Sylvie relapsed, I was dropping her like a hot potato because, fuck that, I dealt with it once. I wasn't dealing with it again. Chapter 2 Ilya Dropping heavily onto my cot to tie my sneaker laces, I glanced over at Sylvie as she draped across her own cot and played Alien Invasion on her phone. I'm heading to the store. Do you want anything in particular? She shook her head, her short bob whipping her cheeks lightly, and my lips thinned under furrowed brows. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I'm getting sick. I'm just not hungry. The bland response was the same one she gave me yesterday, and I simply shrugged it off. Sylvie didn't eat a lot, but I wasn't going to be responsible for her whole person. If you could get me a Vita water, the green one, that'd be great, though. I'll pay you back next Thursday. It's one Vita water, Sylvie. They're like two bucks. Just don't forget to pay your half of the electric bill. She rolled her eyes at me even as a smile stretched her thin lips, and I chuckled softly. I'm heading out. I'll see you later. Okay. Worry sloshed against my ribs when I stood up, and I tightened my fanny pack around my waist and hiked up my jeans as I fought a frown. Heading out of our small efficiency space, I locked the door behind me even though it was about ready to fall off the hinges. That was the one thing I never did get involved with drugs. Long after Sylvie kicked her heroin habit, the effects remained, and she wasn't the same. I stuck with her through it all, but I told her clearly I wouldn't do it again. Whenever she got the itch, she would tell me, and we'd work through it. But I knew she stopped going to NA meetings recently. I suspected she'd stopped paying her drug dealer what she owed. I had a sneaking fear this sick issue she was having wasn't actually being sick, but because she'd started using again and was hiding it from me. Hopping down the stairs to the first floor, I ran my hand through my hair roughly in agitation. I loved Sylvie in a way that only trauma could develop, and we'd gone through so much together that a life without her would be hard. Even so, I'd do it if I had to. Memory swamped my mind's eye as I emerged into the brilliant light of late morning, and I unlocked my bike with practiced movements. Both our parents died when we were young, and Sylvie and I met in a group home when we were teenagers. We decided to run away together, which wasn't nearly as romantic as it should have been, and lived on the streets because it was better. Now both of us were twenty-eight, and I felt like I was finally starting to get my life together. I saved every penny I could, and it was slow going, but at least it was going. Sometimes, I wished I could marry a rich guy and meander my life away in bliss and luxury, but I wasn't going to take the easy way out. My dad once told me that nothing worth earning in life was easy, and I took that to heart. Climbing onto my bike, I reached to rub my chest absently, and my skin tightened and twitched under the friction from my shirt. I'll take the long way to the store. Truth be told, the grocery store was only six blocks from my apartment, but I wanted to enjoy the day. The air was hot but not sticky, and the sun was hard but not blazing. At least not yet. For the slums of San Diego, not dying of heat stroke was an indicator of a good day. Pushing off to cross over the sidewalk and into the street, I lifted my butt off the seat to ease into a steady pace. Thankfully, 
There weren't many hills in this city, and we were far enough from the ocean to avoid getting saturated by salty air. Honestly, I think I did pretty well for myself, all things considered. I didn't have a preferred job, though, and I didn't have the luxury of being picky. Maybe, eventually, I'd try my hand at something else, but what that was, I really had no idea. Also, the taxless money was really nice even though it usually amounted to the same as a 40-hour work week. At least the government wasn't taking half of it. Ah, oh, it's such a nice day. Maybe I should ride around for a while after I put all the stuff away. Snorting, I sat on my bike seat to cruise, and a grim smirk tilted my lips. All the stuff was usually just water, dried vegetables, and just enough deli meat for two sandwiches. There was a bread store that sold nearly expired bread for a dollar, which I could put in the freezer. If I was feeling really wild, I could buy myself some peanut butter and a few apples, and my mouth watered at the notion. Gnawing on my inner cheek as I sailed down the street into a wide turn, I frowned at the grocery store sign hovering above the buildings of a plaza a half mile away. How did my ride go from fifteen minutes to five? Oh, right, I think too much sometimes. Cars zipped past me, and I glanced around at the somewhat nice, kept-up structures around me. This part of town wasn't as well endowed as downtown in the East End, but there weren't many terribly awful spots either. Of course, if I rode a little way south, I'd end up in a hive of drug addicts and dealers, but they mostly stayed on their side of town. The more they stuck together, the less inclined the cops were to bust them. Turning into the grocery store parking lot opposite a small strip mall, I clung close to parked cars to avoid getting hit by someone backing out or pulling in. The bike rack was by the dumpsters on the side of the building, and I bopped my head as I silently went over my pitiful list. I should grab some cat food just in case. Just as the grumble passed my lips, I rounded the front of the store only to grind my heel into the ground. Sylvie stood by the dumpster, in full view, with a guy that looked slimier than a used car salesman. Fumbling to pull my phone out of my pack, I swiped open the camera and zoomed in as a fire sparked in my chest. Glaring at my phone screen, I hit the record button while she handed this guy what looked like thirty dollars. And there, right on the screen, he passed Sylvie a little bag of what I recognized as black tar heroin despite being wrapped in paper inside the dime bag. They weren't even discreet about it. Neither checked around to look for witnesses, and I clenched my jaw hard as betrayal seared my throat. Seething silently, I blew smoke out of my nose, and I videoed Sylvie stuffing the baggie in her pocket before heading around the back of the store. I was, generously, Fifty feet away, and even with my terrible math skills, I knew that was close enough for them to notice me out of the corners of their eyes. What the fuck? What the fuck, Sylvie? The guy waited around a moment before following Sylvie, and my lip curled in disgust. No wonder she wasn't eating. She was using again. I had this shit on video. There was no way she could deny it now. Her lack of appetite had started a few days ago, so she must have used at least twice. Sylvie wasn't one of those people that used five times a day, maybe four or five times a week, when she was at her worst. But this was worse than her worst. My heart pounded hard against my ribs, and I stuffed my phone angrily back into my fanny pack to jerk my bike to the stand. Memories beat against my burning eyes, and shivers raced down my spine. Sylvie and I made a pinky promise so long ago, standing outside a women's shelter in the rain while we waited for the doors to open. With such clarity, I could remember her tone as she explained she wanted to get clean. Determination sparkled so brightly in her eyes even as she regaled me with the tale of her blowing a dude for drug money. Where had that gone? Why did I feel like I was the one strung out? Why did I have the ache that may never go away? Fuck. 
Fuck, Jesus Christ, I can't believe you. Hissing, I was so angry, I jabbed the lock in place and stomped my foot just to release some energy. You bitch. I told Sylvie, I expressly, clearly stated that I would fuck her up if she ever used again and I found out about it. I wasn't going through the mood swings, the sweating, the screaming. Never again. When she was in a good place, I told her straight that she'd be gone. G-O-N-E. Gone. Damn it. Straightening to take a huge breath in an attempt to calm down, I shook my head viciously, and my fake blonde hair clung to my cheeks from the sweat of my ride. Okay, okay, I just need to calm down. I'll do my shopping, I'll bring everything home. I'll go for a super long ride to figure out how to confront her, and then I'm kicking her out. I don't care what she says. Chapter 3 Ilya Tapping my foot furiously as I watched Sylvie unlock the door through pupils narrowed to slits, I didn't try too hard to hide how miserable I felt. It happened in slow motion. The click of the lock, the turn of the knob, and the door popped open. When the barrier swung open, my eyes snapped up and Sylvie's pointed features twisted like a deer getting whacked with a front bumper. Something flashed in her dark eyes, and I knew that she knew she'd been caught. I could tell by the look on her face that she was still under the influence, so it had been less than two hours since she bought that shit behind the dumpster. Well, she won't have anywhere to go but that damn dumpster in a minute. Don't even try to deny it. Get your shit and get the fuck out. To be honest, the drug use was bad enough, but Sylvie had lied to me to do it. The same bullcrap story as every other drug addict. Her face froze at my hard-edged demand, and my eyelid twitched in agitation at the notion that she'd try to lie to me again. I had a pretty all-right phone with a pretty all-right camera and there was no way she'd convince me that what I saw was something else. Ilya, I can explain. That wasn't for me. This girl at work pays me a little to get it for her, like... like a middleman? A harsh guffaw burst from my throat, and I shook my head as Sylvie walked over to me with panic slowly settling on her features. Her voice heightened, developed a little stutter as her mind tried to keep up with her lie, and an ugly black blotch opened up in my chest. Please, I, sw I swear, I didn't use. I wouldn't. I would never jeopardize. Get your shit and get out, or I'll throw you out. In a place like this, there was no lease, no nothing. Just pay my rent keep my head down, and hope ice doesn't show up and clean the building out. Grinding the words through my teeth, I knew there was no help for me if Sylvie didn't leave on her own. Either I physically removed her, or I threw up my hands and walked out. Neither would be painless, I knew, and my heart twisted at the huge fat tears that sprang to her eyes. Sylvie opened and closed her mouth a few times, standing there stupidly, and I grabbed her arm to yank up her thin sweater. She couldn't react fast enough, and I ground my teeth hard at the track marks on her arm. I judged that she'd used three, maybe four times over the past week or two, but the amount didn't matter. Throwing her arm back, I scoffed in disgust when she stumbled a little, and I raked my hand through my hair viciously. How dare you lie to me, Sylvie? Hissing through clenched, aching teeth, my eyes stung with how pathetic she suddenly seemed. I could barely look at her. How dare you? Don't you stand there and lie. Don't say a single word. Either get your shit and get out, or I'll throw you and your shit out the window. Ilya, can we just talk about this, please? I made a mistake, okay? I know it, but... 
Pulling my switchblade out of my fanny pack, I flicked open the pointy end, and Sylvie sputtered a little as her eyes grew big and her face pale. I'm not gonna say it again. She just stood there, staring at my switchblade as I twirled it around, not brandishing it per se, but proving I was serious. Of course, Sylvie didn't need to know how badly my stomach roiled, how weak my knees were. I mean, we went through a lot, and I thought we were best friends. Drugs killed more than just the physical, though. Her dark gaze flickered to mine, and I jutted out my chin in defiance even as I struggled to breathe. My heart pounded hard as she sort of deflated, and Sylvie shuffled heavily over to her cot under which all her stuff was stored. We didn't have much stuff, and Sylvie was very much a sentimental person. Watching down my nose as she sat down heavily, I held my breath in flaming lungs while my heart made a bid to squeeze through my ribs. Holding her head in her palms, she started crying in earnest. My conviction wavered for a fraction of a second. Relapsing didn't mean Sylvie was bad, just that she was weak. She'd done well while sober, and maybe something happened that tipped her over the edge. True, she kicked the habit but it never truly went away. Flames licked my throat and engulfed my spine at the notion that Sylvie would turn to drugs because she felt like she couldn't confide in me. We were supposed to have each other's backs, but I seem to always have yours, and you don't have mine. My switch trembled slightly as I snapped it shut, and the sharp click pulled a hiccup from Sylvie from beyond her palms. Walking over on unsteady legs, I knelt down and didn't try to hide my sneer when she peeked at me through her fingers. The hope that her crying had moved me shimmered in her eyes, and my disgust coated my tongue as my stomach flipped dangerously. I put my hand on her knee, and Sylvie wiped her eyes with a sniffle that grated my ears. Reaching under her cot, I grabbed her duffel bag of shit and stood up too fast for her drugged-up mind and I threw that shit right out the window of our third-story apartment. Sylvie jumped up with a gasp of shock, running to the window and half hanging out of it. I heard the distinct thud of her bag smacking into the pavement, and I propped my fists on my hips when she whirled around to glare hotly at me. A scary kind of cold gripped my bones in a vice, cooling my breaths and slowing my heart even as she trembled with rage. Her duffel bag had some important items in it, expensive stuff from her grandparents that she couldn't dare part with. You better go get that before someone snatches it. I barely heard my own voice over the ringing in my ears, and Sylvie went wide-eyed as she switched emotions. Panic drenched her features, and I watched through a veil of gray when she ran out of the apartment. Shuffling to my own cot, I grabbed the locks I'd bought at the grocery store for an astronomical price, and the metal was frigid in my palms. It'd take me minutes to change out the locks, and I put my knife away to take up a screwdriver instead. Sylvie had clothes and stuff under her cot, but I'd throw that out when I was finished securing the door. I can't believe this grumbling to myself as I worked to unknot my gut and breathe a proper breath. I shook my head and sucked up air through my nose. The heat of my apartment was strangely absent, but I didn't put too much thought into it as I started on the knob. Five years of friendship, extremely close friendship, was just gone. Poof. It'll be fine. It'll suck ass but it'll be fine. Maybe I could squat somewhere to save money. I really didn't make a lot with all things considered, but I had fairly good credit, and I didn't want to ruin that by neglecting my bills. Squatting wasn't new to me, and I scowled under furrowed brows at the dull brass knob as it started to come loose. I'll ask around at work. Marcella has talked about wanting a roommate. In the fifteen minutes it took me to change out both the locks on the door, Sylvie hadn't come back, and I tossed lock parts onto my cot to walk to the window. Her bag was gone, but she was there, 
curled up on the sidewalk, bawling her eyes out. Guilt stabbed my heart, but I shut the window and blocked out the heat of the day to lean on the wall and slide down to my butt. Pulling my knees to my chin, I hugged myself, and the skin on my chest strained and stretched painfully as my ribs threatened to concave on my insides. Don't feel bad. I gave her three chances. She should have taken one of them. Even as I grumbled to myself, my eyes stung and my mouth watered dangerously, and I buried my face in my knees. Don't feel bad. Chapter 4 Ilya Music pumped through my body from all directions, even from the concrete floor, and I reached down to adjust my heel strap absently. A gaping hole had opened up in my chest over the few hours between kicking Sylvie out and heading to work. Everything at home was too quiet, too still, and I couldn't take it. Rohe was shocked when he'd seen I'd come in early, but I simply explained that I was bored at home, so I might as well come in and make some money. And, truth be told, I was glad I came in early, because Rohe put me on VIP, and at least I'd have something else to focus on. Straightening up to fluff my fake, dyed, red hair, I gingerly knocked on the door, and a particular type of excitement and apprehension thickened my blood. VIP meant money, thousands of dollars sometimes, and I hastily tugged my leotard up my chest a little. I couldn't have whatever rich asshole in this room see a huge scar and not tip me, right? Ha ha, not funny. The door swung open, and I plastered a smile on my face as my gaze traveled up. Cool air rushed around me from inside the room, and goosebumps washed my bare arms and legs. The man on the other side of the threshold was taller than me despite my five-inch heels, and I actually had to tilt my head to find his stubbled chin. I'm Ilya. My fake Spanish accent rolled off my tongue expertly, and the man's cheek twitched noticeably to give me a glimpse of a dimple. Hard brown eyes scanned through fine points, and my smile widened when he stepped aside to let me in. Thank you. He must have been a bodyguard by the number of scars on him. Just visible, there had to be a dozen, but I couldn't focus on looking at them at that moment. Three men in nice suits sat on the crescent sofa, two occupied by my co-workers, and some relief seeped into my veins. Sometimes, VIP was a risk, especially if I was alone and the rich guys were assholes. I didn't think they'd let you cover so much skin here, Minovia. The man sitting in the middle, by himself, scanned me as I sauntered over to him, and I could feel my smile turn brittle. Why don't you take that off slow, huh? Aw, oh, getting to the good part already? That's a little fast for me. The guy with Marcella's ass in his face burst out laughing at my response, and I sat down in middle guy's lap as he went red. Surprise tickled my chest at the brightness in his eyes, his face tinging pink with appreciation, not anger, and I wound my arms around his neck. Let's savor the moment. You got me. That was a good one, he chuckled, his hand sliding up my back, and I played my part biting down on my bottom lip when he leaned in. I'm Matteo. Ilya. I mean, my name was foreign enough that most people thought it wasn't real anyway, and Matteo's brows rose in surprise. It's a pleasure to meet you, Matteo. I'm sure it is. Do you actually dance, or do you just shake your ass? Gesturing to my pale pink leotard, Mateo's surprise boiled down to curiosity, and I hummed softly. Patting his shoulder, I popped up, and he sat back on the sofa to prop his head in laced fingers. You're the first person that's ever asked me if I danced instead of shaking my ass. Tilting my body to take off my heels, the whole world shifted at the loss of those five inches, and Mateo downright grinned at me. 
He seemed like a really happy guy, and my own smile became a little more genuine. Okay, I haven't done this in a while, so pardon me if I'm a little, well, bad. This is exciting. Theo, have a seat and watch this. Like fuck I'm sitting on that couch. Even so, my skin tightened as sharp eyes scanned me again from the back, and I set my heels under the table, holding a half-empty bottle of tequila. Raising my arms over my head, I arched sharply and shook out my arms, flexing my thinly covered toes on the carpet. Holding out my arms, I blinked once, twice, before memories flooded my mind and beat against my eye sockets. My mom made me take ballet, and I really liked it, even though I wasn't super talented. Clenching my jaw, I took a stabilizing breath and viciously forced down the images that played behind my lids. All eyes were on me when I focused again, and I nodded more to myself than anyone else. It must have been a year or two now since I went on point, and I winced at the immediate sting in my toes and up my ankle. Shock sizzled in the air, creeping up my skin, but I ignored it to lift my leg in a smooth arabesque. Pursing my lips, I held my breath as a burning sensation shot up my supporting leg. Straightening to lower myself to the balls of my feet, I let out a huff and rolled my ankle hard. Clapping surrounded me, and I smiled a little even as I reached to rub my foot through its sheer protection. My heart raced with exhilaration, and Matteo grabbed my arm to sit me on his lap again with a huge smile and impressed glimmer in his eye. Wonderful, beautiful. Flames licked my cheeks, and I mumbled a thank you before Matteo turned to Theo, still standing by the door. I told you coming here was a good idea, Theo. It's always nice to find someone like her after dealing with nasty, slimy, lying, sneaky cunts constantly. You're the one that fucked her, Mateo. A dark shiver lodged between my shoulder blades, and I glanced over my shoulder only to find Theo staring directly at me. Well, more like glaring. What does it say about you that you got involved with her, huh? She was the one that started shooting up again instead of coming to me, Theo. The sudden sharpness in Mateo's tone rose the hairs on the back of my neck, and I flexed my foot for good measure before taking my cue. Standing up to position myself between his spread knees, I raised my arms and swished my hips as I became part of the room. That bitch should know better, but she disappeared, and I get word today that she's using again. That's unacceptable. It's also unacceptable that you haven't found her yet. We looked thoroughly. No one's seen her since the deal went down at Keystone Foods. Are they talking about Sylvie? Oh. Rolling my lips between my teeth as the guy under Marcella spoke up, I carefully masked my expression. Mateo, I promise you we looked under every rock. She's gone. That's not good enough. The nasty snarl rolled up my back, and I gasped when Mateo shoved me unexpectedly. Tumbling to the floor, I flailed a little, and I tensed when unfamiliar, strong hands grappled my shoulders before I face-planted into the table. Surprise widened my eyes when I looked up to find Theo looming over me, but our eye contact was brief before Mateo drew all attention. A high-pitched squeal crackled through the room like lightning, and my head whipped up as Marcella stumbled over the side of the sofa. Mateo flew into an absolute rage, rearing his arm back to punch the guy in the face several times with practiced, quick jabs. He grunted with effort, earning a satisfying crunch from the guy's face, and I tried to make myself as small as possible. Sinking into Theo's chest in hopes that his broad shoulders and muscular arms would hide me, I tried to block out the sound of fist-crushing cheek. Covering my ears, I silently wondered what the absolute fuck Sylvie had done getting mixed up with this guy. If she was who he was after, I would probably be on top of the list of people he'd visit. Oh ho ho, this was bad. This was really, really bad.
You're fucking incompetent. You can't even find one drugged up bitch in this city. It's not that fucking difficult. If you turn over every stone, why the fuck haven't you found her yet? Punctuating each statement with a hard punch, Mateo's voice boomed through my palms and rattled my brain. Calloused palms squeezed my shoulders, and I tore my eyes off him to find Theo still staring. Honestly, it was getting a little creepy at this point, and I held my breath as anxiety flooded my veins. As if sensing my rising apprehension, Theo sort of rubbed my shoulder with his thumb and tension built to constrict my chest. He only has three fingers on one of his hands. Oh! Jumping when Theo stood up swiftly, I tore my eyes off him to watch Mateo drop heavily into the seat he'd just abandoned. He breathed fire through flared nostrils, his pretty face red and pinched in anger, and I scrambled to stand up. My shoulder and arm tingled wildly, and an eerie stillness descended on the room as uncertainty floated between my co-workers and I. Mateo cleared his throat roughly, and my chest tightened when he flashed me a pensive, apologetic smile and gestured me to him. Snatching my wrist, he pulled me into his lap again, and my heart made a bid to jump out of my chest. I apologize for that. I shouldn't take my frustration out on you. You're just a random stripper after all. It's not like my problems are your fault. Anxiety curdled my blood when he started petting me like I was a kid getting blamed for something I didn't do, and the hairs on the back of my neck bristled wildly. No, but I'm involved, and that's bad enough. Chapter 5 Theo Leaning on the wall with my arms crossed tightly over my chest, I scowled as I watched Ilya swish her hips with an ease that came with practice. Well, of course she had practice. She was a stripper, and this wasn't some dumpy club accepting anything with an ass and tits. The smooth lines of her long, lean body glistened under the lights as they switched from blue to purple to pink to green and back again. Taking a shallow breath through my mouth, my lips thinned at the pungent stench of alcohol even as my brain wafted through it. Ilya dipped, balancing on her heels with her knees out, and I clenched my jaw as I watched her ass jiggle. My palms itched to grab her and see if those globes were as tight as they looked. My guess was, yeah, they definitely were. Under the intense sharpness of tequila, the smell that curled tantalizingly up from her hair fogged my mind. It must have been a strong scent because the booze was so thick here that it dripped down the walls. Reaching to rub my jaw roughly with my left hand, I tapped my bicep with what was left of my right hand. Dale? Grunting without tearing my eyes off Ilya, I ran my hand through my hair, the hand with all five fingers, because what's a comb without bristles? What would you do in my situation, huh? I'd kill her, honestly. My eyes narrowed into slits when Ilya paused, losing her composure, and I cocked my head absently at the slightly frozen part of her face right around her mouth. There's no way this turns out good for you, Mateo. Yeah, I just don't want to jump the gun. At that, I couldn't help but roll my eyes, and I shot Mateo a hard glare as he flopped his head back against that nasty-ass sofa. My chest tightened in sympathy at how hard this was for him, but come the fuck on, man. This wasn't rocket science. Don't you think it'll be worth it? To beat the odds? I think it's unnecessary. Beating the odds is one thing, Mateo, but you're wishing for something that's not going to happen. If you find her, she'll have to detox and all that shit. Do you really want to watch that? At some point, my eyes drifted back to Ilya. She was much better to look at than Mateo anyway. Granted, 
Mateo had that pretty boy, Spanish features, silky accent thing going on. Shaking my head viciously, I exhaled a lot of breath as fire licked up my spine and down my legs. Don't make the mistake of thinking you're as important to that drugged up slut than she is to you. You fucked twice. It was a mistake. All that bullshit. Yeah, I'm still gonna try though. Mateo was in love, and I guffawed when he just ignored me. Only, he wasn't in love with that bitch Sylvie, who was desperate to lower her debt and starting to slide back into bad habits well over two months ago. No, he was in love with the thing inside her that he'd so carelessly let happen. Truthfully, I felt kind of bad for Mateo because there was no way that this scenario would play out with a happy ending. Not that talking sense to him is going to do any good. He's dead set on trying to have this baby. Since Tweedledum and Tweedledum fuck can't do their jobs, I want you to find her tail. Grinding my teeth, I only jerked my head in a nod, and Mateo glanced over at Johnny with disgust on his face. Get out. I'll deal with you later. Johnny shuffled up with his busted face and dejected, slumping shoulders, and I frowned under furrowed brows. The guy was already on thin ice after fucking up with his last job, and I shuffled out of the way to let him out. My gaze swung past Ilya to Chris, Johnny's much younger, junior kind of partner, who was staring at the stripper's ass so hard it was almost comical. Tell me exactly what you two did looking for her, Chris. Obviously, no one had tried too hard to find this chick, and I wasn't sure why. Mateo hadn't been subtle about what would happen if she couldn't be smoked out of her hole in the ground. Chris cleared his throat, sitting up a little straighter, and I tuned out the conversation to turn my attention back to Ilya. She was pretty with her deep, dark blue hair and vivid eyes so green they were probably fake. I scanned Ilya's muscular legs, outlined in tight stockings, and a throb rippled across my abdomen to stiffen my cock. Mateo dragged my ass out here because he needed a change of scenery, and I had to say I wasn't as disgruntled about it now as I was on the way. You didn't even talk to her roommate! My body sprung into action before I even consciously registered Mateo, screaming at this kid who was no older than nineteen. Jumping forward as he, once again, shoved Ilya, I just grabbed her without thinking to push her behind me. My boss advanced on Chris, as if he wanted to beat his face, but stopped himself when he realized that it wasn't Chris's fault. Chris was a hard-working kid, and my gaze flickered between him and Mateo as the other stripper rushed to huddle behind me. Swiping his hand through his jet-black hair, Mateo rolled his shoulders and huffed as Chris tried to get eaten by the sofa cushions. Did you even bother with going to her apartment? Mateo tugged his button-down shirt and cleared his throat but the tension only mounted in his back when Chris shook his head with uncertainty. Johnny thought she wouldn't be there, so there was no point in going. I told him to check her job, then, but we started checking crack houses instead. He told me that she wouldn't be stupid enough to go home or to work. Long, thin fingers hugged my arm, and I glanced down as Ilya peeked out from over my shoulder. So close, even behind green lenses, I could see how curious she was, and a frown dragged down my mouth. My muscles gorged on apprehension and adrenaline, and my cock ached as I fought the need to grab her hand and... Tail? Swinging to Mateo, my gaze narrowed into tight points, and Ilya tensed against me. Clenching my jaw hard when she pressed her body into my back, I exhaled hotly through flared nostrils as my boss shot me a nasty look. You're on top of this now. Asking Johnny was a mistake. Do whatever you need to do to find this bitch. Yeah, whatever. 
I'd get the job done. I'd worked for Mateo for almost three years now and had never failed him a single damn time. We were mutually beneficial to each other because I wasn't in this for advancement or money or infamy, and he didn't want to deal with the politics of someone trying to climb the ladder. I've scared them again. Mateo rubbed the back of his neck almost sheepishly, and a headache sprung behind my eyeballs at how quick he flew between rage and normalcy. I think it's about time I left and gave you girls some peace. It's okay. Ilya wasn't the one that spoke up, and I reached around with my mangled hand to keep her still. The other stripper stepped out from behind me with an understanding smile puffing out her cheeks, but I didn't trust Mateo as far as I could throw him. And that was pretty far, a good thirty feet at least. Mateo was a fucking lanky shrimp after all. It's honestly perfectly fine. We don't get a lot of excitement, just a lot of creeps. I meant to ask you, do you box or anything? Those were really good punches. My eyelid twitched as the brunette tried to keep the party going, and Ilya groaned softly in annoyance. The soft noise rolled up my spine and dug violently between my shoulder blades, and I squeezed her arm weakly. Mateo grinned, his face practically lighting up like a Christmas tree, and the hairs on the back of my neck flattened. Yeah, I do, actually. He sounded so damn happy that someone noticed his expert punches, and I snorted incredulously. The tightness in my chest eased, and I unhooked my pinky and pointer finger from around Ilya's arm. She sorta hung back, reading the atmosphere, and I tilted my head to watch her rub where I'd grabbed her gingerly. Fake green eyes flickered to mine and my own narrowed into tight points as Ilya flushed in the face. My cock ached fiercely, and I reached to adjust myself in my jeans. Her cheeks fired red, although my action did nothing to relieve the almost painful prickling in my thighs and abdomen. For a long moment, I watched her get redder and redder with a pleasant, burning satisfaction bubbling up in my chest until she rushed to sit on the sofa. So, do you have any special skills, darling? Mateo broke my daze as he pulled the other stripper into his lap, and I inhaled sharply with a shake of my head. Repositioning myself by the door, I crossed my arms, an ever-vigilant statue ready to catch bullets. But I couldn't keep my eyes or attention off Ilya. Mateo could be getting shot at, at this moment, and I wouldn't care. Which is worrying, but there's something about her. Chapter 6 Ilya Well, that could have gone a lot worse. At least those guys tipped super nice. Smiling as I stuffed a rubber band held wad of cash into my fanny pack, I only nodded at Marcella's musings. My fingers still tingled wildly where I'd touched Theo's arm, and my own was damn near numb from his grip on my bicep. The strange sensation of being grabbed by a man with no middle or fourth finger rose the hairs on the back of my neck even now, hours after they'd left. The club was quiet, the DJ working quietly on the floor, and I didn't have anything more to distract me from the fact that Theo stared at me for almost two hours straight. A shiver of uncertainty slithered up my spine, and fire blazed just under my skin at the memories that played so fresh in my mind. Tightening the strap of my pack absently, I gnawed on my bottom lip as my thoughts wandered. Theo was downright creepy with that stare, but I couldn't help but think he just didn't have much experience with women. Screwing a woman and finding her attractive were two different things, and the vision of him fixing himself flashed behind my lids when I blinked. Yeah, definitely not the kind of guy that dated. Doing that was so damn gross, and a shiver rattled down my spine before I forced myself to focus for a second. 
Checking to make sure I had everything I needed, I glanced over as Marcella waited by the door, and a guilty smile stretched my lips. Sorry, tonight was really weird. I'm still trying to process it. She nodded in understanding, and I took a stabilizing breath as we headed out of the back and onto the main floor. That guy, Mateo, he just... He flew off the handle so fast. I wasn't expecting that at all. He seemed pretty all right for the most part, but... I totally get it. I didn't walk into that room thinking I'd get knocked over the sofa for sure. Marcella flipped her hair over her shoulder as she spoke, and I hummed softly in acknowledgement. I bet that's why I got such a huge tip. That guy seems like he has a lot of unresolved issues, though, to get angry like that, and then get so... almost bashful? Yeah. Pushing open one of the doors, I took a huge breath of the crisp night air and sighed a gust. I have to go wash this stuff out of my hair. I kind of just want to go to bed, but then I'd get dye all over the place. You probably spent more money on temporary dye than food, don't you, Ilya? She smirked slipperly, and I nodded with a little giggle as we approached my bike. Anyway, do you want me to give you a ride? We can stick your bike in my back seat. No, I like the ride home. It's super late, and no one's out. Even the tweakers don't come out at this time of night. They're super paranoid when it gets so dark. My wry reply earned me a chuff, and Marcella wandered off to her car wordlessly as I unlocked my bike. Hoisting my only mode of transportation off the rack, I wound the chain around the handlebars and swung my leg expertly. Within seconds, I was off, and I pumped the pedals a few times before starting to cruise. Tonight was like every other night. The blinking traffic lights, the quiet streets, the darkness broke up only by tiny street lamps. Sailing into a left turn, I glanced behind me absently, and a car pulled out of the tiny gas station across the street from the club. In the darkness, the lights from that one car were almost blinding my peripheral, and I blinked hard as I twisted forward. Mateo might have been a wild ride, but Theo was really the one that disturbed me. His eyes only left me when they had to, and he fit into the category of creeps that don't seem like they'd hang out after closing, but definitely would. I had no doubt that, at some point, he'd show up at my apartment, too. It wasn't a stretch to realize they were talking about Sylvie. If he didn't find her, what would Theo do to me because I was her roommate? I couldn't imagine that Mateo was pissed because of just a one-night stand. More than likely, Sylvie must have stolen something from him, and he wanted to get it back, or punish her, or both. I was the person closest to her, and that's always who the bad guys go for. He's probably a drug lord or something. My expression soured at my own grumble, and I shook my head as I weaved between streetlights. If there was one thing I'd learned in this town, it was to have a really good Mexican dialect, and Mateo's sucked. What little Spanish he'd spoken during those two hours gave me the impression that he'd probably learned it in high school or something, and might not have ever been to Mexico at all. In this town, Spanish was a more popular language than English. Just sixty miles away was the border and Mexicali, and when entering a store, most salespeople greeted me in Spanish, not English. Luckily, I knew six languages, courtesy of libraries, of course. My shadow cast long in front of me, and I glanced over my shoulder to find these same intensely bright headlights glaring at me. The car puttered along slower than I was riding, and I nibbled on my bottom lip in uncertainty. In the four years I'd worked at the club, I'd never once seen a car so late at night on this road, and it wasn't trying to pass me. Worry gnawed at my gut, and my heart beat a little harder as I pumped the pedals to speed up. Of course, it has to be the night that I have almost $3,000 on my person. 
Matteo gave Marcella, Clary, and I three grand each, and I'd made good tips after they'd left. Roje's cut dipped me under, but who was I to complain? He only took twenty-five percent a night. That was a deal of a lifetime. Crap, crap. I took one more turn that would lead me in the wrong direction, and the car followed me. Squeezing the brake on my bike, I pulled to the side and hopped off my bike. My adrenaline spiked when the vehicle parked as well, and I unzipped my fanny pack to pull out my knife and flick it open. You better start driving, buddy. The driver's side door swung open, and I squinted to try to make out anything beyond the headlights. Tension zinged through me, and my muscles gorged on anxiety as I struggled to take deep, calming breaths. I'd been in my fair share of fights over the years, and I clenched my jaw hard. Stop acting all big and bad. Deep and dark, the baritone wrapped around me in a vice, and my breath hitched as a body shuffled to block one of the lights. The ill silhouette sharpened from the glare, and I tightened my grip on my knife. Put that away before you hurt yourself. I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm not expecting you to. Cutting me off, Theo must have had a remote for the car auxiliaries because the lights suddenly turned off and I winced. Before I could blink back the colorful spots, he was in front of me, and the hairs on my neck stood up as goosebumps pocked my arms and across my chest. So softly, he dragged his fingertip down my jaw, and my heart hammered furiously at how fast he was. You won't be needing this. A huge hole opened up in my chest when Theo pulled his hand back, and my knife hung from around his pinky. His eyes seemed so bright, and I automatically took a step back as weakness assaulted my knees. Don't be scared, unless you have something to hide, Ilya. Answer my questions, and you'll get your dinky knife back and be on your way. Crossing my arms tightly over my chest, the fine hairs on my face bristled when Theo reached to cup the back of my head. He was very gentle, but his eyes were violent and hard, and a quake assaulted my spine. Where is she? I know you know her, that bitch Sylvie. I don't know. Five fingers curled into a fist in my hair threateningly, and I gasped sharply as Theo jostled my head a little bit, just enough to know he meant business. My eyes met his, and my mouth dried at how fiery and lively his orbs were, even now. I said, I don't know, I, I caught her buying drugs at the store earlier, and I kicked her out. I don't know where she went. I made a video just in case. Show me. Nodding hastily, I unzipped my fanny pack, and Theo eased his grip on my hair as an amused chuff rumbled from his throat. Why are you wearing that thing? It's harder to steal. Answering the question, I just wanted Theo to leave me alone, and I pulled out my phone to unlock the screen. My hand shook, and I held out the bright screen before tapping the play button with a stiff finger. I kicked her out about two hours after this happened, Maybe an hour and a half. I don't know where she went, I swear. Uh-huh. The absent-minded response came just before Theo glanced at my phone, and I tensed when he frowned at the screen. Did you really think I'd follow you just to attack you? Yeah, you did stare at me for two hours straight. Stop asking questions and let me go. Oh my god. Dark eyes snapped to mine, and I stiffened when they flared with a fence. Theo's jaw ticked a few times before he grunted, and the moment slid by on pins and needles until he ducked to watch the video. Right. Do you know this guy? No, he's a different dealer than the one Sylvie had before I helped her get clean. Theo had no accent beyond the typical American one, and I couldn't even be mad right now as he started kneading my scalp. Sucking in a sharp breath, a cold sweat broke out under my clothes, and he jutted his chin out at me with an expectant grunt. Replay it. The video couldn't have been longer than twenty seconds, and I swiped back the time bar at the bottom of the screen. How long has she been clean? 
Four years? I told her if she ever used again, I'd kick her out of my life. I'm trying really hard. I can't be with someone that's not trying just as hard. I couldn't help the bitter betrayal that bled into my tone, and Theo's cheek twitched in the shadow of the screen. This, this is all I know, okay? So, you're gonna leave me alone, right? Don't count on it. Once again, Theo's eyes met mine, and I sucked in a sharp whistle of breath when he jerked my head. Squeezing my eyes shut, a whimper lodged in my throat, and my heart tried to burst through my ribs. My skin crawled when he bumped his nose to my temple, and his clean-shaven chin brushed my ear. Next time, I'll get you to dance for me, Ilya. A shudder raked my shoulders, and Theo unfurled his fist from my hair to walk to his car and speed off. Only when I couldn't hear it anymore did a faint exhale escape me, and my knees gave out on me as I crumpled to the pavement. He kept my knife. Chapter 7 Theo My knee bounced hard as I glared at a picture of this chick, and I rocked back on the cot to flop back my head and scowl at the ceiling. The paint was peeling, and the corners were starting to seep with mold. How could anyone fucking live here? There wasn't a single laminate floorboard that wasn't picking up, and it reeked of weed that had seeped in from other apartments. Jesus. I'd hazard a guess that Ilya and Sylvie thought this was heaven compared to some places, and I hoisted myself up to turn my gaze back to the photo in my hand. This was the only picture of Sylvie that I could find, and it had been packed into Ilya's stuff and tucked under her bed. In the photo, the brunette was eating ice cream in grainy quality, and I had to really hunt through everything Ilya owned for it. Clenching and releasing my jaw, I tapped the photo against my palm absently as I glanced around the one-room apartment. There was nothing to give me any indication about anything. The only possible lead I had was the reusable bags on the counter. Of course, I already knew that the grocery store was a dead end because I'd had someone posted there for days. Sauntering over to the cabinets, I hooked a finger around the handle to pop it open, and there was nothing. 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 Cat food. Ilya must feed the strays. She must have had thirty cans of this shit, all neatly stacked, all the labels perfectly facing the same way, and I shut the door to lean on the counter heavily. Pulling my cell phone out of my pocket, I swiped the screen and punched in my code awkwardly. I could barely bend my fingers anymore, and I ground my teeth as I struggled to navigate to Mateo's contact. What? He was pissed again, and I didn't lift the speaker to my ear before Mateo angrily screamed through it. I mean, I got why he was frantic to find Sylvie before she could do much harm to herself, but I really didn't think she was worth this. The roommate's a bust. She's not here, and neither is her stuff. We're going to have to find her the old-fashioned way. My gruff response earned me a growl of frustration, and I frowned as I glanced around the dank, musty place. I'll head over to the south end in a minute. I don't care what you do, Teo. Fucking find her. Today. Mateo hung up on me, and I scowled darkly as I slid my phone back into my jean pocket. The past few days, he'd gotten worse and worse, and I was starting to burn my fuse with him. There was nothing Mateo could do to me. If he tried anything, I'd fucking kill him without hesitation and move on. All over a chick. How pathetic. Well, that's not entirely accurate. Leaving the apartment, I still had a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that Mateo was stupid enough to get a fucking detti pregnant. That's all this was about, after all. Why was he so desperate to find her? 
Sylvie's dumb fuck self came to Matteo after a few weeks and said she was pregnant. Didn't know what to do, yada yada. After he bought her a nice apartment downtown and all that, she fucked off for some reason I didn't really care about. My thoughts came to a screeching halt at the hard thud of cans crashing to the floor, and my head whipped up. Ilya stood at the bottom of the rickety stairs, her bright hazel eyes wide and her purple hair fluffy and bristling around her surprised features. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and my eyelid twitched as I scanned her through narrowed pupils. Hello, idiot. Clearing my throat roughly, I took the stairs, and she gasped before looking down and dropping to her knees to grab up all her shit. Ilya wasn't fast enough, and I knelt down to grab a can and hold it out for her with my jacked-up palm. Uncertainty rippled across her face, but she slowly reached out to take the can of corn. A spasm ripped through my forearm from the sudden release of pressure, and my two fingers twitched involuntarily as she dropped the can into one of her two bags. Thanks. My lips thinned as pain shot through my palm. Even after six years, I hadn't learned not to use my right hand, and that can of corn proved to be too much. Sitting back on the step, I gripped my right wrist hard and grunted in acknowledgement of Ilya's grumble. A prickly sensation bolted up my arm, and I tore my eyes off her to watch my muscles roiling under my skin. Maybe I shouldn't have skipped the PT. I'd gotten my hand blown off in Iraq, but after being discharged, I didn't keep up with the therapy like I should have. I was left-handed, so I didn't think it'd be such a big fucking deal. Surprise furrowed Ilya's brows at my mumble, and I ground my next words through my teeth. So, he really did kick her out. I deliberately avoided mentioning that Ilya was Sylvie's roommate, because Matteo would probably not take it well. Her eyes sparkled in alarm, and I couldn't help but chuff as they flicked up the stairs behind me. My good hand shook a little as I reached into my pocket, and I held out the photo I'd taken. I'm borrowing this. But she didn't look up as a sharp contraction tightened my muscles and curled my fingers, and Ilya gasped in what I guessed was horrified shock. Hissing as tingles bolted up my forearm, I tensed as my palm twitched viciously, and I dropped the photo in my lap to squeeze my wrist. Are, are you okay? Ilya almost sounded like she didn't want to ask the question, but I nodded sharply as goosebumps swept up my arm. It did pass, it always did, and her eyes met mine with skeptical concern as I took a shallow breath. Did you find Sylvie yet? I have to find her today, or Mateo's gonna throw a fit. He's an idiot. I told him if he ever tries anything stupid with me, I'd shoot him in his pretty face, so he'll take it out on so. Sucking in a sharp breath, my explanation caught in my throat as the convulsions in my hand rippled up my arm. Shit. Uh, okay. Realization crept up on me, and I cocked my head as Ilya crouched to hug her knees awkwardly. She wanted to go upstairs and lock the door behind her, but she felt responsible because I'd picked up that can with my bad hand. Sweet. I haven't seen her. To be honest, I thought Sylvie would have come crawling back, but because she hasn't, I think... That she's holed up in a drug den somewhere on the south side... Yeah, I figured that out too. Her tank top strap started sliding down her shoulder, and I unfurled my fingers from my wrist to reach and straighten it. Goosebumps blanketed her shoulder and bare arm, and she tensed under her soft skin as red climbed up into her face. You're coming with me. I'll let you go when we find her. The demand slipped out thoughtlessly, and Ilya's eyes met mine to flash with sour distaste and regret. The muscles in her neck strained when I cupped her chin, and I tilted her head back and to the left. Not for any reason, just to see if she'd let me. 
What color are your eyes, really? Last time, Ilya had green eyes, and now they were hazel, but I could tell they were fake once I'd paid a little attention. The tightness in my arm started to ease, and I squeezed her chin when she pursed her lips thinly in defiance. Tell me. They're green. Surprise twitched my cheek, and I released Ilya's face to rub my spasming palm with my thumb. She rolled her jaw slightly, her thick lips parting, and a harsh exhale escaped me as the pain in my arm finally started to die down. Okay, so I have to go to work in a couple hours, so... Fine, go put your shit upstairs, I'll drive fast. Glancing down at my hand, Ilya licked her lips in pensiveness, and I hoisted myself up to flex my stiff fingers. Hurry up. Chapter 8 Ilya Stay here. Shutting off his car, Theo pulled the keys out of the ignition with his left hand, and I sunk into the seat even as he cast me a sharp glance. Don't run away. I'll be pissed. I'm not gonna run away. Crossing my arms over my chest, I frowned as I gazed out of the window at the run-down, unkept house we'd stopped at. Theo stared at me for a few slow seconds, and I huffed childishly at how sharply this day had turned from okay to downright bad. When I didn't look back, he got out of the car, and only briefly did the notion of running away flash through my head. Theo knew where I worked and lived, though, so there was no point but to suffer through this. The sooner he found Sylvie, the sooner he'd leave me alone. Hopefully. Right now, we were just going door to door searching for her, and I pulled my phone out from my fanny pack to check the time. I had to work in three hours, but I was seriously considering lying about it and saying I had to go in at 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. Why did you do something so stupid, disappear, and still manage to get me involved somehow? Mumbling through clenched teeth, I rested my head against the seat as I watched Theo walk up to the door. He didn't knock, just strong-armed the barrier open, and my mind swiftly turned to the little episode at my apartment. Obviously, Theo had been through some stuff. I mean, he had two fingers missing from one of his hands. Now, in the cold light of day, I noticed a scar running up the side of his face, and his nose had clearly been broken more than a few times. I couldn't help the curiosity I had surrounding him, but I surely wasn't going to ask about it. If I asked about Theo's scars, maybe he'd want to see mine, and I just wasn't going through that. Not for him, not for anyone. Ugh. I wished the seat would open up and suck me in, and I reached to push my palms into my eyes. The ruined skin on my chest prickled as my lungs deflated in an exasperated sigh, and I ran my hands down my face with a loud groan. This sucks. I was stupid to think, as the days passed by uneventfully, that I was done with Theo, and I scowled darkly. If I never saw him again, it'd be too soon. Who cares if he's muscular and a little aloof and actually a human, not a robot wearing human skin? To be fair to Theo, he didn't break into my apartment by busting down my door. He just picked the locks, and I gave him points for that at least. Seeing him in pain with his hand also gave me some closure that he was a little bit human, and my heart throbbed in my chest. I couldn't imagine the struggles Theo had to go through every single day, and I turned my gaze to my hands to flex my fingers. There were more scars, I knew. There just had to be more. Could I go all day without using two of my fingers? Could I even go an hour? I didn't want to feel anything for Theo, but as much as I wanted him gone, sympathy still stung the backs of my eyes. In that regard, at least, he was just like me, and I pulled up my tank top to frown under furrowed brows. The thin layer of bandages wrapped around my torso hid the worst of me, and I winced when I pressed down on my abdomen. 
After thirteen years, the constant pain hadn't faded away. I'd just gotten used to it. Was that what Theo went through with his hand? Or was his hand the exception to his other scars? Why am I even thinking about this? I don't want to be involved with him. He's bad news. I have a hard enough time without worrying about someone else. Grumbling, my frown darkened as Theo emerged out of the house out of the corner of my eye, and I sat up a little. This was only our third house checked, and he was scowling as he walked alone toward his car. Someone was sober enough to recognize her a couple blocks away. Slamming the door, Theo worked the key into the ignition and twisted awkwardly, and the car rumbled to life. I don't really trust tweakers, but we'll check it out anyway. And then I can go back home. Mine wasn't a question, but Theo nodded curtly, his expression souring some. Relief eased the burning of my skin under my shirt, and I closed my eyes briefly. Good. How did you and this chick meet anyway? The car peeled off the curb, and I cracked open my eyes as Theo, thankfully, kept his on the road. You said you got her clean four years ago. We met at a women's shelter when we were twenty. After a couple months, we decided to move from Los Angeles. I told her I wouldn't unless she kicked her heroin habit, so she did. That time had been so rough. The cops had been cracking down on homeless people back then, and getting a spot at the shelter was nearly impossible. Sylvie and I started squatting, but she'd got picked up by the police for panhandling, and it had freaked us out. We moved here a little more than three years ago. I told Sylvie that if she did drugs again, I'd cut her out without hesitation. She was really upset when I threw her shit out the window, and she couldn't get to it fast enough. Why were you homeless? Irritation bubbled up against my ribs like hot tar, and I sunk into my seat as Theo took a turn hard. The tires squealed in protest, but he didn't slow down, and I gripped the door handle tightly as my inside sloshed from the force. Uh, um, my parents died when I was thirteen, and I went into foster care. Pretty self-explanatory. It seemed like for every question I answered, Theo had another one, and a sinking feeling settled in the pit of my stomach. My plan was backfiring on me, but I couldn't back out of it now. I really don't want to talk about it. There's the house. My gaze swung to the windshield, but this house looked like all the others, run down and forgotten by the town. This city had a small but noticeable number of houses that were just ignored. I'd always had a feeling that someone had swooped them up for this exact purpose. A lot of drugs came into this town on its way west, but we were far enough away from the ocean not to have a port close enough to be suspicious. Blinking hard, I pursed my lips thinly as Theo pulled up on the curb, and he swore viciously when he bumped up onto the cracked sidewalk. The car jostled dangerously, and I tightened my grip on the door handle as he worked on readjusting. Out of the corner of my eye, I watched him struggle to turn the wheel with his bad hand as he twisted to see where he was going. A nasty kind of frustration engulfed his features, and his jaw ticked as the muscles in his neck strained. My heart squeezed, and I stuffed my fist between my legs and glared at my lap as I silently cursed myself. Shit. The whole car jolted hard as the wheel on the pavement slid off onto the asphalt, and Theo's fiery breath was so hot it reached my shoulder. He turned the car off, and I peeked up through my lashes while he jerked the key from the ignition. Get out. I didn't hesitate to unbuckle, and I popped open the door and tried my damnedest to shove down the sensation tingling against my ribs. Shutting the passenger side door gingerly, I stepped onto the sidewalk to glance at the rear wheel and its absolutely messed up rim. There was a huge dent in the spokes where the corner of the sidewalk smashed into the metal, and I winced just looking at it. That's just sad. Theo's eyes didn't so much as flicker to the damage he'd caused as he grabbed my forearm with his good hand. 
Stomping up the walkway, the muscles in his back rippled powerfully underneath his shirt, and I frowned under furrowed brows. This time, he didn't pull any punches as he shoved the door open with his shoulder like he'd done it a million times. He didn't look at me, and a tiny part of me wondered if he was embarrassed about his parking. But then the stench hit me, and I covered my mouth with my free hand as Theo released my arm to pull out his phone. When he tapped on the flashlight, he illuminated wasted bodies and passed out drug addicts on dirty, disgusting mattresses or just lying on the floor. I couldn't even tell who was a guy or girl. They all looked the same, and I grabbed Theo's ruined hand when he tried to step away. He looked back, and flames licked up my face to my ears as my fingers curled around smooth scar tissue. For a quick second, our eyes met, and I sucked in a sharp breath when his thumb and pointer finger hooked around my hand. Trying not to breathe, the ammonia in the air stinging my eyes, I blinked hard, and he frowned before sort of nudging me back out the door. Here, sliding his phone into his pocket, Theo started taking off his t-shirt, and a wife beater clung like a second skin to his toned torso. He managed a lot easier than with his parking job, and he shoved the fabric into my face with a grunt. Tie it around your head. Like this? Covering my whole face, I took a fraction of a moment to inhale deeply, and my eyelids fluttered as the heady, musky smell of him flooded my lungs. Snatching the t-shirt, Theo was smirking when my eyes focused on him, and the sparkle in his dark gaze tightened my chest. Sidestepping me swiftly, he folded the shirt in half and wrapped it over my nose and mouth. Carefully tying the short sleeves over my hair, he pressed his palm to the small of my back, dangerously close to my ass. Ladies first. I tensed when Theo grabbed my ass and squeezed, and his growl rolled down my spine. That seemed like such a strange thing to say, and I tilted my head to glance back only to find him staring at my ass. I wish my fingers hadn't been blown off, so I could really appreciate this ass. Chapter 9 Ilya We found Sylvie on the second floor and I tried not to touch anything as I crouched down to get a really good look at her face, just to be sure. Theo flashed the light from his phone right at her, but she was totally knocked out. Her gaunt features after just a few days, the red rings around her eyes, the cracking of her lips. Sylvie was probably jacked up more than ever, and guilt stabbed at my chest even as I jerked my head in a nod. That's her, for sure, one hundred percent. Standing up, I nodded again, and Theo passed me his phone before bending to hoist her over his shoulder. The shirt around my face gave me some protection from the stench, but he grimaced as he held her by the backs of her legs. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. The floor creaked under Theo's weight and I left the room first to illuminate all the trash on the floor. I was positive a few dead animals were lying around, and I could hear mice digging through the garbage piled in the corners of the place. Taking the stairs very carefully, so I didn't have to touch the railing, I paused to glance back at Theo cautiously. Seconds ticked by like hours before we were out of that wretched house, and I pulled down the shirt to take a huge, blustering breath of fresh air. Theo walked briskly past me to his car, and I flipped his phone awkwardly in my palms while he opened the back seat door and shoved Sylvie in none too gently. I'll drive you back. Come here. Rounding the back of the car, Theo popped the trunk, and apprehension gripped me in a vice as I shuffled forward on lead feet. I wasn't sure what I expected, but him pulling out a bunch of disinfectant wipes wasn't it at all. Exhaling heavily, I glanced over my shoulder at the house, and a shiver of disgust rattled my spine. Here. 
Theo's call rose the hairs on the back of my neck, and I tensed when he snatched my wrist to start wiping my hands. I didn't dare breathe. My heart stopped beating, and I watched through wide eyes as he held the wipe around his lonely pointer finger with his thumb. Wow. Wow. What the fuck? What the fuck? The fuck is he doing? I did not fucking sign up for this weird creeper shit. He's washing my fucking hands. I can do... My declaration died on my tongue at the downright ugly, intense glare that Theo shot me, and I ducked my head. He wiped the bottom of my palm and between my fingers, and anxiety curdled my blood. This... this... this was fucking weird. Close your eyes. Prickles rippled through my cheek at his gruff demand, but I didn't resist, and goosebumps swept over my shoulders and down my arms and chest. He wiped my face where his shirt hadn't covered, and I trembled as apprehension gorged my muscles. You never know what you might need until you need it and don't have it. This is really weird, okay? I seriously don't give a fuck what you think, Ilya. Theo's sharp snarl echoed on the otherwise quiet street, and I flinched back involuntarily. Squeezing my eyes shut, a whimper clogged my throat, but nothing happened for the longest moment until he growled deep in his chest. That's what I thought. You're not gonna do shit. Grabbing my face, Theo squeezed threateningly, and I clenched my jaw hard as he tilted my head back to wipe my neck. The fine hairs on my face stood up, and my goosebumps swelled as he wiped down my arms. Why do you have to be such a pain in the ass, huh? I refused to open my mouth anymore, and Theo guffawed softly, the warmth of his breath rolling down my nose. Get in the car. Shaking my head, I scrunched up my face in preparation, but Theo only stiffened. The air became deathly still and I held my breath as apprehension gripped my spine in a vice. I couldn't get a handle on what Theo was trying to do, and his palm slid down to wrap around my throat. My pulse ran wild under his fingertips, and my lungs cried out for air even though he wasn't putting any pressure on my airway. Get the fuck in the car, Ilya. J just leave me alone, please. I made the mistake of opening my eyes, and Theo's narrowed as hurt flashed across his face like lightning. My mind ran a mile a minute, and I tensed when he released my throat, his fingernails scraping my skin. Please, you got Sylvie, you don't need me anymore. Fine, walk back. Spittle splattered my face from the viciousness of his words, and I shivered from the breeze of Theo storming past me. He slammed his car door shut and peeled off, the wheels screeching shrilly to ring in my ears. I couldn't make myself move, but when he turned off the street, I took a shuddering, shallow breath. My dry lips stuck together, and I reached to hold my throat where the imprint of his finger still burned my skin. Holy shit. Covering my mouth, I gulped down the dense lump that had formed, and my mind circled around and around as confusion tightened my chest. Turning on my heel, the world spun slowly, and I rubbed my neck and rolled my head. Blinking hard, the image of Theo's face when I asked him to leave me alone flashed behind my lids vividly. Was he really that upset about me wanting him to go away? Theo didn't have a good poker face, but that? What did he have to be hurt about? I was the one he practically held hostage, for Christ's sake. He showed up at my apartment, and I couldn't say no and risk getting on his bad side. And now, I was all the way across town with no bike and no way home, and I had work in two and a half hours. Ugh. I scuffed the concrete with my heel and ducked my head to glare at the sidewalk. Why couldn't I have toughed it out and gotten in the stupid car? Because Theo is friggin' weird, and if I got in the car, who knows what might have happened. And he would have gotten the wrong message or something. I don't want to be around him. He has what he wants. There's no reason for us to ever see each other again. 
Even as the thoughts whirred in my head, I couldn't help but feel a little bad. Theo didn't mean to be a little creepy, and I was positive that he didn't see himself washing my hands and face as anything other than he intended. But, of course, what was that old saying? The road to hell is paved with good intentions? If he thought he was doing me a favor, I wasn't obligated to oblige him just because he was meaning to be nice. He creeped me out. That should be the end of it. Finito. Done. Goodbye. So why do I feel like I did the wrong thing, not him? My grumble was loud on the otherwise deserted street, and I rolled my bottom lip between my teeth. I dealt with real creeps all the time, guys from the club that would follow me around and try to touch me when there were signs everywhere. Guys that tried to get me to blow them in the private booths. Guys that looked at me like it would be fun to beat me up and rape me and then brag about it. Theo didn't seem like any of those guys. He just was really awkward and rough. There was a huge difference between being truly creepy and just not knowing the nuances of something. He'd just dragged me in and out of drug dens looking for Sylvie, and he realized how disgusting it was for me. Rationalizing creepy behavior is bad, and I'm going to hell. Clenching my hand, my intended fist only sent surprise rattling up my arm, and I tore my eyes off the pavement to pause. Theo's phone sat in my hand, big, with a bulky case and a smooth, uncracked screen, and I pursed my lips thinly. Every time I thought he'd leave me alone, he had a reason to come back at me. Maybe he'll just get a new one, and I can pawn this one. Chapter 10 Ilya Hey, Marcella, can you? Marcella nodded before I could even pop the question, and I held my arms above my head after she took the end of the bandage. Thanks. No problemo, chica. She very carefully taped the wrap against my side and I smiled when she pulled my bodysuit down my torso. I think I might have been wrong. You buy more bandages than hair dye, I bet. I like this green, though. It matches your contacts real nice. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd suck if someone tried to grab my chest, since, you know, I don't really have one. My cheek twitched as flames licked up my neck, and Marcella smiled faintly as she held the fabric taut around my hips. Fastening the snap between my legs, I tugged and picked at the bodysuit as I examined myself in the mirror. By far, Marcella was the one at work that I was closest to, and she leaned on the small table covered in makeup and glitter vials as I fiddled with my hair. Do you really think it looks good? I dyed my hair temporarily with green, but used two different shades and Marcella smiled broadly with a nod out of the corner of my eye. My long, curly locks were going to need to get lobbed off soon. It was the price I paid for constantly dyeing it, no matter how much assurance was on the box. I'd managed to somehow keep most of my hair healthy, but all that damage added up eventually. Against the pale pink of my suit, my hair was dark, almost mossy, and I pulled apart my lids to adjust my contacts. I don't think I've ever seen your real hair. That's not a bad thing. I get why you obscure how you look, working in a place like this. Vivid brown eyes met mine in my reflection, and I hummed softly in acknowledgement as Marcella sighed. So, did you find a new roommate yet? Did you ever find out what happened to your old one? Ah, uh, no, she just disappeared. I'm not sure where she went, but, I mean, life moves on. I can't hope she'll come back because she probably won't, and I got bills and stuff that aren't going to wait for her. Keeping as close to the truth as possible was the best way to lie, and I glanced over at Marcella to arch a brow. Why do you ask? I just wanted to make sure you're okay, Ilya. I know you two had been together a while in Los Angeles, right? It must suck that she went back to using. She smiled sad and sympathetic, and I clenched my jaw as residual betrayal and anger bubbled up in my chest. 
Are you looking for a new roommate, or were you just working up the nerve to ask me if you could couch surf? Uh, the second one? Fire engulfed my face, and Marcella giggled a little with a slight nod. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I don't want to ask because I know it's not your house, but I don't know how long I can pay everything myself. Oh, please, my parents are never home. They're in, like, Asia right now or something, having the time of their life. There was always that one person who did this because it was fun, not out of necessity. Marcella's parents weren't loaded, but they traveled for months at a time. All Marcella had to do was pay for whatever streaming and internet services she wanted because her parents paid the electricity and water. Still, it'd be kind of weird to come home and discover that some random chick has been living in your house without you knowing. Waving her off, I forced a smile onto my face as Marcella arched a brow, and I bent to adjust my heels. It's fine. If I need to find a place for a few days, we can have, like, a sleepover, but... Oh, I'm down for that. Truth be told, I didn't want to live with Marcella because I didn't want to get comfortable with that pipe dream. Eventually, I'd work my way up, go to school for something, and make it myself. But right now, I was in the gutter, essentially. I'd been under these metaphorical grates so long that I was comfortable. And that was the real tragedy here. Ilya! Rohe's call through the back drew both our attentions, and I straightened as he shuffled over. In my heels, he was a good few inches shorter than me, and he scanned me from bottom to top before nodding. You're being requested in the private suite. Number six. Okay, it better not be that old creep that never tips, though. Rohe only shrugged. It wasn't as if it was his time that was being wasted, and I gave Marcella a little wave as she sat down in front of the mirror. I'll talk to you later, Marcella. Yeah, later. Leaving the back with Rohe on my heels, I took a breath before heading out onto the floor. Bad rap music instantly flooded my ears, and I shook my head a little as the strobe lights flashed brightly. Low lights illuminated the catwalk and girls danced on poles for guys that couldn't see a chick half-naked otherwise. Thank God I don't do the catwalk. When I started working here, Rohe wanted me on the walk until I showed him the burn marks on my chest. No one would find that shit attractive, and I did a lot of private shows, VIP, and just walking around to sit on guys' laps and listen to their shitty day. It worked for both of us, and I didn't have to take off any clothes, for the most part. Navigating my way through the swirling lights and waves of music rippling through the air, I held my breath against the reeking stench of booze. That was the one thing that never got better depending on how busy the place was. The very concrete foundation of this club was saturated in alcohol. Peeling back the curtain of the private booth, I slapped an automatic smile on my face before setting eyes on the guy sitting on the bench. Prickles ripped up my spine, and the fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up as my wide pupils met familiar narrowed ones. Theo propped his head against the wall on his forearm, and I blinked hard as he scanned my body leisurely. Sucking in a sharp breath, my heart thundered hard as apprehension flooded my bloodstream, and my legs ached even as I forced them to bend. This time, I wasn't going to say anything, not a single peep, not one verbal acknowledgement. Repeating the mantra over and over again in my head, I walked over to Theo to stand between his spread knees with reluctance clawing at my throat. I'd just do the dance, get my tip, and when the two minutes were over... I'd leave. No doubt, it'd be the longest two minutes of my life. Ilya. Grabbing my hips, Theo sat me down on his lap with a harsh tug, and I tensed as shooting pain rippled up my chest from where he'd stretched my skin. Holding my breath in fiery lungs, I closed my eyes briefly as I fought to wince, but if he noticed, he didn't react in any way. You have something of mine. Don't say anything, just don't say anything. 
grinding my teeth as I reached to pry his fingers from my waist. I couldn't hear the music over the blood drumming in my ears. Theo tightened his grip, and my face grew hot as pin needles stabbed up my ribs. You're not getting away so easily this time. Even through the bandages, the thick fabric of my leotard, I could feel Theo's nails trying to dig. Did he even realize how hard he was holding me? A choke of a sob escaped me when the pain became unbearable, and I covered my mouth with my free hand as shallow, quick breaths dried my throat. I think it's about time we had a ch- That hurts! My voice cracked harshly when I couldn't keep my high-pitched squeal behind the lump in my throat, and Theo's grip on my side suddenly eased. Standing up, I pushed open the curtain and ran for the front doors, shoving my way through the crowd, but the jostling only intensified the burning pain. Oh my God, oh God. I was on fire all over again, and I burst through the heavy metal barriers to lean on the brick wall. Gasping, shallow breaths barely eased the screaming need of my lungs, and I held a clammy, trembling palm to my side. Oh, oh. My whole torso was tight, straining, sending bristling needle-like pain through me as my ruined skin spasmed and twitched. I couldn't breathe enough, and black spots dotted my vision as I leaned heavily against the cooling bricks. The lights of the parking lot stretched up my legs and seeped through my shuttered lids, and a hard sob clogged my throat. But if I cried, the pain would get worse. I was an ugly, none-too-gentle crier. Tiny, strangled whimpers slithered past the dense lump in my throat, and I hiccuped a ragged breath as I tried not to move. Goosebumps washed my arms and legs under my stockings and bodysuit, and a pained gasp escaped me when a mangled hand pressed against my shoulder blade. My eyes flickered over my shoulder, and Theo's form was blurred by tears and my contacts as they misaligned with my actual pupil. Clenching my jaw hard, a sharp hiss burst from my throat when my breasts tightened. A powerful ripple shot down my front. Even at my face and neck, my skin pulled tautly, and I braced my forearm against the wall to bury my face in my elbow. You shouldn't have skipped PT, Ilya. Hot tears leaked down my face, and a bark of some sort of noise rattled my ribs at Theo's solemn declaration. Tensing and releasing my entire body, I took ragged breaths through my nose, and he sort of stood behind me, awkwardly holding my shoulder. Is it a bullet hole? Those suck. Oh my God, will you just, just, just not say anything? Sputtering harshly, a whimper cut me off when my voice scratched my throat, and I dug my forehead into my arm. Why, why are you even, even here? I wanted to make sure you got home, but you weren't there after I finished dropping off the drugged out bitch. Yeah, because I didn't get home until almost seven when I was supposed to already be at work. Bitterness soured my tongue, and I sucked in a shallow breath through flared nostrils as Theo's eyes dug holes into the back of my head. I guess you got me back for that can of corn. It's not a bullet hole. What do you want? I have your phone in the back. I already have a new one. Keep it. Pawn it. I don't really give a fuck. Cutting me off, Theo gingerly nudged my shoulder, and I glanced at him out of the corner of my stinging eyes. You have a really low pain tolerance, don't you, Ilya? My eyelid twitched in agitation, and I hoovered up a breath before turning around. Theo looked concerned enough, a scowl on his face, and I held out my palm as my own scowl started to form. I was so damn done with this day. Give me all the money in your pockets. The scar on his face played in surprise, and Theo's brows rose even as he reached into his jeans. Holding out my hand, unabashed, I clenched and released my jaw as fire engulfed my chest. 
My breasts ached fiercely, and I started tapping my foot as I watched him through narrowed pupils. He slapped at least a grand and fifty dollar bills into my palm, and I pursed my lips and shot him a nasty glare. Fuck. Fine. Theo's tone was snippy, but he easily reached into his other front pocket with his mangled hand. Pulling out a roll of cash, he sneered at me, and I clutched the money in my fists. What? Congratulations, Theo. You get what you wanted. You're gonna drive me home. I hope you're happy. I couldn't ride my bike like this, and for the first time, I snarled at him with all the venom I'd been holding in. The shadows on his face darkened, and I pointed at my bike chained to the railing stiffly. Put my bike in your car while I go get my stuff. Turning on my heel, I wobbled a little as my inertia swiveled my brain, but I somehow managed to stay on my feet. The door swung open, and I shivered in relief because I probably couldn't open it out by myself. Slipping past two totally sloshed dudes, I shook my head viciously on my way to Rohe's office. Chapter 11 Theo I fucked up. I realized that. I accepted that responsibility. I should have heeded the signs and not touched the strippers. I probably should have not gone to the club in the first place. I'm... Don't. Don't say a fucking word. Out of the corner of my eye, Ilya's hand flexed against the center console, and I clenched my jaw hard. I didn't think I'd grabbed her that hard. Maybe I just touched a bad spot? Blowing out a haggard breath, she held herself up off the seat, on her arms, and guilt clawed at my throat. Just drive. Ilya was drenched in sweat that seeped through her leotard and shimmered on her face with each passing street lamp. The tables had turned, and I imagined that this ugly feeling in my chest was a more intense version of what she'd felt when my hand decided to twist off my wrist. Frowning as I gripped the wheel tightly with my good hand, I curled my right in my lap, and the silence rang shrilly in the confines of my car. I can't believe you. Why can't you just leave me alone already? You got Sylvie. She grumbled more to herself than me, but Ilya's complaining was overly loud in such a quiet space. A scowl fixed on my face at the mention of that bitch. It hadn't even been twelve hours since we picked her up, but she was already going fucking crazy. And you called me a pain. Do you want me to take you to the hospital or something? I didn't know what else to offer or what to say, and Ilya shook her head viciously as she sucked in a shallow breath. I already said I wanted to make sure you got home safe, but you weren't there, so I came here. I was an hour late, and now I had to leave early because of you, Theo. She spat the reply like a viper, and I ground my teeth as irritation swept through me. I don't have the, the luxury of missing all those tips. You're not doing me a favor. Then why are you making me drive you home if you don't want me around? I drove under fifteen miles per hour, barely walking pace and she shot me the nastiest glare. Scowling darkly, my eyelid twitched in agitation, and I glanced in the rearview mirror at her bike in my back seat. You have your bike. I can't fucking ride it right now, she hissed when she twisted her head too far, and guilt started to leak into my lungs. You need to leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with Sylvie or Mateo or anything about that. I don't care. I don't want updates. I want to move on with my shitty life without worrying about being dragged into this shit again. Ilya. Her arm shook from her effort, and I propped the wheel with my knee to rub my face in frustration. Mateo doesn't know you're Sylvie's roommate. I didn't tell him. My grumble earned me surprised silence and I ran my fingers through my hair absently as my mind whirred furiously. 
How the fuck was I supposed to make this better? I was doing all I could to keep Ilya out of Mateo's sights, and it wasn't all that difficult because he only cared about his baby, but... Why didn't you? Licking my teeth as I gripped the wheel again, I slowly eased into a wide turn, and Ilya's question bounced around in my skull. Why hadn't I? After all, I would have made my work easier if I'd told Mateo what I knew. Glancing at her, with her pained, pale features and the muscles straining in her neck and shoulders, I pursed my lips thinly. If I told him, he'd probably nab you and hold you hostage with Sylvie. I didn't want that. Mateo's my boss, but I wouldn't spend time with him if he didn't pay me a huge chunk of change. She winced in my confession, and I reached with my mangled hand to cover her palm on the center console. Her fingers were ice cold and trembling, and I rubbed the top of her hand with my thumb. I didn't mean to hurt you, Ilya. I bet you didn't, but it still happened. Graveness dragged down the corners of my mouth, and she sniffled hard from the passenger seat. Listen, okay, I really, really don't need this right now, okay? I'm dealing with my own shit, and I'm not particularly keen on looking over my shoulder forever, so just, just ignore me, and I'm going to forget this ever fucking happened. For what was probably a good reason, I just kept my mouth shut. I had a feeling Ilya didn't care what I said at this moment. She just wanted to get home and not be in such horrible pain. I understood that, at least. Not to mention that I kept fucking up every time I saw her, and our past encounters weren't exactly in my favor right now. Ilya was beautiful, with her long face and slender form, and nice tight ass and her perky tits. But the more I learned about her, however begrudgingly, the stronger she seemed too. She was the girl that beat the odds, and I thought that was sexier than her body. Casting her a sidelong look, I scanned her haggard face and the thick bead of sweat trickling down her jawline. Do you want to stop and... No, damn it! I want to go home! Screeching at me, Ilya slammed her fist into the dashboard, and her palm slipped out from under mine. Sitting in the seat fully, tears rolled down her cheeks in frustration and pain, and I trained my gaze on the road. Take me home! Take me home now! My face heated as she cried quietly in the passenger seat, and my knee bounced wildly from the tension gorging my muscles. I couldn't get a read on her. Was she headstrong or a little weak-minded? Would she stab me in a fight or run away? An ugly black blotch spread across my chest as her sniffles echoed against the windows, and I flexed my fingers against the wheel. The minutes ticked by into arduous infinity before I pulled up in front of her disgusting apartment building, but Ilya didn't get out of the car. She looked kind of green when I turned on the overhead light, like she was in so much pain she was going to throw up. Her face was ghostly pale, her glazed eyes unfocused under heavy lids, and I waited, and waited, and waited. Leaving my car running, I climbed out of the driver's side and pulled open the back door. Hoisting Ilya's bike out of my car, I left the busted lock and chain on the seat before heading for the building. My chest tightened with regret. I should have left her alone like she wanted. What was I even doing? The thought had no answer. I carried her bike up the stairs to her apartment door. I couldn't remember the last woman I'd been with. It must have been when I was in Italy, and that was over ten years ago. With my deployments in my hand and all my drama, I'd just... No one wants to deal with a disabled veteran. Ilya was the first person in a long, long time that hadn't stared at my hand like it belonged in a grotesque museum. Maybe that was why I was so fixated on her. Propping her bike against her door, 
I took the stairs again, and Ilya was struggling to get out of the passenger seat. My heart jumped into my throat at the tortured shadows playing on her face, and I fast walked to pick her up. Her gasp sucked the heat from my neck and face, but some of the tension in her eased as I hooked my arm under her knees. Don't scare me like that. What if you fell? My growl didn't provoke a response, and I scanned Ilya before realization slammed into my gut. Where's your stupid fanny pack thing? Huh? She slurred heavily, and a single glance at Ilya's face told me she was on the verge of passing out. Her head flopped back, only to jerk up with a pained gasp reaching her lips, and she tensed in my arms. Kicking the door shut, I ignored my own question for now as I carried her into the building and up the stairs. For once, I was glad my fingers got shredded and not my leg. I wasn't a dumbass. Every single important thing Ilya owned could fit into that stupid fanny pack, which probably included her keys. Reaching the top of the stairs, I strode down the hallway toward her door, and I paused in front of it as my mind whirled. The first time I'd been here, I'd pick the locks, but I didn't exactly have that option. Fuck it. Tightening my grip on Ilya's firm body, I grabbed the knob with my bad hand and shoved my shoulder into the door. Jerking the knob to jar the door up, a grunt escaped me as the door gave way with a sharp splinter from the frame. Fuck. Nothing had changed about Ilya's apartment since I'd been here, except for the fact that one of the cots was folded up on the floor. Somehow, she was still awake, and I set her down on the open cot before she lifted her hand up to push my face weakly. Go away. I n never want to see... see you again. Her slow spluttering stung, but she laid down very carefully to turn away from me. Tears and sweat soaked her hair, and streams of green dribbled down her neck and stained her shirt. Standing up straight, I clenched and released my good hand by my side as I debated what to do. Not that any of my attempts to not fuck up have succeeded. Rubbing the back of my head and neck, I inhaled a deep, calming breath and took a step back. Gazing at her as she writhed on her cot, her neck craned hard, eyes squeezed in pain, I covered my mouth to hide my scowl. She's got every right not to want to see me again. Damn. Chapter 12 Ilya My eyelids popped open, and the fine hairs on my face bristled with the sensation of being watched. Grogginess slowed my mind, and I flung my arm over my eyes to block out the weak sunlight that streamed through where the curtains didn't cover. Lead enveloped my muscles, and my lungs struggled to fill as I took a deep breath. I told you to go away, Theo. I was so damn tired of this guy, and I tossed my head to the side to frown. Theo sat on the other cot, shoulders hunched, like a tiger ready to pounce, and he matched my expression with furrowed brows. Why won't you just go away? I had to leave work because you hurt me, and you did that creepy thing when you washed my hands after we found Sylvie. Are you just not making the connection? I want you to leave me alone. We found your friend in a heroin den, and I could tell how skeeved out you were. His gruff reply sent a spasm of irritation through my cheek, and I braced my hands on the metal support bars of the cot to gingerly sit up sucking in a sharp breath when my bandages rubbed my skin raw. I glanced down to find myself still fully clothed. Surprise bubbled up in my chest, and I pursed my lips thinly as my gaze flickered to Theo. I'm taking you out for breakfast. Scowling darkly, I opened my mouth to tell Theo to fuck off, but my words dried at the sharp glare he shot me. 
clamping my mouth shut to grind my teeth. My stomach grumbled with need, and I exhaled slowly before forcing myself to nod a jerk of my chin. He stood up, and on my cot, it almost looked like his head would bash into the ceiling. He was so tall and broad. Let's go. Throwing my legs over the side of the cot, I winced as I stood up myself, the tender skin on my chest pulling taut. Holding up my hand to stop Theo, I struggled not to run my fingers through my hair. Hold on, I have to wash my hair. I'm not supposed to have the dye in for more than six hours. What time is it? Curiosity mingled with annoyance and impatience on Theo's face as he pulled a brand spankin' new phone out of his jean pocket. 9.22 in the morning. My eyes widened, and an almost amused smirk played on his hard, jagged features. Not used to being up so early? Um, no. I tore my eyes off him to grab my blanket in an attempt to fold it, but the whole top half of the cot was covered in green dye. Blinking hard, I scrunched up my face at the fact that I'd have to spend money unnecessarily. Damn. Of course, I could just wash it all and deal with the stains, but going to a laundromat was probably more expensive than getting a new blanket and pillowcase. Keen eyes followed me as I shuffled toward the corner designated as the kitchen, and I pressed my palms down on my hips to arch a little. My back popped, and a gust of a sigh escaped me before I grabbed the bathroom door handle. Pausing to look over my shoulder, I frowned as Theo stared at my ass with an appreciative glint in his eye. Don't try to come in the shower with me or anything creepy like that. His narrowed gaze snapped to my face at the demand, and I hid my surprise when he only nodded silently. Seriously? I won't creep on you in the shower, Ilya. I know I'm not making the best case for myself here, but I wouldn't do that, unless you ask me to. Arching a brow quizzically, my frown deepened, and Theo scanned me from top to bottom above thinned lips. I'm not a creep. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. Right. Pushing the door open with that skeptic reply, I shut myself in the bathroom to lean against the barrier and heave a massive sigh. What the fuck? Jerking the shower curtain closed, I turned on the knob to just above lukewarm and gingerly peeled off my shirt. A fury of emotions bombarded my chest and squeezed my heart, and I scowled at the edge of the shower, rising up off the old, cracked tiles. If Theo wasn't a creep, why the shit did he stick around in my apartment and watch me sleep for twelve hours? What the hell did he consider that kind of thing if not straight up weird? And now he basically strong-armed me into going to breakfast for... For what? To show me he wasn't a creep? That he could do normal things that weren't glaring and scowling and occasionally doing a shitty parking job? Ow. Torn from my thoughts when I climbed out of my jeans to unsnap my leotard, I held my breath as I rolled the fabric up my chest. Ow. Shit. My bandages stuck to my skin, and I pulled my bodysuit over my head to tug the taped end free. Blowing out a hot breath, my hands shook as I carefully unwrapped my torso, and I winced as sweat acted like a glue against my scar. Could such extensive burns even be called a single scar, or was it like a conglomerate of scars? Oh my god. Covering my mouth with my free hand, clamminess tingled against my lips, and I choked on a gasp. It seemed like forever before I'd unraveled myself, and I rolled up the bandage to toss it into the trash by the toilet. My bathroom was so small that one ninety-degree turn and I was in front of the sink, and the other way, the toilet. I didn't have to take a single step except to get into the shower, and goosebumps blanketed my body. I just had to wash my hair. Such a concept was simple, but putting it into practice was much harder. 
My chest tightened and spasmed from the streams of cold water, not frigid, but not warm either, and I turned my back to the shower head. Squeezing my eyes shut, I took stabilizing forceful breaths as my heart rate jacked up, and I straightened my curled spine as I slowly but surely got used to the pain. Shit. Green ran in rivers down my body, and I grabbed my shampoo to help wash all the color out. My hands still shook, but I didn't pay it any mind as I let the pounding on my scalp massage my haggard brain. I need to take my contacts out. My face was so caked in shit that I hadn't even remembered my contacts until that moment, and I scrunched up my nose in irritation. I had developed something of a routine, and that had been shattered to pieces by Theo. Kneading my scalp and running my fingers through my hair, I tensed and eased as raising my arms pulled the tissue on my chest. Theo might have only had two fingers and a thumb on the one hand, but I wondered if even he could handle seeing me naked. Shit, I didn't even want to see me naked most of the time. Rinsing my hair, I cracked open my eyes to glance behind me, and a relieved sigh escaped me at the clear water dripping from my hair. The long strands were black from being so soaked, and I grabbed my face wash to stare down my front. What guy thinks this is attractive? My palm hovered over my chest, I cupped my breast, or what little of it I still had. A dense lump formed in my throat, and my grip on my wash bottle tightened as disgust battered the backs of my eyes. I'd never, not ever, had sex without my shirt on, and the guy absolutely fucking trashed, just blind drunk. As messed up as that policy was, I didn't really have a choice. One time, when I was still pretending to the world that I wasn't homeless and dirty, I'd taken off my shirt with my first serious boyfriend. He was faceless now, but the image of him projectile vomiting at the sight of me. That was a memory I'd never be able to scrub from my mind. And Theo would be no different, I knew. Maybe I should do that, so he'll finally leave me alone. The hot pink flesh, swirling with tints of normal pale coloring and purplish blotches in some places, twitched noticeably as my breath flowed down it. An absolutely enormous, sickly green-yellow bruise smeared across my side where Theo had grabbed me, and I dragged my fingers down it. Only the crescent indents of his fingernails really stung, and my lips thinned as I shook my head viciously. That wouldn't work. Theo would just try harder. He'd see me as a broken thing that he could try to fix. Maybe that's not such a bad idea considering my patchwork duct tape job is failing so miserably. Chapter 13 Ilya So Breaking the silence only when we'd turned off my block, Theo gripped the wheel with his good hand and held up his right with a sidelong glance. I was in Afghanistan about three years ago when my convoy was attacked. He hesitated, his jaw ticking noticeably as he flexed his fingers, and my eyes widened in horror. My heart nearly stopped beating at that short but powerful confession, and I covered my mouth to hide my gasp, even though it echoed in the car. Theo chuffed lightly, his lips twisting in a rueful smirk, and he reached over the center console to set his mangled hand on my knee. Technically, my ring finger got shot off at the first knuckle, but a bullet went through the tire I was behind, and the rubber exploded and sliced them both clean off. I got medevac to the States, and they decided that since I wasn't useful anymore that they should discharge me. When I got out of the hospital, after agreeing to go to PT that I never went to, Theo cast me an almost fond smile, the softest, gentlest smile yet, and my heart throbbed painfully as his fingers flexed against my jeans. They gave me a bunch of money and forgot about me. My family acted like nothing was wrong, 
which was inarguably worse than being shoved out of the Marines before I was even conscious. I opened my mouth only for nothing to come out, not even air, and Theo cleared his throat roughly. I was four months into being a civvy when I was invited to my sister's house. To be honest, I wanted to go, which was my first mistake. It was a family thing. She was having a gender reveal thing. Anyway, I'm there, and I don't drink, so I'm stone-cold sober when she comes up to me and asks me to do something that required both my hands. A gasp of foreboding wrenched from my throat, and Theo grunted in acknowledgement as his expression darkened. I obviously can't do shit with this hand, and I told her so. She said to my face, in front of fifty-odd family members and kids, that my fingers getting blown off shouldn't affect what I'm capable of doing, and that I should try harder. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Basically, I told her if that's what she thought, I'd happily cut off her fucking fingers and see how much she likes it. My sister wasn't too excited about that. That was the point when I decided, fuck it. I'm the oldest of six, and I'm being treated like that after being a Marine for eleven years? It was a huge thing. She started freaking the fuck out, and I put her hand on the table and pulled out my knife. I'm not gonna lie, I probably could have handled it better. The police got called. I got put in jail, and she pressed charges. At court... The oldest dirt judge was a Vietnam vet and sided with me, but I got a protection order slapped on me. Honestly, it was a blessing in disguise. I always felt like they were my family, so they'd stick by me if I just stuck it out and eventually I'd get somewhere. Theo's voice grew darker and deeper as his tangent bounced off the dashboard, and I tensed when his fingers squeezed my knee weakly. He didn't even seem to notice, and my mind frantically tried to keep up with his story as his car eased to a stop at a sign. I shacked up with Mateo, because I went to Mexico intending to disappear and be a hermit. He needed a bodyguard, and I needed money and something to do. He pays really well. You know he's not Mexican, right? Blurting out the only thing I could think of, I gulped down the dense lump in my throat as Theo cast me a quizzical glance. For the moment, I ignored everything he'd just told me. It was too much to process right now, and maybe he knew that. Maybe he just wanted to tell someone, and that unfortunate someone was me. Uh-huh, he's not Mexican. His accent sucks, and I'd bet money he learned Spanish in a classroom in a fancy boarding school or something. How can you tell? Oh, shit. Blinking hard at the question, dread gnawing at my gut, and a twitch pulled up the corner of my mouth grimly. I lived in Mexico when I was younger. My parents were there for work for a few years, and I'm pretty good with languages. Mateo isn't a native Spanish speaker, even as a household language. If I had to guess, I'd say he got lucky with the looks. Theo's brows rose at my analysis, and I rolled my lips between my teeth as I recalled the one and only time I'd met Mateo. I pretend to have a Spanish accent at work because it gets me more money, especially on Wednesday and Thursday nights. The car rolled through the four-way as I spoke, and Theo grunted lowly as he turned his attention to the road. My heart ached for him, and I tentatively covered his right hand with mine. I knew exactly what that was like, for everyone around me to act like what happened to me hadn't changed me. The only difference was that I was twelve when my traumatic event happened. When did you enlist? Launching my probe into the immense quiet, I grazed my fingertips along the smooth scar tissue where Theo's fingers should have been. They must have taken out the knuckles and done some grafting, and he swung into a turn before inhaling in preparation. It feels like my skin. When I was seventeen, I graduated from high school and went to the recruitment office the next day. 
My family wasn't very well off, and the military would pay for my college. I wanted to be an engineer, but I ended up going into the Marines instead as an infantryman. I found out I was really, really good at it. I was going to be a career man until my hand got fucked up. I never considered the military to get out of my situation. My mouth dried at my own admission. I sure as shit would have done the exact same thing if I could have. I knew I wouldn't pass the physical, though, so there was no point in trying. I'm doing pretty okay now, though. I mean, compared to the past, at least. You were homeless. His wasn't a question, but I nodded anyway, and Theo's hand twitched against my leg. That must have sucked. But at least the weather wasn't too bad, right? No snow or anything? Um, no snow, yeah. Furrowing my brows over thinned lips, I turned my gaze out the window as the grungy apartment box gave way to small businesses and slightly cleaner streets. Theo had told me a lot about himself in the short time we'd been driving, but I couldn't help the reluctant pull at the base of my throat. More often than not, things went sour fast and intensely, and him confessing all this awful shit to me didn't change what I thought. The notion that Theo was trying to make it up to me wasn't something I could turn down, though. He was creepy, sure, but not straight-up pervert sexual offender creepy. He was just a lonely guy that thought something was a good idea when it really wasn't. I'm going to hell for making excuses for his behavior. That's a red flag. He's just a bundle of red flags. That was one thing that sucked. I was deployed in the Philippines for four months during the monsoon season. There was mud literally up to my elbow sometimes. Theo turned onto a stretch of road by the train station, and a sign climbed high above the single-story plaza emblazoned with a waffle and a name. Licking my lips heavily, my stomach grumbled eagerly, and I almost forgot what he said as soon as he said it. I'd rather go back to Afghanistan than go to the Philippines in monsoon season. The conversation fizzled out as we came closer and closer to our destination, and Theo reluctantly pulled his hand out from under mine. Pulling into the parking lot, he prowled for a spot, but I could see even in my skewed peripheral that parking made him nervous. Keeping my eyes firmly on the window, I picked at my fingers and tried not to tense when the first available spot required some case-style maneuvering. Chapter 14 Theo Leaning back in the booth of a fairly nice breakfast place, I propped my head in my arm and watched Ilya scan the menu. She seemed thinner than before her shower, but that could just be her tank top. An apology clung to the backs of my teeth, but I had a little bit of an issue getting it farther. Her fanny pack hugged the edge of the table. She'd washed her face free of green and dried tears and sweat, and my eyelid twitched before I lowered my arm to clear my throat. Just so you know, I didn't sit around your apartment all night. I'm not that dense. Pretty, light green eyes, real eyes, met mine over the rim of her menu, and Ilya arched a thin brow quizzically. You said your parents lived in Mexico, right? What did they do? Uh, my mom worked for the U.S. government, and my dad was a stay-at-home father. Reluctance seeped into her tone as curiosity sparked in my chest, and I reached to rub my wrist under the table. I'd tried not to fuck up my parking job, but I didn't want to find a spot farther away. And they say chivalry is dead. I lived in Mexico for about two years, and I learned the language really fast. We came back to the States when I was eleven. Did it suck moving around like that? Her thick, pink lips thinned, eyes diverting to the menu, and my own narrowed on her as I propped my elbow on the table to hold my chin. Did your parents drag you around a lot? Yeah, but at least they were alive. Oh, fuck. The 
bland reply tightened my chest as Ilya clearly shut down the topic, and I clenched my jaw hard. Long, nimble fingers raked through her hair to pull it over her shoulder, and my gaze followed the movement. Despite all the dye, Ilya had beautiful, bouncy curls that I just wanted to wrap my fist in, and I tapped my cheek absently. Were you an only child? Shrewd eyes flashed Hazel when she shot me a glare over her menu, and I struggled not to frown. I just want to know. My stubble bristled when Ilya closed her menu with a soft flop and set it on the table. Slumping into the seat, she gazed at me with frustration changing the color of her eyes, and I scratched my cheek as prickles shot up my arm. Clear as day, she was debating whether or not to chew me out about asking questions, but I wanted to fucking know. That's not a crime. Inhaling through parted lips, she exhaled through her nose before sitting up and clasping her hands on the table to cast me a stern look. I wasn't, but I am now. Can we not talk about this? Actually, let's not talk about anything at all, okay? I really, 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 and I cannot stress this enough, Theo, don't want to talk about myself. Gesturing between us, Ilya frowned deeply in displeasure. An apprehension gripped my heart in a vice. I came out to breakfast with you because you wouldn't let me not. You know where I live. You know where I work. You obviously don't give a fuck about hurting me because you're using your guilt as an excuse to do the exact opposite of what I want, which you clearly don't care about either. I'm gonna eat, but that doesn't mean that whatever you want to happen is gonna happen. The thick muscles in my back tensed and released sharply as anger struck my chest like lightning, but I forced myself to take a huge breath and hold it. Craning my neck, I rolled my shoulders in a semi-successful attempt to shirk off the sting of Ilya's calm declaration. Her half-hooded eyes glimmered with weariness like she expected me to jump across the table to strangle her or something. She held my gaze firmly, and I exhaled slowly before even thinking of trying to open my mouth. You're not gonna give up, are you? Truth be told, I thought that if I was just persistent enough, Ilya would cave. Obviously, I was wrong, and she shook her head quietly across the table as I rubbed my cheek and neck with my good hand. At the club, I didn't get the impression that you were so strong-minded. Because it's my job to listen to drunk guys complain about their wives and sit on their lap, not give my opinion. I only grunted at that, and Ilya's frown darkened under furrowing brows as I sat back to keep my knee from banging against the table. I've told you half a dozen times, Theo, I'm dealing with my own shit. I don't need anything more piled on. I opened my mouth but my words never rolled off my tongue when my phone began to trill shrilly. The only numbers I had in the new device were Mateo's and my favorite pizza place, and I scowled as I fished it from my pocket. A childish disappointment hit me when I saw it was my boss. There was always hope that, somehow, I'd won free pizza for life. Inhaling a steady breath, I swiped the accept button and slumped deeper into the booth. What? Mateo had become insufferable since nabbing Sylvie, and she still hadn't come down from that high we'd found her in. He strapped her to a bed and left her with a doctor to throw a fit about her that lasted all night, and I was honestly on the verge of shooting her myself. I'm busy, Mateo. Make it quick. Find me Sylvie's roommate and bring her here, now. His snarl into the phone rang in my ear, but Mateo didn't intimidate me. The fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up at his demand, and I sat up stiffly as the line crackled ominously. I need to ask her some questions. The fuck do you want her roommate for? Sylvie's so fucking high she hasn't even started withdrawal yet. I know you want to cling to the hope that things will be fine, Mateo, but they won't be. I fucking guarantee you. 
frustration of my own sharpened my tone, but Mateo's frosty silence didn't deter me. My gaze flicked to Ilya, and worry bled into her eyes as I covered my mouth to hide my sneer. I'm not doing that. You don't honestly think the drug use is inconsequential, and you'll get lucky? Bullshit. Except the fact that you knocked up a drug addict and shoot her already. Do it, Theo, or I'll shoot you. Snorting roughly, I ignored the questioning glance Ilya sent me as a pure, undiluted amusement bubbled up in my chest. I couldn't help myself as I chuckled darkly, and Mateo's threat breezed through my mind with all the force of a bug being blown against a window. You can try that shit with your little cronies, Mateo, but you don't scare me. You're an immature little shit. Doing what you're doing just proves that. Mateo was a spoiled brat, finding himself in a position of power because his brother was the head of the whole thing. It was really a shame because I'd met his brother. Carlisle was the guy to be afraid of. A threat from him would make me run for the hills and not look back. If you ever threaten me again, Mateo, I'll break your fucking neck. I hung up. Consequences be damned, because frankly, Mateo was starting to get on my nerves. Sliding my phone toward the wall, by the syrup and salt and pepper shakers, I crossed my legs under the table to lean back with a heavy sigh. Ilya was quiet, her face pensive across the vast expanse between us, and I waited for her to say something. The longer the silence stretched, the more troubled her expression became, and I couldn't imagine what she must have been feeling. Is Sylvie really pregnant? And that's why she went back to heroin? She never... She trailed off a little heartbrokenly, and betrayal reddened her cheeks as her eyes narrowed on the pointed laminated corner of her menu. I guess we weren't as close as I thought. Mateo seems to think he'll have a little happy family, and the kid won't come out fucked up somehow. Honestly, I've got half a mind to call his big brother and snitch, but I'm sure Carlisle already knows about the situation. If it were me, well, I wouldn't be so fucking stupid to not use a condom in the first place, honestly. I can't imagine this wasn't part of some plot, either, but you know Sylvie better than I do. Having a baby born addicted to drugs was just plain cruel, and Ilya picked up her menu to hide behind it. My mind whirred with options over how to proceed, because there was no fucking way I'd just bring Ilya to Mateo. Really, it had more to do with all the suffering Ilya went through about Sylvie. Why'd that bitch deserve to ring out any more that her friend might not have? I'm not bringing you there. Mateo can figure this out on his own. He wanted to launch headfirst into this shit pool, so he can deal with being up to his neck in it. To be honest, this is exactly something Sylvie would have done before she got clean. She must have been using longer than I realized. Her grumble from around the menu sent a twitch of sympathy through my cheek, and she sunk into her side of the booth. Ugh. Oh. You had nothing to do with that, Ilya. What a stupid-ass thing to say. Lowering her menu, Ilya shot me a small, grimy smile, and I grabbed my own menu for the first time since sitting down. Maybe not, but here I am, having something to do with it. Somehow, I always get dragged into this shit. My lip twitched in a slight snarl but I had nothing to say to that because Ilya was right. At least, thus far, she had tried so hard to stay out of the drama, but it sucked her in anyway. Chapter 15 Ilya We're going the wrong way. Theo cast me a dismissive sidelong glance, and I frowned deeply as apprehension bubbled up in my chest like hot tar. You're not really taking me to Mateo, are you? Of course not. This has nothing to do with Mateo and his stupid childish tantrum. 
Grumbling harshly, Theo pulled to a stop at a light behind two other cars, and he tore his eyes from the road to meet mine. You were right, Ilya. You try really hard to stay out of it. I was wrong. My brows rose high in surprise, and a bark of incredulous laughter burst from my throat devoid of humor. Theo's lips thinned, his jaw ticking, and I could have sworn on my life that I saw his ears tinge pink at the lobes before he turned to glare at the wheel. The echo of my shocked noise bounced off the windows to ripple across my face, and I reached to put my hand on his broad, muscular shoulder. He tensed as his heat blasted away my discomfort from his declaration, and he caught my gaze behind guarded lenses. I appreciate that, Theo. These tiny, tiny, almost unnoticeably tiny moments were becoming more frequent, and I couldn't help but smile when Theo jerked his head in a stiff nod. So, where are we going? You'll see when we get there. It's a bit of a ride, so get comfortable. He grabbed my hand and held my palm to his chest, and the clumpy scar tissue rose the hairs on my arm. I bet you would have done well in the military. I knew guys that didn't have balls as big as yours. The awkward compliment sent fire to engulf my face, and my smile widened as Theo rubbed the back of my hand with his thumb. His palm was hard, and I didn't pull back even as he propped his knee under the wheel to flick on his blinker as we neared a highway on-ramp. A warm fuzziness wrapped around my heart, and I huffed hot air as it was replaced with a strange happiness. I got the sense that Theo didn't compliment someone just because. He honestly wasn't that bad when he didn't overthink things, but I was sure that's why he brought me out in the first place. If it works, it works. Don't worry about Mateo. It's really his brother you want to stay away from. I met him once, and I'd rather not even be in the same room as him. I know killers when I see them. There wasn't much I could do but nod, and Theo flicked off his blinker as he merged onto the ramp smoothly. When I started working for Mateo, he got a visit from Carlisle. They were having a conversation I wasn't listening to in some restaurant in Portugal, and that motherfucker just pulled out a gun and shot me. I still have the bullet in my shoulder. He told me he was disappointed I didn't beat the shit out of him. He could have killed Mateo and I would have failed my mission. Theo almost seemed impressed by his own story, and my brows rose in interest even as he went quiet to focus on merging onto the highway. Glancing around, he twisted briefly, and I held the handle on the door when he swerved sharply into the middle lane. He didn't let go of my hand, and my fingers tingled as his muscles flexed under his shirt. Positively, Theo had experience driving with one hand, but it was still kind of terrifying in a muted, knee-jerk kind of way. Ah, uh, so I said that I didn't care if he killed Mateo as long as no one else did. Carlyle laughed at that. It was the coldest, creepiest shit ever. Like, serial killer creepy, not... Trailing off as a huge oil tanker breezed past us, Theo clenched and released his jaw while his nerves rattled up my arm. I hate highways so much. I knew this girl in alternative school. Inhaling deeply as the tanker sped by completely, passing the nose of Theo's car, I clicked my teeth absently. Memories of those three months raced through my mind's eye, and a frown dragged down the corners of my mouth. She was nuts. I was only there for three months for my GED, but in that time, she tried to stab the teacher twice. She got busted for smoking meth in the bathroom. She picked a fight with this other girl from a gang, and she got her place broken into and was raped by those guys. When she came back, she bragged about being in a relationship with one of them and got his name tattooed on her neck a week later. She did all that and was never arrested. Shaking my head, I shrugged at the questioning glance Theo shot me. I mean, the answer was obvious. I lived in L.A. at the time, and that kind of thing in that type of neighborhood was almost typical. There were worse people out there, and as long as she only hurt herself, people were content to leave her alone. 
Plus, she had no teeth, so whenever she talked to someone, she spat in their face. Nobody wanted to get too close. So, did you ever think of going to college? And get saddled with debt? No thanks, I'll manage on my own. My comeback earned me a snort of agreement, and I frowned as I thought far, far back. I don't think there was a single time in my life, even before it went to shit, when I thought college was a good idea. I wouldn't know what to go for, and I just know that going would kill whatever I went for if I had a passion for it. You like to dance ballet, though? Humming softly, I shook my head, and Theo cast me a confused furrow of his brow. You looked really excited when Mateo asked you. Theo. A small warm smile stretched my lips, and I reached to scratch his stubble. Stubble that he hadn't had last night at the club. He tensed, gripped the wheel hard as he sucked in a sharp breath, and a soft sigh escaped me. It was a lie, so he'd pay me more. And it worked. I can't do ballet anymore, even though I did like it before. What do you like then? Not your stripper alter ego, divesting the rich to give to your poor once the sun goes down. Giggling a little at that, I withdrew my hand only for him to grab my wrist and keep my fingers on his skin. He cast me an almost fatuous look, like a toddler that didn't want to let go of his mom's neck. Every time he does this kind of thing, like with the shirt, it makes it a little harder to dislike him. What do I like? I don't even know anymore. It's been a long time since I did anything just because I liked it. What do you like to do in your spare time, Theo? Curiosity infected my tone, and he sat back in the seat to tilt his face against my fingers. His jaw ticked under the butt of my palm, and I held my breath in anticipation. Sometimes, I go to the casino in San Diego. I don't gamble much, though. I won a plot of land in a small craps tournament the last time I was out that way. It's in Nocal somewhere. I'm pretty sure they included it in the tournament because some guy wanted chips but had no money, so he gave them the deed. My brows rose and Theo smirked slipperily as mischief twinkled in his eye. Didn't win that at the good casino, though. I was gonna say, I don't think that's legal. He seemed to be coming out of his shell a little, and I wasn't sure if that was a good thing or not. The car fell into silence as we zipped out of town, and I gnawed on my cheek as I turned my gaze out the window. This isn't happening. What a joke. I should have packed my shit and run away again as soon as Sylvie got dragged into this car. I'd be halfway to Canada by now if I was smart. My tongue soured as I licked the backs of my teeth, and I frowned under the slight crease between my brows. Either Theo was a creep, and I wanted to not be around him, or... We had moments, really nice moments, like the one I was currently immersed in. Those few seconds, that intense, brief connection, made me want to go deeper under the surface. I knew better, but that didn't matter. I didn't want to end up dead, but what was my life right now? The truth was that I was worse than dead, and if Theo made it a little better for a little while, why shouldn't I enjoy that? Grinding my teeth to hold back a groan of frustration, my blood simmered in my veins as my mind went around and around in circles. Chapter 16 Ilya You're quiet. Tearing my eyes off the oncoming sign emblazoned with Pine Valley next exit, I flexed my fingers as a slight tingly numbness slithered up my arm. Theo's pensive expression disappeared, but not fast enough, and a sigh dried my lips before I licked them in preparation. I know what I said at the waffle place earlier. I was just thinking, my life's really not worth living as it is right now. His cheek twitched under my fingers, and Theo didn't protest as I pulled away to twiddle my thumbs in my lap. I don't want to kill myself. I hope things will get better. 
and I'm trying really hard to make it better. But I'm really, really unhappy. I live in a shit place. I work in a shit place. And I know that it's better than it was before. But why am I content with that? That's fucked up. The whole concept of life right now is messed up. Isn't that the point of working hard? So you can make your life worth it. There was no judgment in his tone, only slight confusion and a little worry at my words. I mean, who wouldn't be worried about some deep philosophical shit like what had just come out of my mouth? You don't have to worry about Sylvie anymore. That's one issue down, right? I may not have to worry about her, but now I have to worry about money. I know it's a grind, that's not the issue. I just, sometimes, I just want things to get better overnight with minimal work on my part. A sour smirk twisted my lips at how stupid that desire was, and I ran my free hand through my hair absently to pull the strands over my shoulder. It's dumb and unrealistic, but... It's not dumb, Ilya. My cheeks warmed as Theo reached to stroke my jaw with stiff fingers, and I blinked back the sting in my eyes. You've been through a lot. Just because other people have had it worse or are luckier doesn't negate that. You know, I honestly don't know why. Like you said earlier, why don't I just give in, huh? Why don't I just take my pants off and hope it's enough? My mom used to tell me that anything I did in desperation wasn't something to be ashamed of. It may not be panic, but I would consider myself desperate, I guess. Casting Theo a wry glance, my lips quirked up at the ghost of a thought that flitted through my head. This is the part where you say you're not going to take advantage of me. Like fuck, I'd be stupid enough to turn you down, Ilya. He said the words, but I could tell that screwing me wasn't really the focal point of his conviction. Stopping at the end of the off-ramp, he flicked on his blinker before catching my eyes firmly. Your mom is right, and why should you have to take the brunt of someone else's shitty choices? Sylvie put you in a hole, and she's not gonna help you crawl out. That's fucked up, Ilya, not confronting the fact that, for the foreseeable future, your life is gonna suck. You know it, you accept it, and it's not gonna change overnight like you want, but that's okay because you always had to fight for everything, right? If you don't fight for this, where's the big fuck you to the world, huh? You know, Theo, I like you better when you're not trying to be romantic. His head snapped to the side to face me, and his two fingers slid off my chin to curl around my shoulder. For a long moment, he just stared at me, and a fury of emotions played in his eyes before he twisted forward again. Gripping the wheel tightly, he pulled off the ramp and onto a road, and huge oaks lined either side of us. We're here. A gorgeous, hand-painted, hand-carved wooden sign hung over the mouth of a long driveway, and I rolled my bottom lip between my teeth to gnaw diligently. A rehab center? Why'd you bring me to a rehab center? It's a rest and rehabilitation resort not a rehab center. Just trust me, Ilya. You'll like it. Perfectly manicured lawns clung to even more perfectly laid stones that lined the drive, and Theo cleared his throat roughly as he drove up the winding, uncracked asphalt. Mateo comes here when he can't handle the adult world. Oh. Well, that answered that question. I really doubted Theo was the kind of guy to get a facial and pedicure after a long day. The sprawling grounds were lush and green, and people were just milling around enjoying themselves. I could work every day of my life and not afford to come to a place like this. I know. Scrunching up my nose at that, I crossed my arms over my chest as we reached the top of the long drive. The mansion that stood at the end of the asphalt was bigger than my entire apartment block combined, and my eyes widened to take it all in. 
Huge spiral columns of granite held up an empty balcony, and I craned my neck to press my face against the window. The vehicle jostled to a stop, and someone dressed in a smart uniform that may have cost more than Theo's car came bounding down the steps. He opened my door for me, smiling welcomingly, and anxiety slammed into my chest as I swung my legs out. Another person rounded the front of the car and let Theo out, and I stood up to gaze at this disgusting display of insane wealth, and I get to experience it. Come on. I tore my eyes off the mansion, and Theo took my hand to lead me up the perfectly polished, dirt-free marble steps. Mateo bought a room here we can use. We? Theo? No. My heart jumped into my throat, but I didn't want to scuff the floor by trying to stop. The ruined skin on my chest throbbed in fiery irritation, and he twisted before pausing when he caught sight of the apprehension on my face. Four fingers and a thumb threaded between mine, and a frown marred his expression as he shook his head roughly. Mateo will know I'm here. They'll call and tell him. I don't want him showing up and finding you alone. That's all. Like I said, he doesn't know that you're Sylvie's roommate, and I want to keep it that way. Skepticism dried my mouth, and Theo's frown morphed into a scowl as prickles raced up and down my spine. What? What if he does show up? Theo, I can't afford to be in debt to that asshole over a couple hours in a real bed and a nice massage. Please. I didn't recognize the keening tone in my voice, and my palms clammed up as I took a step back. This is a bad idea, okay? I can't do this. We'll just rent a room. I just thought it'd be easier since Mateo already has one and it's got complimentary features. Sure, the more I hung around Theo, the easier it was to figure him out, but it was also becoming startlingly apparent that he was stubborn as all hell. Pursing my lips thinly at that alternative, I started to shake my head, but Theo's scowl only darkened. Consider it a gift, no repayment or expectation. Theo, I... I know you're trying to be nice, but this is making me sick and uncomfortable. The words balanced on the tip of my tongue, but I could see it in his tight features that he was starting to burn his fuse and get frustrated. Something had to cave, and I didn't want it to be me, but I guess that's okay. His eyes brightened in a mix of surprise and satisfaction, and he squeezed my hand before leading me up the stairs. My feet tingled in my ratty sneakers as I stepped very lightly, and I glanced back to make sure I wasn't tracking in dirt. The front doors of the mansion opened when we reached the top landing, and the fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Opulence was a good word to describe this place. It was absolutely dripping in creature comforts and expense. There were old-timey elevators with personally closing doors opposite the reception desk and a huge, grand staircase. It was like being on the Titanic. Man, I wish Leonardo DiCaprio was here. Welcome back, Mr. Jackson. Even the receptionist was beautiful in a model kind of way, and she flashed us both a smile with red-painted lips. Her high cheekbones cradled eyes that sparkled, but I guess she had something to be happy about. Even if she hated her job for whatever reason, I was sure she got paid in potato sacks instead of envelopes. How can I be of service today? Chapter 17 Ilya This is so comfy. The short silk robe was so soft and smooth that it didn't agitate my scars, and I smoothed the sides down my thighs gingerly. The front closed just enough to cover my breasts, but not enough to hide the scars climbing up over my shoulder. Glancing around the room, or should I say sweet, I licked my lips as my gaze trained on the door leading to the living area. After exploring this suite bigger than three of my apartments, I just wanted to jump into the massive jet-spraying bathtub and never get out. Even the separate shower had jets. 
Flexing my toes against the plush, soft carpet, I wandered over to the closed bedroom door and gripped the handle. Anxiety curdled my blood, and I took a deep, stabilizing breath before turning the handle and cracking open the door. Theo sat on the semicircular sofa, but his head whipped up at the change of air because the barrier surely didn't squeak in the slightest. I thought you wanted to waste away in the bath. Flames licked my cheeks as I shook my head, the only part of me he could see, and Theo sat back on the sofa to stretch his long legs. You just like to say shit, don't you, Ilya? You never follow through, do you? Yeah, I guess I don't. He had a point. Every word that came out of my mouth, I ended up not adhering to. I told him I didn't want to be around him, but here I was. In this place, alone, with him. I told him this wasn't happening, but it had been a few hours, and I was already going back on my word. Stepping out from the door, I rolled my lips between my teeth as Theo stiffened, his eyes narrowing into slits as he scanned my bare legs. A bulge formed in his jeans, and my heart hammered against my ribs as I walked over to sit next to him. His heat seared my arm where the half-length sleeve didn't cover. I was stupid. There was nothing anyone could do to dissuade me from the fact that I was just outright dumb at this point. I kept making the same mistake over and over again, telling myself that afterward, 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 it'd stop. But it wasn't going to stop. From the second Theo opened that door in the club, the ball started rolling down a hill, and all my attempts to throw something in front of that ball only made it bounce. It's horrible, isn't it? Speaking up softly, an ugly, self-deprecating smirk twisted my lips, and I fiddled my fingers in my lap. You think you're all that, and then someone shows up, and you realize that you're not. You're big and bad until someone bigger and badder comes along. Then you realize that you're just really tired. You don't have to be the only one that cares about you, Ilya. My gross smirk turned sad, and I sighed shallowly as I brushed a strand of hair behind my ear. Theo's eyes narrowed tighter at the action, and my scalp tingled under my high, loose bun from the intensity of his gaze. It's okay to rely on someone. That doesn't mean being dependent on them. What has that ever gotten either of us? Sylvie turned her back on me. My family decided I was too fucked up to be bothered, so they shoved me into foster care. And before you say it, you know just as well as I do that you'd eventually screw me over too. Whether or not you want to admit it, you're only as close to someone as their usefulness or convenience allows. Surrounded by all this pomp and gaudy beauty, I felt small and insignificant, and Theo grunted lowly in acknowledgement. I wish you hadn't brought me here. Theo grabbed me, causing me so much pain, bruising my already destroyed body. It seemed like so long ago even though it was just last night. I said things and acted the opposite, but did I really know what I wanted anymore? I didn't want to struggle financially. I wanted a place to live that wasn't infested with cockroaches and ants. I wanted a regular job that required me to make strangers think I gave a shit about them. Laying down on the sofa, I rested my cheek on Theo's thigh, but he didn't tense or grab my bun or anything. Closing my eyes, I savored the tentativeness of his hand as he pulled down my robe and rested his palm on my hip. Warmth radiated from his touch, and I reached for his right hand to plop it on my head. And, ever so nicely, Theo started playing with my hair. His palm left my hip as he leaned forward to snatch the remote off the coffee table, and he propped back to recline the seat. Behind my shuttered lids, the television flickered on, the sounds floating garbled in my ears, but he turned the volume down and didn't stop threading my hair through his thumb and forefinger. 
He had such incredible resolve. And what did I have? Some flimsy bullshit declaration that I couldn't keep. Theo had every right to have that first impression of me. I mean, what if my whole conviction was a lie? What if I had everything backward and I was just pretending to be strong? Was there harm in just giving up? Or was I just screwing myself over by fighting? Hey, Theo? A gruff hum met my mumble, and Theo worked his three fingers under my bun to scratch my scalp. What did you think when you first saw me? Before everything, even going into the VIP room, what was the first thing that came to mind when you opened the door? He inhaled deeply, sinking a little lower into the sofa, and I curled my toes in anticipation of his answer. I was kind of pissed you were wearing contacts and hair dye. I had a feeling you were a lot more beautiful without them, and I was right. Stiff fingers curled slightly in my bun, and Theo exhaled heavily as the light of the television combated the memories. I get why you do it, though. I wondered what color your eyes were, and whether or not your ass was as tight as it looked in your leotard. Sitting up, I shuffled wordlessly to straddle Theo's lap, and he stiffened with a sharp whistle of an inhale. Facing the television, thoughts were strangely absent from my mind, and I leaned back as heat seeped into my veins. He stared straight ahead, but his chin jerked when I tilted my head to brush my lips along his jaw. Is it? Reclined in the seat, Theo's abdominal muscles rippled against my ass as I ground against him, and a powerful rattle jolted up my spine. We both know whatever comes out of my mouth is a lie. Maybe that's why it's so frustrating. Lies are so hard to keep up with. Incredible defined muscles played along the length of my back, and Theo ground his teeth, audible in my ear. Rolling my hips against his bulge, I gripped his forearms just as he braced his fists around my calves, and his thick arm hair tickled between my fingers. My tongue snuck out to scrape against his stubble, and I shivered at the heady taste of him. Will fucking me give you the answer you're looking for, Ilya? I paused at the probe, and Theo growled in displeasure as he thrust to keep the friction going. I'm not gonna say no, but it's not gonna be my fault if it doesn't do what you think it will. I don't even know what the question is, Theo. His cheek twitched against my forehead as my breath rolled down his neck, and I groaned softly. Unhooking his left hand from around my leg, he reached up, and my heart jumped into my throat as my nails dug into his arm. Don't touch me there. The atmosphere became tense at my snap, and the sensation seeped through my melted skin to send tingles shooting down my sternum. Slowly, Theo lowered his hand to open my robe, and I released his forearm to hold the top closed. His jaw clenched against the bridge of my nose as I clutched the plain white silk, but if he wondered, he didn't do the stupid thing and open his mouth. Oh, calloused fingertips circled my clit through my panties, and I gasped as shocks skittered through my abdomen. Pleasure flared to wrap my heart in a vice, and I thrust my hips against Theo's palm in hot eagerness. More. Yeah. Nodding hastily at his low growl, goosebumps blanketed my body, and I licked my lips heavily. Theo pulled my underwear to the side, and I clenched in expectation and this growing desire to just feel light. Rough fingertips circled my bead, and pleasures tightened my abdomen as I rested my head on his shoulder. Knowing fingers spread my folds, and a gasp burst from my throat when he ground the butt of his palm against me. Theo, 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 oh. His body jolted at my back, muscles taut, skin burning mine, as he thrust two fingers into my channel, and I moaned his name. Arching to roll my hips, my chest throbbed fiercely, but I ignored it for the moment to savor the sensation. Harsh pants sounded above the blood pounding in my ears, and Theo curled his fingers to draw me closer, 
and closer. Flopping forward, I braced my palms on his knees to roll and buck in white-hot need, and Theo let go of my leg to grab my ass with his right hand. His fingers inside me wiggled and curled, but he was quick to exit my channel to slip his palm under my ass. Oh, God, yes. My high-pitched keen when he shoved his fingers past my entrance with a grunt rang in the room, and my knees lifted off the sofa. Yes, yes, yes. Pushing my ass up, I spread my thighs a little wider, and Theo ducked his head to kiss and graze his teeth over my ass cheek. His knuckles bashed my pelvis with each powerful jab of his hand, and two fingers quickly turned into three. Clamping down on his thick digits, I scrunched up my face as my thighs quivered around his forearm. Fuck, I'm gonna come, make me come, make me, I, I'm, c c Shivers assaulted my spine and I ducked my head with a cry as my words dried up on my tongue. Theo twisted and curled his fingers deep inside me and my channel undulated wildly as he coaxed me to jump off the edge. Waves of icy euphoria rippled up my chest, set cold fire to my ruined skin, prickled up my collarbones, and I clenched my jaw as I sat back on his hand. Sputtering a gasp, I spasmed weakly when Theo pulled out of me, and he sighed to send frigid cold air rolling up my back. Pushing me off him, he grabbed my bun with his right hand, but he didn't unfasten his jeans like my addled mind expected. Instead, he just set my face on his thigh again, his soft, scarred palm rubbing my face so gently. Now, though, I had a question, one that I thought Theo had the answer to. What if trusting him doesn't turn out to be a mistake like all the others? Chapter 18 Theo My phone buzzed insistently beside me on the real leather of the couch, and my eyelid twitched in agitation when I glanced at the caller ID. Reaching for my cell, I swiped the accept button because God only fucking knew that Mateo would keep calling and calling like a douchebag. If you're gonna harass me all goddamn day, Mateo, I'm gonna block your ass and quit. Growling lowly into the phone, I scowled when Ilya tensed against my leg, and my lip curled into a snarl. The fuck you want, huh? If it has anything to do with Sylvie, get your ass back here, Theo, and bring the roommate, or you won't have to quit. I'll put the bounty on you. I'm done playing this game. Arching a brow at the cold, detached tone that flowed through the line, I rolled my jaw as my prickly beard bristled. I was not Mateo's errand boy or his friend, and I carefully picked out what I was going to say. Irritation flooded my chest, and I didn't bother trying to hide it when I opened my mouth. I'll get there when I get there. I hung up on Mateo's stupid ass, and I set my phone down to flop my head back and scowl at the ceiling. He didn't scare me. Shit, nothing scared me anymore, even if Big Bro made me a little nervous. I stroked Ilya's hair in the ensuing heavy silence. Hey, is your name really Ilya, or is that your stage name or something? It really is. It was my grandfather's name. Surprise rose my brows, and she rolled onto her back to smile fondly when I looked down. Yeah, it's a boy's name. Ironically, he escaped Nazi persecution just to have his own daughter die of smoke inhalation. Frowning as Ilya's smile soured, I rubbed her forehead with my thumb, and my gaze flickered to the thick pad of scar tissue stretching over her shoulder. Obviously, her parents hadn't died natural deaths, but I wasn't going to ask. That was downright rude, and I had a hard enough time trying not to come off as a pushy asshole. Will Mateo really have you killed if you don't bring me back? Licking my teeth at that, 
I reached to scratch my scruff as a harsh sigh bubbled up in my chest. He can try. He's too much of a pussy to do it himself. Not to mention, if he put out a hit on me and people found out that it was for something as stupid as not doing something that's not even my job description, he might get a visit from his brother. Curiosity sparkled in Ilya's swirling green eyes, and I exhaled heavily as I weighed my options. I put up with Mateo because, why the fuck not, you know? I get paid a lot to keep him from stubbing his toe. He's not exactly the guy you want to bother to assassinate either, which makes my job easier. He runs things here, but that's just to keep him from fucking up the real operations because he's incompetent. Like fixating on Sylvie even though it's not gonna end well. Nodding curtly, I slumped a little against the sofa, and Ilya rolled back onto her side to stare through the television mounted on the wall. He does know she's had two back alley abortions, right? I'm positive he didn't even see her in person yet. I really couldn't care less, but Mateo needs to grow the fuck up. He's only 24 and has a raging case of rich bitch syndrome, so maybe that'll be the thing that screws him up just the right way. She hummed softly, and I threaded my fingers through her thick, silky hair to scratch her scalp. That, at least, was something she liked that I hadn't fucked up yet. I know she's your friend, or she was, but frankly, I would have gotten rid of her the second I found out if I was Mateo. Well, you're not, so... Pushing herself onto her arms, Ilya folded her legs under her, and every move she made was so graceful that it stole my breath. Gazing at me from under sunken hoods, she fluttered her lashes, and I clenched my jaw hard. You're a lot more genuine, even if it backfires on you sometimes, Theo. I got one thing going for me, at least. My palms itched to bury in Ilya's long hair and kiss her, and she puffed out her lips like she wanted me to. I wasn't sure what I'd said that made that switch flip in her head but I wasn't going to question it either. Reaching to stroke her cheek, my mind whirred with how fast and hard things went from stop, do not pass go, to collect two hundred dollars. I'll get around to going back. If Mateo doesn't want to be treated like a kid, he shouldn't act like one. It's one thing to man up when you knock a one-night stand up, but it's another thing to go about it the way he is. Don't you think he'll find out eventually who I am? You can't hide me forever. Ilya inched a little bit closer, and I clenched my jaw when she put her hand right on my crotch. My raging hard-on throbbed almost painfully, and a glimmer shimmered in her cobalt-green eyes. Squeezing my cock outside my jeans, she puffed out a breath through her mouth, and my abdomen tightened as desire thrummed up and down my thighs. She really knew what she was doing, and I ground my teeth hard while my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth. I'm not hiding you. I brought you here because I felt guilty about what I did last night. You deserve a little R&R, Ilya. There. Fuck. The truth worked before. Might as well just stick with that. I was gonna leave you here to enjoy some alone time but then you started freaking the fuck out about. Sucking in a sharp breath when Ilya squeezed more firmly, I flopped my head back as fire swirled in my lungs. In the second or two that I glared at the ceiling, she attacked my jean fastenings, and I groaned when her fingers wrapped around my shaft. Red flashed behind my lids when I blinked, but she reached to touch my chin with her free hand instead of just diving down head first. Glancing over, my pupils narrowed at the pink tinge in Ilya's cheeks, the brightness in her mossy eyes as they swirled with hazel. Theo. My name caressed her lips, and goosebumps blanketed my bare arms as she leaned in to brush her nose up my neck. Flames licked just under my skin, and my throat flexed as every muscle in my body quivered with the thick sexual tension floating in the air. Don't make me regret this, please. 
I probably might, but stick it out. Realization slammed into my gut as it knotted tighter with each pump of my cock, and Ilya ground her forehead into my cheek. The one thing I'll never do is lie to you, Ilya. The other stuff is accidental, but I'll never lie to you. Every fucking person she ever met had lied to her somehow. Her best friend, her family, her co-workers, even the guy checking out her groceries. Reaching to cup the back of her head, a growl built in my chest as her hot breath rolled down my chest under my t-shirt. My lip curled into a snarl at her little broken hum, and she swiped the seeping head of my cock with her thumb gently. I trust you, a little. The soft whisper resonated deep in me, and I gasped as Ilya's skin left my face. My right hand, or what was left of it, disappeared into her luscious hair to gather it up, and I palmed her back to pull her robe up her hips. Plump lips teased my cock, and she spit to ease the friction as pleasure rattled up my spine. Squeezing her tight ass, I nudged her legs open, and my heart stuttered when she licked the head of my cock thickly. Oh, fuck. I couldn't remember the last time I'd gotten a blowjob. Most women looked at my hand and decided that I couldn't deliver that shit right back, so it must not have been worth it. Sucking on my head, Ilya squeezed hard as she pumped, and I thrust as a groan escaped me. Heat skittered up my abdomen, and I parted her folds to rub her clit as she gradually took me deeper down her throat. Even sucking cock, Ilya was graceful, her lips wrapping and releasing until the head hit the back of her throat. Her knees slid outwards, and she popped her ass up even as she tilted her head. Groaning when she swished her tongue along the underside of my shaft, I pushed her head down until her beautiful little gag shattered the atmosphere. Ilya, fuck. I'd had this hard on all damn morning, since she so politely told me to fuck off at the waffle place and my breath hitched when she gagged around my head. Pulling back, she sucked in a short breath, and I closed my eyes and let my head fall back in pure bliss. Yeah. Circling her clit, my fingers slickened with Ilya's juices, and I clenched my jaw as I worked two fingers into her tight channel. Her hot mouth took in my cock again before she set a steady, deep pace, and her moan reverberated up my shaft to bristle the hairs on my abdomen. When I fingered her, it had been frenzied and quick, but this was slow and savory, and damn, did Ilya know her way around a cock. The roughness of her tongue along the thick vein under my cock was tantalizing, and I pushed her head down and thrust up. Ilya choked harshly, but didn't pull away, her teeth grazing the base of my cock. Her soft palm cupped my balls, and I sputtered a gasp as my heart palpitated in pleasure. Grappling her perky ass with my good hand, I couldn't do two things at once, and her throat tightened around my head. Shit, Ilya, I'm gonna come. F fuck. My voice shook with need, and she moaned around my cock and squeezed my balls expertly. Clenching my jaw hard, Tingle shot up my thighs and down my spine to ball up in my tailbone. Stay like that, stay just like that. And she fucking did. Ilya tensed, not moving, and goosebumps swept down her back against my forearm as her ass cheeks flexed in my palm. My cock rippled from the base up, and I held my breath as hot cum spurted from my head and down her throat. Only then did she pull back to suck me dry, and she pumped my cock as spasms raced up my legs. 
Forcing my eyes open, I gulped harshly at the absolutely heavenly sight of her, her slender brows furrowed, eyes glistening, face red. She was so fucking beautiful with her hollowed cheeks and flexing throat as she greedily swallowed my cum. That release almost fell to the wayside to Ilya's beauty, and I unhooked my fingers from her ass to caress the sharp line of her jaw. Bright, swirling eyes met mine, blazing with intense need, but I only cupped her face and drew her to my chest. My heart thundered against her cheek, and she curled up with satisfied ragged pants that seeped through my shirt. You should take a really long, nice bath. Maybe take a nap in a real bed. I'll order room service. This trip is not gonna be ruined. My harsh whisper earned me a hiccup of a breath, and I stroked Ilya's face and hair as I sunk into the sofa. Neither of us made any attempt to move, but I was perfectly okay with that. She didn't rub up against me. In fact, her chest didn't touch me at all, but she did put her hand on mine. That was enough. That was more than enough. Chapter 19 Theo Stepping into Mateo's nice, high-security home, I glanced around as an eerie silence met me. He lived the way a spoiled child lived, in a house too big, with furniture that wasn't used, and a living room with a huge flat screen he'd never turned on. The baby blue walls resonated with the silence, and I shut the front door and locked it. More so, he couldn't escape faster than I could run because, let's fucking face it, Mateo couldn't get me on my worst day, and I was most definitely not having a bad day. I dropped Ilya off at her apartment after she spent all day in the lap of luxury, and I glanced down at my phone to scan the screen. The time read 2 a.m. on the dot, and a scowl twisted my lips because I would rather be passed out with her curled up against my side. She slept all bunched up. I knew it was because of that damn cot, but I couldn't do anything about it. The hairs on the back of my neck bristled in threat, tearing me from my reverie, and I acted before my eyes focused in the gloom. Whipping to the side, I shoved my body, and a terrifying squeak echoed in my ears as I held a body to the wall by the throat. Blinking hard, a ghostly white face became sharper, and Julie sniffled hard when I released her as gently as I could. Don't sneak up on me like that, Julie. I could have hurt you. In the faint light from the backyard light that seeped through the curtained sliding doors, a glint on her face drew my gaze. Frowning, I reached to wipe the spot with my thumb, and the metallic scent of blood blossomed with her pained whimper. What happened? Mateo happened. I was just the first person he saw. Her voice shook wildly, and I scowled darkly as she took a rattling sigh. I'm taking a few days off. Let him know. He won't try anything with you, Theo. Oh, I'll let him know, all right. There was a reason Mateo paid his employees an obscene amount of money, after all, to Julie and her mopping floors that weren't dirty. Did Mateo lash out at anyone else? He's been upset all day. He locked himself in his room. That poor girl, she needs a doctor. She's not doing okay. Only grunting at that, I shuffled back and opened the door for her just to make sure Julie got outside and to her car all right. I'll see you later, Theo. Glancing around, my eyes narrowed into tight points, and my stubble bristled at the utter lack of security. Normally, Mateo had two or three bodyguards inside his house, more if I wasn't around. They were nowhere to be seen, and yet... Julie was lingering around despite getting off at 10 p.m. She must have been hiding or something, or waiting for me, so she didn't get caught by Mateo again. Only when Julie got in her car and was out of the driveway did I shut and lock the door again, and I turned on my heel to storm toward the stairs. 
All the fury I'd suppressed today came welling up to the surface, and I clenched and released my fist by my side. My gut rotted as the silence rang in my ears, broken only by my heavy footfall and hot, harsh pants. I was getting sick and fucking tired of Mateo, and being around Ilya, well, I'd gotten a taste of the good life. Why would I be okay continuing to settle with this asshole that couldn't tie his own fucking shoes? Mateo! Exhaling fire as I headed down the hall, my irritated bellow echoed through the house, and a faint thump sounded in reply. I stopped in front of his door only to tense, and I unceremoniously kicked open the barrier as hard as I could. The wood splintered and flew as the lock busted through the frame, and the knob sailed across the room right into Mateo's computer screen. Really, I may be his bodyguard, and he may be a criminal, no matter how ineffectual, but I had some loose morals. Hitting anyone that hadn't done shit to deserve it was one of them. My narrowed vision tinged red as I glanced around, and Mateo stood at the foot of his king-size bed, trying to size me up. He didn't work out. He didn't go to the range. He didn't do anything that made him even slightly capable of dealing with me, bum hand or not. Grinding my teeth, my lip curled into a snarl, and he blanched despite the strangely blank look on his pretty boy face. You were supposed to be back hours ago with the roommate. I didn't know what the fuck possessed Mateo to open his mouth, but something in my brain switched off. Stalking across the room, I clenched my fist tight and sent it sailing for his nose. My jab was too fast for him to follow. He let out a girly squeal and crumpled like wax paper with a hard thud, and my toes curled in my shoes with the urge to kick him. Let's get one fucking thing clear, kid. Grabbing Mateo by his silky soft prized hair, I jerked his head back and bent to glare at him. I'm not your fucking errand boy. I'm not obliged to come when you call like some fucking dog. I don't have to do fucking shit for you but keep you from dying. And right now, you're fucking pushing it. Snarling nastily, spittle flew into Mateo's face, and a primitive satisfaction blazed across my chest when he flinched. He paled, his lips thinning, and uncertainty flashed in his eyes as they widened in the reflection of a lamp on his desk. We're not fucking friends. You're a spoiled bitch, and I'm babysitting you for a fortune. Don't ever expect me to do anything else. Throwing Mateo on the floor, I straightened to wipe my hand on my jeans with a disgusted sound. And if you ever hit Julie again, I'll cut your hand off. Trust me, it's not a pleasant experience. Just like a child. I took Mateo's door privileges away, and I closed my eyes to take a few deep breaths. I shouldn't have left, Ilya. My eyelid twitched in agitation as the thought flashed behind my eyes, and I strode out of the room and across the hall into my own. Leaning against the door, I rubbed my face and neck harshly, and my knuckles ached ever so slightly. That was the problem with rich kids. They thought everyone was obligated to serve them in every way because they had money. Mateo paid me, so what right did I have to deny him? At this moment, I'd bet all the money in my wallet that he was thinking exactly that, and a sudden wash of icy cold swept down my torso. I had no money in my wallet. Ilya took it all last night before I drove her home. Jesus Christ. Recently, I'd made a lot of threats to Mateo, and I was fucking itching to make good on them. For some reason, he was pissing me off more than usual, and it was sticking to me worse. Maybe it was meeting Ilya and seeing how much she struggled that made me so intolerant of Mateo. Shit. Blowing out a hot breath, I shook my head viciously and rolled my shoulders in a semi-successful attempt to ease the tension in my body. 
The heat in my chest died down, and I walked over to my bed to sit down and kick off my shoes. Hopefully that bitch won't scream the second I close my eyes. Sylvie must have been passed out from the effects of her withdrawal, if she was even going through it yet. Rubbing my face, I laid back on my bed with my legs dangling off the end, and the ceiling swirled mesmerizingly. What a way to end the day. When I closed my eyes, I could see Ilya's face after she got out of the bath with crystal clarity. She looked so happy, smiling almost ear to ear with a little pep in her step. I didn't know a simple bath could make someone so damn happy. I'd asked if she liked it, and she hit me with one of those phrases that started off great and just ended in a blazing dumpster fire. She was so relaxed, but I haven't taken a bath since before my parents died, only showers. What the actual fuck? How much did her life have to suck that she couldn't enjoy something so mundane? Glancing around through unfocused eyes, I realized my bedroom here was bigger than her entire apartment. Frowning darkly, I held up my mangled hand and clenched my jaw. I really don't have it bad, do I? Which was, frankly, dumb as fuck, because I had told Ilya that she shouldn't feel invalidated by people who had it worse or better than her. Shit. Flopping my arm down, I exhaled a heavy breath as the day's events flickered through my mind's eye like a movie reel being sped up. Ilya was lost, and I was generally fucking stupid and didn't know how to help her up to this point. No wonder she went back and forth the way she did. Chapter 20 Ilya Theo? Leaning on the doorframe, Theo smirked at me, and I pursed my lips thinly as I hid my hand behind the door. What's up? I have to go to work in a little while. I came by to see if you were hungry. It worked out pretty well before, so I thought I'd try again. Surprise rose my brows, and I tightened my grip on the can in my hand as he scanned me through narrowed eyes. You haven't dyed your hair yet. Um, not yet. I was just about to start. Rocking back on my heels when Theo leaned toward me, I held my breath, and suspicion flitted across his expression. It's a bit of a process, so... Trailing off, I saw the exact second he decided something was up, and Theo leaned in uncomfortably close to my neck and sniffed. His narrowed pupils tightened, and the can in my hand started to cramp my palm even as I flexed my fingers around it. Why are you nervous? Without letting me take a breath in preparation, Theo shouldered past me, and I shut the door quickly to lean against it. The spoon in my can rattled slightly, and my heart jumped into my throat when he braced both his palms on either side of my head. What are you hiding? The fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up as he scanned me again, slowly, and I clamped my mouth shut. I got the sense Theo didn't think something stupid, like I had a guy in my apartment, but he knew something was up. Reaching down to grab my wrist, he squeezed almost threateningly, and that action sucked the fight from me. Blustering out a sigh, I unveiled the can from behind my back, and Theo tensed as embarrassment engulfed my face in flames. The little can burned my palm, and I ducked my head as confusion welled up in my chest. Why was I ashamed? I wasn't doing anything wrong. It is that cat food? Were you eating that? Disgust roughened Theo's tone, and I nodded dully as his muscles played under his shirt out of the top of my field of vision. He recoiled with a harsh grunt, and shock jolted through me when he smacked the can out of my hand. The metal and plastic clattered to the floor loud and abrasive, and I gasped when he wrapped his good hand in my hair. Suddenly, his finger was in my mouth, and my stomach flipped when Theo held down my tongue. 
gagging harshly, tears sprung to my eyes, but he just held down my head until my teeth banged against his single, lonely knuckle. Slapping at his chest, panic fueled my racing heart, and I arched sharply when bile sloshed up my throat. I'd nearly finished that can, and it all came spewing out onto the floor as weakness shook my knees. Saliva dribbled from my mouth, a dazed sort of panic gripping my lungs in a vice, and the sounds of my gagging filled my apartment. Theo ripped his hand from down my throat, and I grappled his t-shirt as I threw up on his shoes. That's fucking disgusting. His gruff snarl rippled across my hallowed face, and I pushed him hard enough to knock myself back. Hitting the floor hard, my scalp ached from his grip, and I scooted back as my watery eyes wandered until they met his. His gaze shimmered with conviction and disgust and all manner of nasty things, and I hiccuped as he ran his good hand over his head in agitation. What the fuck, Ilya? Theo took a step toward me, and I whipped over to crawl toward the bathroom as harsh pants dried my throat. Whimpering pathetically, I tried to wrap my head around what just happened as I slammed the door shut and blocked it with my body. Suddenly, I was kind of glad that my bathroom was small, and I braced myself against the door with my feet flat against the low rim of the shower. Ilya, open the damn door. No! Covering my face with violently trembling hands, I croaked out from beneath my palms, and he banged on the door hard. My heart stuttered with each impact, and my breath hitched at the notion that he could just kick the barrier in. Stop, stop, why would you do that? He really just made me throw up. It didn't even really hurt despite the acid gnawing through my throat. My rasp was met with silence, and I struggled to fill my lungs as my heart gorged on adrenaline. Tears ran in rivers down my face and between my fingers, and I shivered against the door as short, hot breaths whistled through chattering teeth. What the fuck kind of question is that? You were eating cat food. What the fuck is wrong with you, Ilya? Theo punched the door, but his words hurt more than the rattling of my spine from the impact. Why the fuck would you do that, huh? Open the damn door. Why would I do that? Because I was hungry, and I had no food in my house, and I didn't want to buy anything. I simply didn't have money this week, but I did have cat food because they were 20 cents a can. Two or three here and there wasn't a huge deal, and they held me over when I was in a pinch. Plus, I'd been eating them for a long enough time that it tasted good, not just not bad. When I had nothing else, I could always, always afford a can of cat food. Go away, Theo, I'm not coming out. My shaky declaration only earned the poor door another punch, and I winced when my knee bent awkwardly from the pressure. There was no lock. I had to use my whole body to keep the barrier closed, and I sniffled hard from behind my hands. I hadn't seen Theo in a few days. I'd assumed that he was dealing with Matteo and Sylvie, and I just went about my business as usual but I was not making good tips by any means right now. I couldn't do anything about it either. Rohe didn't pay us or give out small loans or IOUs. If there was a lull, we had to suck it up and deal. Open the goddamn door, Ilya. Growling through the slight gap between the door and the frame, Theo cleared his throat roughly, expectantly. I didn't move didn't dare take a breath, and he snorted like a bull waiting to be let out of the stall and wreak havoc. Open the door, Ilya. No, I'm not coming out. Gulping harshly, I exhaled a shuddering breath, and I could hear Theo pacing just beyond the door. Go away, J just go away. Like fuck. My heart made a bid to burst from my chest when Theo banged on the door, higher this time, far above my head. Wincing as he panted through the crack, I lowered my hands to keep my rib from splitting open. 
Why didn't you just tell me you were strapped for cash? I would have helped you out, Ilya. Why would you? Bitterness dribbled from my tongue and an ugly black blotch slathered along my ribs. This is my life, Theo. You can't just walk up and bang on it and it'll start working right. It works for everything else. Grinding the reply through his teeth, Theo exhaled a muffled, heavy breath through the crack in the door, and I flopped my head back to rub my clammy palms on my jeans. Just open the door. We'll get you real human food, Ilya. Despite my better judgment, the block I'd made of my own body to keep the barrier closed crumpled, and I pulled my knees to my chin. The tender skin on my sides pulled and burned, and my eyelids fluttered closed briefly as I gulped down the saliva pooling under my tongue. Slowly standing up, I licked my lips as nerves tingled to the bridge of my nose. Theo leaned on the frame when I popped open the barrier just an inch, and he glared hotly at me as his jaw worked. Reaching to wipe my mouth, I frowned into the deafening silence before he forced his mouth open with a slight, faint pop. Do you think I'd hang it over you or something? I shook my head mutely, and Theo sighed harshly through flared nostrils to bristle the fine hairs on my face. Why would you resort to eating cat food instead of asking me for help? Cat food is cheap, and to be honest, I've been eating it so long that it's pretty good, actually. I don't do it a lot, but when I'm in a pinch. He covered his mouth at my confession, rocking back on his heels to brandish his tense shoulders. The thick ropes of muscle in his arm rippled with power, and my heart throbbed at the tortured glint in his eye. Why are you worried about money? I have to pay for everything by myself. The third is coming up, and Sylvie's not exactly going to pay her half this month. The truth was that I'd been so caught in that drama, and with Theo, that I'd lost track of the days. I'd missed three days of work, and I was going to be short on rent by a good two hundred dollars. Thankfully, my electric bill was barely seventy-five dollars, and I didn't have anything else, really, but that minimalism didn't help my astronomical rent. My rent is twelve hundred dollars for this place, and I don't have it. That's why I'm going to work early, too. You pay twelve hundred dollars to live in this shit stain? What the fuck, Ilya? Theo's anger peaked again, and I pursed my lips thinly as he squeezed his eyes shut and took a stabilizing breath. Physical pain flickered across his face, and he cleared his throat roughly before rolling his shoulders hard. Get ready for work. I'll order you something, for fuck's sake, and use mouthwash. Chapter 21 Ilya Hovering over Theo's lap, I jiggled my ass as he sat back on braced arms, and my back bristled under my clothes from the intensity of his stare. The light skirt attached to my leotard tickled my upper thighs, and I glanced back just as he reached his right hand out. A callous, meaty palm slid heavily up my back, following my spine, and I shivered deliciously from the faint friction. I'm pretty sure this ass is worth more than a pizza, Ilya. He wasn't complaining, though, and I hummed softly in acknowledgement. Have you thought about moving? Not yet. Things had calmed down at least, and Theo grunted at my reply before I plopped in his lap to grind against the bulge in his jeans. What about you and Matteo? He's avoiding me because I punched him in the face. I'd say it's going pretty all right. He won't leave his room, which is stupid, because I broke the door when I busted it down. A tickle of amusement swept through me, and I smiled a little at the image of a grown-ass man acting like that. He has it bad. Rich kids were the worst. Of course, there were exceptions to that rule, but on the whole, I'm supposed to watch him, make sure he doesn't die, and he treats me like I'm at his beck and call just because he pays me an obscene amount of money. Life doesn't work like that. 
If Mateo wasn't shoved into the corner, he'd probably create the largest dumpster fire ever. Have you ever thought of quitting? Is it really worth it? Straightening against my back, Theo inhaled deeply against my shoulder, and goosebumps pocked down my arm. All you do is complain about him. Nah, I get paid a lot, as I've said. Chapped lips brushed the base of my neck, and I gasped as Theo pushed my dyed pink hair out of the way. His voice roughened, tone deepening, and his left hand worked under me to squeeze my ass cheek. I get my own car, and I get to live in a nice place, expense-free. The benefits outweigh the fact that, occasionally, I gotta break his nose. Humming a crackling sound as my eyelids fluttered closed, I enjoyed the hardness and heat against my back, and Theo grazed his teeth against my neck. Beneath my leotard and the thick bandages covering my torso, my skin twitched and pulled taut with desire, and I flopped my head back to groan faintly. His bulge pressed insistently against my core, and he swiped his fingers up my crotch to circle my clit outside of my stockings. Theo hadn't seen me naked yet, hadn't seen the huge, ugly, purple mark that was slowly turning a sickly green on my side. My bruise didn't hurt anymore, or I'd just gotten used to it, and my breath caught when he pulled his hand out from under me to creep his fingers over my thigh. But his palm didn't glide south, and I tensed when Theo grabbed my breast and squeezed with a low growl rolling down my spine. Tears instantly sprang to my eyes before I'd even registered the pain, the fiery tug, and I sucked in a whistle of breath through my teeth. My elbow sailed into his face, but the shock rendered his jolt weak against my hips. His palm fell from my breast, and I jumped up to pant viciously as pin needles stabbed my front in waves from top to bottom. What the fu- Theo's nasty snarl caught when he locked eyes on my face, but I couldn't see him beyond the tears that bubbled up to the brim of my lids. My pants turned to hyperventilations as fire engulfed my lungs, and my heart strained as it beat too hard and fast. Grinding my teeth until they threatened to crack, my mouth dried, and my furious breaths became rasps. Ilya. Don't. Croaking hoarsely, I blinked hard, and tears boiled on my heated face as pain sent spasms rippling down my chest, which only intensified the pain. Don't, don't. Turning around sluggishly, I shuffled over to the wall to brace both my palms, and I squeezed my eyes shut. I couldn't breathe deeply, couldn't attempt to get any control over myself. I just had to endure until it died down. A mangled palm touched my back, and I ducked my head to relieve some of the burning at my sternum. I guess I'll never touch your titties again. Even beyond the blood drumming in my ears, Theo's grumble sounded gruff and bitter, and I exhaled a fiery breath through my nose. Shit, Ilya. It's okay. It's, it's fine. Just, just a, a minute. I wasn't mad. I was in too much pain to be mad. Besides, Theo had every right to want to touch my chest, and it was really my fault for not saying something first. After all, it wasn't his fault for not knowing something I never told him. Scrunching up my face, I crouched down to force the air from my lungs when it caught behind the dense lump in my throat. Do you need the hospital? No. Cracking my eyes open, they wandered dazedly to the right, and Theo's face dripped in concern. I, I shouldn't have skipped PT. You can't use my own joke against me, Ilya. A pained smirk stretched my lips, and Theo sighed heavily as he rubbed my back gently. I'm sorry. It's okay. Managing a slightly heavier breath than previously, I reached to tangle my fist in Theo's t-shirt, and he covered it with his good hand. I didn't tell you. I didn't want you asking about it. My voice shook, but I didn't stutter, and I craned my neck in an effort to dislodge the ball in my throat. 
Theo's face masked in graveness, and he squeezed my hand as I slowly but surely unknotted my muscles. Like I suspected with his arm, this happened a lot. Even the slightest breeze tipped me off, which is why I wore the bandages. They covered my scars and reduced friction, and unexpected touches couldn't happen anymore. I wouldn't ask about it. His right hand flexed against my back knowingly, and I leaned over into his chest to wipe the sweat from my forehead on his shirt. At least yours is easier to hide. I get a lot of looks because of my face and hand. I think it's handsome. The truth was that I didn't notice Theo's scar all that much. It wasn't like it ripped down the front of his face or anything. The line was just a jagged, dark line. The pizza's not even here yet. A particularly violent spasm ripped up my spine, and I hissed even as Theo wrapped his arm around my back firmly. Wincing as pain flared across my chest, I tightened my grip in his shirt, and the neck seam creaked in protest overly loud in my ears. You got me real good, by the way. My brows furrowed in confusion, and I glanced up as Theo rubbed his jaw and cheek with his bad hand. Who taught you to elbow someone in the face like that? You got me right in the cheekbone. Oh, my mom did. Appreciation swirled in his eyes, and I took a rattling breath as I leaned my head against his chest. My mind puttered along leisurely, and Theo sat back on the floor to gingerly wrap his legs around me. When I was eight, she taught me to defend myself. She was definitely one of those people that saw the glass half empty. My mom is the kind of woman that'd buy takeout and pass it off as her own so she can impress people at Thanksgiving. His hand swept up into my hair as he spoke, and Theo needed my scalp despite the dye that'd rub off on his skin. When I decided to go into the military, she threw a party. When I got deployed for the first time, she wasn't nearly as excited. Was it scary? Sniffing hard, I closed my eyes and wiped my face on his shirt as he chuckled a little cynically. I almost shit myself when they announced we were landing. Those transport planes aren't the most smooth things to ride through the sky at 200 miles per hour. I didn't used to be like this when I was 19 and 20 years old. I was different back then. I always thought that I'd end up like one of those guys in the USAA commercials with a small business and a perfect family and all that shit. My gaze flickered up at the sourness that dragged down Theo's lips, and he pressed his chin against my crown with a faint grunt. I mean, there's a reason why it's young and stupid. When I was little, I wanted to be a cop. My mom had been a cop, and the incident that led to her and my father's deaths had been investigated into the ground and ten feet more. Everyone suspected foul play, but it had simply been faulty wiring in the house they rented. After they died, my aunt took me in and sued the property manager for everything she owned, and when she spent it all, she kicked me out. I went into foster care for about seven hours, which was just sitting at the police station, getting sad looks by everyone. I ran away. That's some shit, Ilya. I didn't really reply content to just soak up Theo's warmth until a light knock sounded at the door. Chapter 22 Theo We're going out. Under my headphones, I barely made out Mateo's garbled grumble, and I glanced up from my phone as he stood up. He looked exhausted, with dark circles under his eyes and stress lines around his mouth, and my lip twitched faintly. Working my headset off one ear, Sylvie's blood-curdling shrieking echoed instead of sweet, sweet silence, and I leaned back to cross my knees. If you leave this house, Mateo, I'll kill her. My matter-of-fact declaration made Mateo pause, and he scowled darkly at me. Sylvie had been screaming non-stop for like seven hours now, but I had noise-canceling headphones. A wondrous investment. 
Step one foot outside, and I'll blow her brains out. You wanted this, didn't you? So deal with it. Truth be told, I didn't want to kill Sylvie simply because Mateo was a dumb piece of shit. I was sure there were other reasons she deserved all this crap, but I didn't know about any of that. Ilya refused to talk about Sylvie, and I knew the pain and betrayal was still very fresh. Certainly, she didn't do anything to warrant dying. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this mess. Plus, I would have to tell Ilya, and that could go a few different ways. There was a lot of bitterness. And why wouldn't it be? They'd been through a lot together, and Sylvie had ruined it for an insanely stupid reason. So you're allowed to leave, and I'm not? Mateo sounded so infantile at that moment that I snorted a laugh, and his slightly swollen nostrils flared in anger. Standing up leisurely, I blocked out Sylvie's screaming as I loomed over him, but I knew he couldn't do the same. Either she'd drive him nuts, or he'd storm out, not thinking I'd do anything about it. You want her around, Mateo. This is only the beginning, too. Either get rid of her or suck it up. Jabbing him in the chest to prove my point, I glared at him from under furrowed brows. You don't have the option to run away. Imagine what'll happen if that baby is born addicted to heroin. Imagine how much it'll scream and no one will take care of it but you. Do you want me to get you one of those practice dolls? I couldn't help adding the jibe, and Mateo tensed as fire flickered in his eyes. The blatant, candid truth was that parenthood wasn't understood from the outside. He seriously thought Sylvie would get better, would be the perfect mom, and he'd have the perfect family. But he was wrong. I'm going out. Arching a brow quizzically at that, I rocked back on my heels and nodded flippantly. If Mateo left, I'd keep my word, and then I'd go hang out with Ilya because, unfortunately, her tips hadn't picked up since Wednesday. Friday and Saturday were her best days, but I wasn't sure that she was doing too well on that front. Mateo hadn't moved from his spot, though, and I rolled my eyes as disgust soured my tongue. Sucking my teeth, I dropped back down into the recliner, but even then, he still seemed small and meek. He'd never suffered any way he didn't create, and he just stood there, shooting daggers at me with his eyes. Sit down and shut up, Mateo. You're not gonna do shit, and you know it. Pulling my headphones over my head, I turned my attention back to my phone. The stupid matching game kept me occupied this long. There was no reason it shouldn't continue. As soon as I looked at the screen, though, my mind started to wander, and Mateo sat on the sofa to hold his head in his hands between his knees. I'd be laughing my ass off if this wasn't damn inconvenient. There were so many other places I'd rather be on a Friday night, like Ilya's club, watching her shake her ass. At the very least, she wouldn't be able to deny any tips I gave her. I still couldn't get that notion out of my head. She really ate cat food from a can rather than buy a carrot or something. Obviously, Ilya had done it for a long time and gotten used to it, but... A shiver lodged between my shoulders at the idea of being so damn desperate that Ilya ate cat food like it was a bag of chips. She only nibbled at the pizza I'd ordered and said something about saving it but I refused to bring her to work until she ate at least two slices. That kind of shit, I couldn't stand it. Anything I tried to do for her usually backfired, though. I had to be careful about how I brought up things so she didn't shoot me down because of cost. Anything that goes into that can doesn't come out. Those were her exact words when she pulled out this huge coffee can from under her cot. The top barely fit on because of all the neatly folded bills, but she only put in, never taking out. 
The role she demanded from me had been in there too, so I couldn't feel bad about it. Ilya would be the death of me. Of that, I had no doubt at all. The hell is with all the screaming. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up at the muffled tone, and I tore my gaze away from my phone. Carlisle stood in the entryway, a grumpy, exaggerated expression on his face, and I gestured wordlessly to Mateo as he popped up from the sofa. Carlisle gazed at me steadily, but I kept my expression blank as I turned back to my phone. You know, I could have killed you before you even noticed me, Theo. Go ahead. I fucking want to kill me right now, too. Out of the corner of my eye, he smirked maliciously, if not grimly, at my grumble. God damn. What are you doing here, Carlisle? Why didn't you t- Why would I warn you and give you time to cover up whatever fuck-up you managed this time, Mateo? Carlisle's harsh snap whipped over my head, and Mateo tensed as his big brother slammed the door shut. The screaming continued, almost in the background of my mind, like it was on television or something. I told you to get rid of that thing, and here you are, disobeying me yet again. K his hand shot up to silence his brother, and Carlisle shot him a frosty glare as I turned off my phone display to watch. Mateo and Carlisle were full-blooded brothers, but they obviously took after one parent more than the other. Mateo was tall and lanky, and Carlisle was built like me. Broad, muscular, but a little shorter and stocky. Definitely not the guy I wanted to get trapped in an alley with, for sure. Theo! Clenching my jaw as he turned to me, I didn't dare blink as Carlisle scanned me through pupils narrowed into slits. Go shut that bitch up so I can have a serious conversation with my kid brother. Don't kill it. I agree with you on that. He wanted this. He's going to suffer the consequences. Ah, uh, he tapped into the audio. Of fucking course. Carlisle tapped into the surveillance system before coming in here. Hoisting myself up, I left my phone and headphones on the seat to head upstairs. The closer I got to Sylvie's room, the louder her gut-wrenching cries became. Popping open the door, I ground my teeth as the stench of shit, piss, and vomit slammed into me. I don't know what the fuck Mateo was thinking, but no one was taking care of this girl. Honestly, it was surprising that she hadn't suffocated on her own puke yet. Tied to the bed, Sylvie was drenched in sweat, and her own shit covered her thighs and hips from her struggling. For some reason, she was naked, and vomit pooled in the hollow of her neck and crusted her short hair to her cheeks. My fingers tingled in disgust at the idea of touching her, and my stomach roiled as I searched the room for something. My gaze settled on a wide, square hairbrush, and my cheek twitched in foreboding. I better not get thrown up on. At least the first time was voluntary. Chapter 23 Ilya Ilya, can you come here a sec? Glancing over at Marcella, I nodded before twisting to smile at the guy sliding dollar bills into the neckline of my leotard. I excused myself, and he was too drunk to stop me from getting up as Marcella hovered by a small, round table. You have a request from VIP4. Remember that guy that knocked me over? It's him and his bodyguard again, and some other guy I don't recognize. He's pretty hot, though. Oh, okay, let's go. But Marcella grabbed my arm and shook her head, and my brows furrowed as my gut clenched in foreboding. Don't tell me I'm going in there alone. What did Rohe say? He knows, right? Of course he knows. He said he knows this stranger guy personally, and do not worry. But I'll be in room three, okay? It's empty right now. If you need help, just bang on the wall. Okay, Ilya? 
She shot me a firm nod, and I glanced up warily at the second-floor balconies that circled the entire second floor. Blacked-out windows shimmered against the strobe lights, and the knots in my abdomen intensified. Shaking my head a little, I straightened my shoulders and licked my lips before starting for the stairs. At least, I'll probably get some good tips today, maybe. This week had just been so difficult for some reason, though, I couldn't put my finger on why things had lulled so badly. Friday was usually booming, but the club was barely half full as I glanced around. Of course, our regulars showed up, but that wasn't a good thing, because they were so comfortable that they tipped horribly. Looking over my shoulder, I watched the guy I'd just been with drunkenly talking to his friend as he replaced me with some no-name prowler. Reaching back to pull out the crumpled bill from my leotard, I paused at the bottom of the stairs to scowl. Two one-dollar bills were all I got after listening to him for almost seven minutes complain about how his wife wouldn't put out now that she was pregnant. Jesus, I need a better job. I should invest in a laptop and learn some useful things myself. Maybe I'd get lucky and find some free online classes. Taking the stairs carefully in my four-inch heels, I rolled my lips as I tried to wipe the sourness from my expression. Knocking on the door that led to room four, I waited for someone to open the door, and a little bubble of excitement floated up in my chest. Mateo I wasn't so keen on seeing again, but Theo and I seemed to have a real moment the other day. When the door swung open, I was hit with a sense of deja vu, and a bright smile automatically lifted the corners of my lips. But it wasn't Theo at the door, and I forced down the surprise that jolted my chest. The bulky guy that took over the whole entryway smiled warmly at me, leaning with his arm high, and I met his gaze firmly. He wasn't taller than me in my heels, but the malicious glint in his eye was scary casual and sent shivers lodged between my shoulder blades. Aren't you just the cutest? The deep, Dark purr rose goosebumps down my arms, and flames licked my cheeks when he held out a hand for me. Come in. What a gentleman. His palm was warm and soft against my fingertips, and his smirk widened to reveal shallow dimples. The brightness in his eyes flared, and I ignored the sudden urge to turn around and run away. I couldn't pinpoint what this huge rift in his presence was, but I sure as shit felt it wrap around me to bristle the bridge of my nose. I understand that my little brother liked you the last time they were here. What's your name? My gaze flickered to Mateo to find him pouting on the sofa, and I arched my brow quizzically. I didn't dare look at Theo, but his glaring burned holes into the side of my face. Only, it wasn't his usual stare. It was a lot more dangerous, and the tension in the room could suffocate me if I tilted my head too far back. Ilya, I'm glad I made a good impression. Turning back to the stranger in the room, I smiled, and he released my hand to gesture to the sofa. You know my name. Can I ask yours? No wonder Theo likes you so much. The fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up at the danger that laced his tone, and my eyes widened as I paused. Carlyle. Straightening my half-bent stature, I cocked my head as I scanned him. He wasn't at all what I thought of, but that was not a good thing. So, you know a little bit about me, too. What do you want? It's a slow week, and I don't have time to chat about Mateo being grounded for throwing a girl over the sofa. My declaration earned me a hearty laugh, and my gut rot reached just under my skin to spread up my torso. Even Carlyle's genuinely amused chuckling seemed split between nauseating threat and this easygoing casualty, and I tensed when he clapped a hand on my shoulder. 
His laugh stopped abruptly, and he pushed me back ever so gently to force me to sit on the sofa before plopping down next to me. Leaning back as I struggled to keep a straight face, Carlyle flung his arm over the back of the curved sofa, crossed his knees, and heaved a dramatic sigh. You and I have a lot to talk about. My eyes widened at his near-perfect German, and Carlyle's light brown eyes seemed to rip into my soul as he rubbed his jaw thoughtfully. Just like you know about me, Ilya, I know all about you. Clenching my jaw hard, my eyelid twitched in agitation, and the silence stretched as I carefully debated what to say. I had no fucking clue what was going on. Why was Carlyle here? Was Sylvie okay? If Carlyle knew I spoke German, he knew that I was Sylvie's roommate until recently. Shit. I held out my hand palm up and wiggled my fingers, and Carlyle nonchalantly reached into his expensive silk suit jacket to pull out a thin, plain white envelope. He tossed it at me with a flick of his wrist, but I was quick, and his eyes narrowed on me with appreciation when I caught it. Let's get right to business then. Switching one knee over the other, Carlyle drummed his fingers on the hard support of the sofa, and I nodded mutely. Someone is lying to me. I want you to translate for me so I can figure out who it is. You have your own translators. You came here to warn Theo that you knew about me and that he shouldn't fuck up. I was really, really getting tired of being caught in the middle of drama I wasn't supposed to be involved with, and I knew it shone in my voice. Standing up, I smoothed my little, thin skirt at my thighs and nodded firmly at Carlyle. Bye. Before you storm out, hear what I'm proposing. It's not like you've got anything worthwhile to hang on to. Whatever it is, I don't want anything to do with it. I didn't get anything else out before Carlyle was up so quickly, so silently, that I didn't even notice until he pressed a finger to my lips. He stood dangerously close, his eyes glistening with just as much admiration as annoyance, and my breath caught when he pinched my chin. That shit might work on others, but not me. Sit down. He jerked my head back, and I stumbled a little in my heels as I fell back onto the sofa. Theo's glare rose the hairs on my body, but I still refused to look at him as my eyes locked on Carlyle's. I set this up as an experiment to see if my little brother was capable of doing anything of substance. I hoped he would succeed, even a little tiny bit. However, he failed miserably, and I'm tired of wasting money on him. Carlyle shot his brother the nastiest, most venomous sneer possible, and he dropped onto the sofa to sigh and propped his elbows on his knees. Rubbing his palms together, he cleared his throat and rolled his shoulders as if he had to physically calm himself down. Anxiety flooded my veins, and my mind whirred at a mile a minute, not capable of figuring out where this was going. It's true that I came here to passive-aggressively let Theo know he has a line to toe. I'm not stupid. I did my research on you, Ilya. I don't come into situations with half-cocked knowledge. I know your situation, and I know that Theo is at the end of his rope with Matteo. So, I figured if I was going to transfer him to my service, I might as well hire you. Surprise lifted my brows and forced a harsh bark of laughter from my throat, and discomfort seared my veins as I shook my head viciously. Yeah, no, there's no way I'd ever ever move for a guy. That's not happening, even if I were going to consider it for the job, which you haven't discussed. Trailing off, I frowned deeply at the amusement that flickered on Carlyle's face. If you're offering me a job, offer me a job. Don't think I'd pack up what little life I have and tromp around after Theo just because I blew him once. As I said, I want you as a translator, Ilya. It's not that I don't trust my own, but it's never a terrible thing to have a second opinion. 
How many languages do you speak? My eyelid twitched in irritation. Carlyle knew the answer to that question, but he wanted me to say it anyway. Six. He shot me a sharp, expectant look, and I crossed my arms over my chest lightly with a huff. English, Spanish, German, Italian, Russian, and French. Yet you're working here. Let's just say I don't appreciate wasted talent. Keep shaking your ass for dollar bills if you want and wallow in poverty, or make something of yourself. I'll even sweeten the deal because I'm at least partly at fault for not keeping my brother on a shorter leash. Leaning back, Carlyle stared at me levelly, and a strange sense of foreboding flooded my veins. Whatever he was going to propose was going to be hard to turn down, and that sucked. A lot. I'll give you your own apartment to help keep you apart from the drama. Consider it a promotional gift if you take the job. Chapter 24 Theo A promotional gift. Right. Skepticism thickened Ilya's tone, and she cocked her head as I tried and failed to contain the intense desire that rampaged through my body. Apparently, this whole uncertainty thing she had going on only pertained to me, and even Carlyle couldn't break that with a glance like usual. Fuck. Watching her keep her cool without the slightest sign of struggle, staring Carlyle down like he was just another scumbag in a club? I'll let you pay your own bills if it makes you feel more comfortable. Rent excluded, of course. It occurred to me that Carlyle knew something about Ilya that made him go so far, but I didn't bother with that for now. He was going to ship me off to New York with him, and that was great. Not. So, what do you say, Ilya? Her name rolled off his tongue like butterscotch, thick and sticky and not very appealing all at once melted. Scanning her as she cocked her head, I cupped my mouth to hide my scowl as she frowned under furrowed, slender brows. I'll think about it. Carlyle nodded as if he expected that reply and stood up to huff in satisfaction. Good, sleep it over, and I'll stop by tomorrow for my answer. Oh, and I forgot to mention. Ilya stood up folding her envelope with practiced ease, and I frowned darkly into the room. There was always something more with Carlyle, but he seemed genuinely miffed before he opened his mouth to her quizzical glance. I'm leaving, but Mateo is staying here while I deal with his... mistake. Keep him company. I'm sure he knows where the ATM is. Are you going to kill her? Posing the question instantly, Ilya did a good job muting her expressions, but she knew she couldn't hide them all, or Carlyle would figure out why easily. Impressive. Well, of course not. That thing is probably wishing for it after being strapped to a bed rotting in its own shit for a week, though. Frowning darkly, I tore my eyes off Ilya as shame sloshed up my throat, only to be beaten down by rationale. Knocking Sylvie out had been a blessing. All I did was knock her in the temple with the end of the brush, and there was some relief. Carlyle walked out of the VIP room, gently shutting the door behind him, and I lifted my gaze as Ilya practically threw herself back onto the sofa. Her hands shook as she covered her face, and I shuffled over to sit next to her in the growing silence. What the hell is going on? Groaning loudly, Ilya flopped to sprawl over my lap, and I clenched my gut as I struggled to force down my heart on. Rolling onto her hands and knees, she pouted at me as my hands itched painfully to shove her face down. You couldn't have warned me? I don't have your number, remember? 
Her bottom lip stuck out thicker, and I bit back a groan as I reached to caress it with my right thumb. That was so sexy. I didn't know you had some bite to your bark, Ilya. What does he really want? The question had no answer, and Ilya sighed heavily before sitting back on her heels to pull the envelope out of her sleeve. Before ripping open the side, she glanced at me, and I buried my two fingers in her hair to scratch her scalp. Don't worry about what I said, okay, Theo? Said what? I was too busy trying not to storm over and fuck your brains out to listen to what you were saying. Ilya smacked my arm playfully, a soft smile stretching her lips, and my own twitched up as I leaned back against the sofa to cross my knees. Anyway, how do you know Carlyle would pay you just to listen to what he had to say? Because a guy like that knows a lot of unsavory shit. I work here, so while I'm here, any interaction that he wants in his favor needs to be paid for. That's probably why he chose now. It's super slow, even for Friday, and it'd better his chances. Unfolding the envelope to rip open the side carefully, Ilya pulled out a check and groaned softly. I don't have a bank account. I'm gonna have to open one, which means getting an ID. You can just get a rush card or something, though, right? She only hummed at my suggestion, and I glanced over her orange hair at Mateo as he glared at his feet. You just don't want to have a card on you, huh? Yeah, I don't really have a choice, though. Noticing my gaze, Ilya twisted to Mateo, but she didn't linger too long before shaking her head. What's Carlyle going to do to Sylvie? Honestly, I don't think he'll do anything to her. Dark curiosity stained Ilya's pretty face, and I flopped my head back as I thought on that for a second. Carlyle was all about teaching his little brother not to be a little shit, so he hadn't been lying. He wasn't going to kill Sylvie. I have a feeling that whatever happens will be worse. I feel bad for her, but... I only shrugged at that. Sylvie was a bit of a stale topic now. Shifting my weight to ease the pressure on my cock, I spread my legs before Ilya crawled to straddle my thighs. My abdomen tightened, and I gingerly set my hands on her hips as she ground her ass against my bulge. The honest-to-God truth... I couldn't pinpoint why I didn't bend her over. Gliding up her smooth back, my palms tingled wildly, and a numbness attacked my right hand. Ilya was so damn sexy, but I just couldn't make that jump. I wanted things to be even semi-okay, and she was neck deep in misery at the moment. A small, condescending smirk tilted my lips as her words floated up in my head. Was screwing her really taking advantage of her, or was not screwing her really the crime here? Leaning against my chest, Ilya blew a puff of hot air down my neck, and I closed my eyes to savor her heat. The questions fell away to simple enjoyment that the sexiest sin woman was on my lap, and she nuzzled my stubble with her cheek. Warmth suffused my body, and I reached to cup her face as the tenderness of the moment gripped my heart in a vice. I'm probably going to take this job. Whispering in my ear, Ilya's voice thickened with distaste, but I heard the thread of resignation regardless. He's probably already got everything set up. Otherwise, he wouldn't have offered me that sweet deal. Hopefully you'll be close by so I can sneak into your place and f- A soft, choked sob cut me off, and I tensed as my gaze whipped to Mateo. He was fucking crying, hot, angry tears that streamed down the muscles straining in his neck, and Ilya paused her movements. Mateo knew his brother better than me, 
probably had a much better idea of what was going to happen to Sylvie, but it was very apparent that whatever it was, it'd be humiliating beyond belief for Matteo. He was about to learn the hard way that he can't escape the consequences or that things rarely happen how he expected. Anyway, ignoring him, I turned back to Ilya, and her brows twitched up expectantly as I gripped her hips. When we get settled in, I'll take you on a date. A date? Her squeak gyrated my eardrums even as I nodded firmly, and her cheeks turned rosy from the fireworks sparkling behind her contacts. I never thought you'd ask me on a date, Theo. Don't be stupid. I'm not that much of an incel. She giggled a little, resuming her swishing and swaying, and I pushed down on her hips to sigh roughly. Take it as progress that I even told you about it this time. You should tell me about it so I can say yes, and you can feel good about yourself. Hot palms braced on my knees, and Ilya arched her back to pop her ass against my abdomen as she spoke. Sucking in a sharp breath at the friction, I squeezed her ass cheeks through her leotard as a reply balanced on the tip of my tongue. Fuck, I'm gonna wreck this pussy the first chance I get. Growling through clenched teeth, I dropped Ilya's ass into my lap to grip her shoulders, and my cock ached fiercely. Her moan floated into my ears, and I pulled back on her body until I could feel her beyond the thick fabric of my jeans. Powerful muscles rippled under her leotard, and I got sucked into my own mind as Ilya worked her magic. Chapter 25 Ilya Home sweet home. Pushing open the door with a flourish, Carlyle sounded so excited that it banged around inside my head, and I automatically closed my eyes. His low, sultry chuckle caressed me even as the hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I scrunched up my face. Softly putting his palm on my crown, he rubbed like I was a dog needing comfort, and the silence stretched into discomfort. It's okay to open your eyes, Ilya. Relax. I've spent the past week trying to get you not to be so nervous about it. You locked Mateo in his house, but you don't want me being so nervous? My grumble sent a frigid shiver to lodge between my shoulder blades, and I cracked open one eye. Carlyle owned this whole multifunctional building. I'd guessed it was for his base, but he'd never said so specifically. Rolling my lips between my teeth as he shrugged out of the corner of my eye, I huffed myself gingerly. The apartment was so nice, but not lavish, and I stood in the entryway, trying to believe my eyes. A hallway with a closet protected the view into the flat, but that wasn't what impressed me. No, it was that the paint wasn't peeling. The hardwood floors weren't popping up. The stench of mold wasn't wafting in my face, and there weren't black spots seeping through the ceiling. I hadn't even stepped into the place yet, but just the hallway was miles better than anywhere I'd ever lived. Forcing my knee to bend, anxiety and excitement mingling in a volatile cocktail in my bloodstream, and goosebumps swept up my leg under my jeans. This past week had been insane. I'd quit my job on Saturday, did absolutely nothing until Thursday, and gotten on a plane on Friday morning to zip across the country. But I'd seen more of Carlyle than of Theo, and I fought a frown as I stepped over the threshold. This man was the exact opposite of his little brother, and I couldn't get over the inherent unease I had from first sight. Everything he did to try to calm my nerves only intensified them. It all seemed so fake and two-faced. I half expected Carlyle to throw it all back at me somehow, even though he didn't seem like the kind to do that. 
That kind of tactic was brash and abrasive, and Carlyle was the guy that'd do something horrible with tact and grace. So, what do you think? Blinking hard, the question sucked me back into reality, and I glanced around at the pristine, completely unlived-in living room through dazed eyes. The carpet had never been walked on. The sofa had never been sat on, and the coasters on the coffee table had never held a glass. Hoovering up a huge, stabilizing breath, I only nodded dumbly, and Carlyle practically beamed at my overwhelmed expression. It's nice. Clearing my throat roughly, I wondered how I'd gotten to this point, but my brain refused to work. Pressing his palm against my back, Carlyle led me into the kitchen off the living room, and I leaned on the low wall that served as a breakfast nook. Things had gone from about seventeen to a hundred so fast, and exhaustion hallowed my cheeks and dragged down my eyelids. All the food gets delivered. There's an app that you install on your phone to order and set up a time. I suggest doing it at night. That got my attention focused, and I arched a brow quizzically as Carlyle grabbed a chair, whipped it around, and straddled the back. Everything gets checked coming in. Unlike my idiot brother, I've had a good number of attempts on my life, and food is the coward's golden chariot. Oh. He so casually mentioned almost being assassinated that it could have been comical, and I leaned on the wall to glance around the kitchen. Every cup and plate was perfectly aligned, again, never used. Everything in this apartment was brand new, and a ball of discomfort clogged my throat. Are you going to tell me what you really want me for? Come with me. The question had burned into my very soul these past few days, and Carlyle stood up to gesture me to follow him. Taking the short hallway alongside the kitchen, I rubbed my palms together as nerves tingled in my fingers. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out why Carlyle had really taken an interest in me, and I stiffened when he whipped around. His light eyes sparkled as he held up a hand, and my mouth dried in anticipation. I wasn't necessarily lying when I said I wanted you for your linguistic skills. I just don't think wasting away behind a desk is going to do me much good. So... Waving my own hand impatiently at such a vague answer, I beat down my apprehension before Carlyle grabbed the doorknob directly to my right. He pushed open the barrier, flicking on the light to reveal a huge closet. A closet with a vanity bristling with light bulbs and a huge assortment of makeup and neatly rowed dyes of the same brand I usually used. A closet with no walls, just racks upon racks of clothing of any kind, and a million pairs of shoes. A closet with a fucking sound system in it that was easily twice the size of my apartment back in California. What the fuck? Carlyle chuffed softly at my slur, and I tore my eyes off the incredible display to frown deeply. What the fuck is all this? I don't need this. Yes, you do. I had someone come in and knock down a wall for this, combining two guest rooms into one. This, gesturing with a sweep of his arm, Carlyle drew my attention back to the room, and I stepped through the doorway with goosebumps blanketing my arms. Is your job, Ilya. I told you when we met, I know all about you. You're a master of disguise. From now on, you're going to do what you're best at. And that, my dear, is not shaking ass for dollar bills, unless the situation calls for it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Whirling around, irritation bogged my chest, and my ruined skin tightened painfully as I practically stabbed Carlyle in the sternum. Without heels, he was a good five inches taller than me, but still shorter than Theo and I glared venomously as my blood simmered in my veins. I know my mom was an undercover cop and going to the FBI for it, but I'm not like that. 
Carlyle grabbed the base of my skull, and I sucked in a sharp breath as he pulled my face into his chest. Even as I struggled and pushed, his grip didn't slack, and his hard muscles threatened to bruise my forehead and nose. My heart rate jacked up, and tension zinged through me when he tangled his hand in my hair to yank my head back. Don't do that ever again. My heart nearly stopped at the low, threatening growl that reverberated to my core, and my breath caught when Carlyle leaned in close to my face. The bridge of my nose prickled wildly, and the fine hairs on my face stood up when he brushed my cheek with his lips. This has nothing to do with your dead parents. I've had my eye on you for a while, Ilya. I just got lucky you decided that you liked Theo's dick more than the others, and that my bitch brother got your roommate pregnant. Pushing me against the wall, Carlyle grabbed my leg and hoisted my knee under his elbow, and panic bled into my mind. I was wearing jeans, and he was still careful of my chest in his cold, calculated fury, but the threat of him was enough. His hazel eyes flashed as a strangled whimper escaped me, and he untangled his fingers in my hair to grab my chin. I don't want to hurt you or make you uncomfortable or scared, Ilya. But if you don't do your job, I have no use for you. Two months. I'll give you two months to get yourself in order, and then you start. Since I know you won't stay here for nothing and you don't trust me, you can sit behind a desk and translate for me starting Wednesday. Enjoy your weekend. Releasing my leg, Carlyle caressed my face even as his gaze sharpened into a knife's edge, thin enough to split a hair. I'll let you know if I can't wait that long. Ever so gently, he kissed me on the mouth, and shock blew my pupils as Carlyle reached between us to touch me. Goosebumps washed every inch of my body, but the fire that engulfed me as his fingers slid up my crotch outside my jeans burned too hot. His lips were dry on mine, and he nibbled my bottom lip before pulling back with a slight, knowing smirk. See you later. Rubbing my lip with his thumb, Carlyle left me with that smirk as he retreated toward the kitchen. Once he was out of my line of sight, I couldn't look for him, and I stared blankly at the place he'd just been. Deep in the apartment, I only faintly heard the front door closing, and my lungs emptied a sputtering sigh. Chapter 26 Ilya Aunt Carol, I'm going out. Can I have my card? My aunt looked up from that mail she was sorting and frowned, taking off her glasses to squint at me. I told you, remember? I have plans with my friends tonight. You know, spending it little by little may not seem like much at the time, Ilya, but you'll run out faster than you think. Frowning myself at that, my brows furrowed as my aunt patted the table, and I shuffled over to sit stiffly. Suspicion clung to my ribs like a sticky tar, as it did every time she tried to dissuade me from using my own money, and I leaned back to watch her closely. My dad's sister didn't appear anything like him, but it still hurt to look at her because she was slimy. How's your job search going? I have to leave soon, so give me my card. This time, I wasn't so polite and I held out my palm as a brief, miffed panic flashed in my aunt's eyes. It's my money. I don't need you to approve what I do with it. I'm seventeen now, and I let you hold the card to make you feel better, Aunt Carol, but you're not going to dictate when and what I can do with it. Fine. Fine. I just wanted to know so you can replace what you're spending, Ilya. Good financial habits are important. She dug around in her purse handing me the card in its paper sheath, but she didn't let it go immediately. 
Her French nails clung to the encased plastic, and I met her gaze as it sharpened sternly. Make sure you're back by midnight. You have Saturday school tomorrow at 1 p.m. I know. My aunt released the card with a slight nod, and I stood up only to wince at the pull of my scars. Licking my lips heavily, I stuffed the object in my front pocket, and she turned back to her mail to pick up a bill. I'll see you in the morning. All right, and don't forget to put gas in the car. I hummed at that, and I shuffled out of the kitchen to pull my phone out of my back pocket on my way through the living room. My aunt had a pin on my card that she thought I didn't know, but, oh boy, did I know. Little by little, yeah, right, you're stealing it all. Grumbling to myself once I'd shut the front door behind me, I dialed the number to check my balance. Twirling my keys around my finger, I sat in the little two-door I bought and left my leg hanging out the open door. Navigating my way through the automated menu, I tapped in the pin with my thumb and braced myself. My aunt had used almost all of the $80,000 that she'd gotten from suing over my parents' deaths, money that was supposed to be mine, to be saved until I was 18. At least 80000 was the number she gave me, but even that was a lie. Now... I had less than a thousand dollars in the account, and I'd had over four thousand dollars when I'd checked two weeks ago. It's not like she's struggling. They both have great jobs. My aunt and uncle, collectively, made upwards of six figures a year, and bitterness soured my tongue. Checking the time as I ended the call, I set my phone in the cup holder and stuck the key in the ignition. She's going to be really pissed when I sue her. I'd already had a lawyer. I had already gone to the bank and gotten statements. I'd gone to the contractor my aunt hired to remodel the house and gotten paperwork that she'd used my money to pay for it. I just needed to put the paperwork in. Why was this happening to me? Carol was my dad's sister, my aunt, and she still couldn't get over her greedy, selfish ways. Scowling at the windshield, I glanced at the rear view and started to back out of the driveway. Her brother was dead, but all she cared about was the money from the wrongful death suit. She doesn't know about my inheritance, at least. That, at the time, I'd gotten mostly in cash and stashed it, because I suspected Aunt Carol would do something like this. No one else in the family would take me after my parents died, so I got stuck with her. Even now, three years after their deaths, I could hear my parents with crystal clarity complaining about my aunt being a leech. I didn't spend a lot of time with my cousins, because my parents were always the ones paying, and they didn't make nearly the same amount of money, let alone more. Ilya Blinking at the touch on my arm, I tore my eyes off the check that Carlisle had given me a week ago and frowned under furrowed brows. Theo stared and stared with that heavy gaze of his, and I sighed as I folded the rectangular paper. You haven't cashed it yet. What's up? It's the same amount of money my aunt won in the suit against the management agency that handled my parents' house. Understanding flickered in his darkening eyes, and I licked my lips heavily as discomfort dried my mouth. My aunt, she used to tell me that spending it little by little, I'd run out quicker than I thought. I barely ever used it, and I knew from basically the beginning that she lied about the amount. The only money she didn't spend, because she didn't know about it, was my inheritance. My mom's ring, some cash, and some priceless family heirlooms. She sounds like a cunt. The tactless yet true statement earned a nod from me, and I leaned over across the sofa to rest on Theo's side. His body was warm, so much nicer than Carlyle's, but like hell, I was going to bring that up. Do you wanna, I don't know, talk about it? There's not much to say. 
I sued her for it all when I turned 18, and then she had the audacity to fucking kill herself because of the stress and grief and regret. Well, a letter saying you're sorry doesn't fucking fix the fact that you spent all my money and kicked me out when you got served, and then killed yourself rather than pay. A little condescending laugh escaped me at my own tirade, and I huffed a hot breath. The case is supposed to be sealed, but Carlyle knows the exact amount. It seems like he knows everything about me, more than I know about me. How exactly did your parents die? Is that when you hurt your chest? Nodding, a strange gap hollowed out my chest like every time I had to talk about it. Therapists made me feel the worst by far, but I hadn't felt this way in a long, long time, at least a decade once my aunt stopped forcing me to go to therapy. What happened? The ceiling fan in my room had faulty wiring because the management hired someone unqualified to spruce the place up so it had rent higher. It caught fire and fell on me. My dad got to me first and threw me out the window, but when they went back in, they both died of smoke inhalation. The fire spread through the wires really fast because nothing was grounded. My aunt got custody of me because no one else wanted to take me on after I got out of the hospital. The bulky arm around my shoulders rippled in comforting anger, and I closed my eyes to draw my knees up. One time... I took off my shirt after my boyfriend told me he could handle it, and he puked all over me. I started wrapping up after I moved because the heat made my shirt stick to my scars, and I always made sure the guys were blackout drunk. I guess it wouldn't matter if I told you I could handle it, huh? I shook my head, and Theo sighed heavily, shuffling to cup my cheek against his cheek. What about now? How do you like the place? You slept in a real bed last night. Yesterday was really overwhelming. I could go back to sleep right now, I think. Theo had woken me up when he knocked on my front door, and he squeezed me gingerly as memories of the day before flashed behind my shuttered lids. After Carlisle left, I passed out dead and blocked out the fact that he touched me because I knew it was just an intimidation tactic. Admittedly, a little belatedly, I realized Carlisle might be pushing me closer to Theo. It was his smirk, not his brush against me, that haunted me, to be perfectly honest. Let's go then. Hooking his arm under my knees, Theo hoisted me into his lap before standing up, and I wound my arms around his shoulders. His muscles played against my side, and he flashed me an almost charming smirk. I promise not to watch you sleep like a creep. I don't think you're a creep anymore, Theo. I'm kind of pissed you ignored me for the past week, though. Reaching up to touch the scar on his face, I dragged my fingertips down the smooth, jagged surface as warmth skittered up my arm just under my skin. What about this one? I got into a bar fight. It looked worse than it was. Kicking open my bedroom door, that's so strange to think. Theo sat me on my bed. Even more strange. Rubbing my palms against the soft comforter, I scooted back into the rumpled sheets as he pulled his shirt off. Blinking hard, the hairs on the back of my neck bristled at the huge, gnarly gashes that indented his entire right side. It struck me hard that he'd never taken off his shirt in front of me. At the crack house, he had a wife beater on underneath, so I'd never seen these scars. The pink line that ripped up his bicep stopped just under his armpit, and actual dents marred his otherwise wonderfully sculpted muscles. Crawling onto the bed to loom over me, Theo grabbed my hand to put my palm on his right side, and his skin twitched noticeably. My breath caught at how smooth it was, how the coarse, thick hairs on his chest just stopped and gave way to pink and gray scars. The tire. Dragging my palm up over the side of his pectoral muscle, Theo's mumble drew my gaze to his, and I bit down on my bottom lip hard. 
His face was so close, his heat seeping through my pajamas. So weird. And he held my hand to his right shoulder to cover with his own. Bullet. Kiss me. Blurting out the demand, heat engulfed my face when Theo's lip twitched up and his gaze tenderized. Wrapping my hands around his neck, I rubbed my thumbs against the stubble of his jaw, but he only shook his head. My heart hammered against my ribs, the ruined skin on my chest tightening painfully, and my mouth dried as it opened. Why not? You said you would. Take your bandages off. My breath caught, and I tensed as my heart sputtered briefly, but it was enough for Theo to grumble lowly in his chest in acknowledgement. Pressing his forehead against mine, he held my gaze despite being so close, and I licked my dry lips as shame sloshed in my chest. That's why. Yeah. Gulping down the dense lump in my throat, I held my breath as Theo shuffled back to kick off his jeans. He bent over the foot of the bed to grab my pajama pants by the ankles, and my core clenched at the bulge in his loose, plain, black boxers. The scar on my chest stretched down almost to my knees at its longest point, an outline of the fan blade, and he caressed up my inner thighs with questions in his eyes. Lay down. Despite saying no, Theo's voice came out a rough growl, and goosebumps blanketed my legs as he crawled up my body. He was a tiger ready to pounce, but waiting for the perfect moment, and he dropped against my side to pull my knees over his thighs. So close, he was all I could smell, and he caressed my cheek as he worked his arm under the pillow. Chapter 27 Theo Ilya, what are you doing? Mumbling as Ilya wiggled her way out of bed, I had to physically stop myself from throwing my arm over her to keep her still. Cracking open my eyes, I followed her silhouette through the gloom before she very carefully turned the overhead light onto its lowest setting. Come back here. I'm hungry. Inhaling deeply, I held my breath for a second before sitting up and exhaling a blustering sigh. Ruffling my hair roughly, I shook my head and rolled my shoulders, and she was still by the door when I threw my legs over the side of the bed. My feet didn't leave the pristine, barely used carpet, and I scrunched up my face as I blinked hard. What time is it? I patted for my pockets before remembering I'd taken my pants off, and a frown twisted my lips. When was the last time I'd taken my clothes off before going to bed? It just seemed like the right thing to do when I knew better than to get caught without. Bending to snatch my jeans, I pulled my phone out and winced at the bright blue light that pierced my eyeballs. I thought you'd tell me a dick joke. Snorting roughly at that, I dropped my phone onto my pants on the floor to throw my arm around Ilya's shoulders. Scratching my jaw hard with my left hand, my right buried in her hair to knead her scalp as my brain puttered along until it found a reply. I could've, but I'm not gonna. Food isn't a joke when I know you had no problem eating wet cat food. Truth be told, it hadn't even occurred to me to say something like that. I was fucking dead. Heading out of the bedroom and into the hall, I held Ilya's head to my shoulder to bury my nose in her hair. I haven't slept so well in a long time. Me either. Edging the living room, my legs tightened when the carpet was replaced with cold tile, and Ilya tensed against my side. This is so uncomfortable. I know it's mine, but... You want me to make you something? Eyes widened with surprise flew to bore holes in my chin, and I couldn't help but smirk as Ilya nodded hastily. Come on. Ilya's apartment was exactly the same layout as mine, and I wasn't surprised to find all the shit in the kitchen was in the same spots, too. She watched curiously, 
almost bewildered as I pulled a cutting board out from behind the toaster oven and a bubble of satisfaction popped in my chest. Reaching under the counter for a pan, I set it on the stove before gesturing to the refrigerator. What do you want? I wasn't a chef by any means, but I knew more than how to boil water and add mac and cheese. Slowly shuffling to the fridge, Ilya grabbed the door but didn't tug, and my heart throbbed slightly. She just stared for a long moment, her knuckles whitening as she squeezed and released the handlebar, and my brows furrowed deeply. I, I can't, I can't do it. Sauntering the short distance to her, I covered Ilya's hand with mine, and her fingers flexed stiffly. Her nerves thrummed through me, and I gingerly popped the seal to release a blast of cold air. She sucked in a sharp breath and shivered against my chest, and I couldn't help but scowl at how anxious just the idea of a full fridge made her. And man, it was packed with everything she might need to cook whatever she wanted. Grabbing her shoulder when her knees quaked against mine, I ground my teeth at how impactful something so seemingly normal could be. In California, she had nothing. But here, she had anything and everything. My scowl darkened when Ilya sniffled, and she reached a trembling hand into the refrigerator tentatively. When her fingers brushed a gallon of milk, she choked out a little laugh, as if she expected it to be a really good hologram or something. Do you need a minute? She shook her head, giving me a glance at her mystified expression, and I pursed my lips thinly against the barrage of emotions swirling in my chest. Let's make eggs. Easy, right? Um, yeah, okay. Reaching around her to grab the egg sitting on the top shelf, I left Ilya to lean into the refrigerator and gaze at the food like she was seeing the stars for the first time. There's bacon? We'll make bacon. The time on the stove read 3.36 a.m., and I set the eggs on the counter to go back and grab butter and milk. Grab whatever you want. The way she stayed still was kind of pathetic, to be honest, but I wasn't gonna judge her beyond the simple fact that her situation was really, really fucked up. She held the bacon package so carefully, moving so slowly as she closed the refrigerator door. Watching her out of the corner of my eye, my chest tightened, and she held her item like she didn't want to let it go. Come here. Reaching into an upper cabinet to grab a bowl, I gestured Ilya closer, and she gripped her bacon with a white-knuckled grip. Pulling her between myself and the counter, I ignored the ugliness building against my ribs and popped open the egg carton. Holding her hands in my own, I managed to wrestle the bacon from her and replace it with spreadable butter. You're not gonna wake up and find out it was a dream, Ilya. It's okay. My mumble made her shiver against my front, and I pressed my cheek to Ilya's temple as she shuddered a sigh. This would be a nightmare. Sucking my teeth at that, I didn't deem a reply. Instead, I reached for the silverware drawer. I'm pretty pathetic, aren't I? It'll get better. Holding the knife in her hand, I guided her through unfamiliar movements and focused on savoring this experience. After all, something like this only happened once. It'd get easier and easier, less thoughtful, less impactful, as time went on. When was the last time you cooked something? Probably before my parents died. With my burns, I couldn't stand near the stove and burners and stuff. I didn't have shit to say to that. How fucked up, how fucked up was Ilya's life, and she was pretty all right. How much could a person endure? What kind of asshole was I with my superficial problems? Well, clearing my throat roughly, I tightened my grip on her hands and poised the knife over the container. You can prep. 
Every movement was sluggish, but Ilya must have forgotten that she hadn't eaten in three days, or maybe it was normal and didn't bother her. I didn't know, and I sure as shit wasn't going to ask. Slapping the butter into the pan, I only guided her movements, and her palms were hard and stiff from discomfort. Taking a deep breath of her smell, I closed my eyes briefly as she capped the tub of butter and set it aside. Do you want toast and English muffins? Both? Nodding at the question, I ignored when Ilya's breath hitched loudly in the otherwise quiet kitchen to bounce off the granite counter. Maybe it'd be a while before she got used to this. I could get used to this easy. I could wake up like this. I could do this every day. I could get comfortable with this tug on my heart. Chapter 28 Ilya A soft knock on the front door drew my attention from the television, and I cast a questioning glance at Theo. He simply shrugged, not bothering to pause the show before hoisting himself up from the sofa. My gaze followed him, his taut muscles rippling, his boxers clinging to his ass, and I licked my lips heavily. Taking another bite of my sandwich, even cold, it was the most delicious thing I'd ever put in my mouth. Well, almost. It was definitely number two on my list of top two. I had a feeling you'd be here. Carlyle sounded so damn smug, and I frowned around my sandwich as he appeared from behind the corner of the short hallway. He downright grinned, that stupid, knowing glint in his eye shimmering brightly, and I nodded politely. Unfortunately for you, I'm going to be borrowing Theo today. Although you don't start until Wednesday, he's already on the clock. We already slept together and had breakfast. It's time for him to run out anyway. What a weird concept, breakfast. Shooting me a mock glare, Theo headed for the back hallway, and I unfolded my legs out from under me with a pointed look. What do you want, Carlyle? I brought you this. Setting a DVD on the coffee table in a clear, generic case, Carlyle rocked back on his heels as suspicion sloshed in my chest. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How are you liking the place? It's nicer than my last place? My nonchalant answer earned me an almost playful glower, and Carlyle stuffed his hands into his pockets to look around. I don't get the impression you came here just for him. Taking a bite of my sandwich, I bit back a groan at how good it tasted. I didn't know Theo could cook. For a second, I ignored Carlyle's silence as I thought about that notion. How much did I really know about Theo? How much did I really want to know about him? Both of us had it bad for such polar opposite reasons. Twisting at a slight stomping into the living room, I frowned in dismay at the clothes that shielded Theo's body. Leaning over the back of the straight, light gray sofa, he buried his nose in my hair, and my eyelids fluttered closed to relish this moment of bliss. It was a fraction of a second long, maybe, before he pulled back, and I settled in as Theo braced his palms on either side of me. Enjoy your day. Maybe go through your closet and make sure everything fits, Ilya. My brows rose at that, and Carlyle gestured Theo with him and cast me a stern look. Just let me know if something doesn't. I'll have it tailored. Okay. Swallowing my bite roughly to reply, I frowned slightly when he turned on his heel and Theo cast me a what-the-fuck look. I could only shrug confusedly, and he scowled lightly before following Carlyle out. The hitch of the lock echoed down the hall to me, and I stared at the entryway for a moment before shaking my head viciously. Whatever. Grumbling as I took another bite of my dwindling sandwich, I stuffed the last bit into my mouth and stood up. Snatching the DVD Carlyle had left me, foreboding clawed at my gut, but I popped it into the player anyway before my doubt could stop me. I hope it's not torture porn or something. The screen turned blue, and I sat back on the coffee table before the colors flickered and turned into a picture. 
Squinting in concentration, I propped my elbows on my knees as a body paced back and forth. An icon in the corner told me sound had been disabled, but I couldn't worry about it when surprise shocked through my chest. Mateo stomped around like a rabid animal, raking his hands through his hair, pure agony twisting his features. His lips moved, but I couldn't make out what he was saying if he was saying anything at all. He looked bad, like he hadn't slept in the week since I'd last seen him. Holding my breath, I tensed when the images changed to show a different room. The camera pointed directly on the bed was in color, unlike Mateo's, and Sylvie struggled like a wildcat in a trap. She was drenched in sweat, but every time she wiggled, there was a faded brown underneath her. Her hair stuck to her face and crusted every which way, and I covered my mouth as horror bubbled up my throat. Gaunt cheeks hollowed out as she shrieked silently, thrashed violently, and blood spattered from her wrists as cuffs cut into them. Oh my God! Theo hadn't been kidding when he said no one was taking care of her. Sylvie's ribs poked out from her chest, and she had a crazy look in her eye when she paused her writhing to breathe. Fisting my palms together, I held my breath when she jumped in shock, and my former best friend burst into tears on the screen. She started shaking her head, screaming as Mateo advanced on her through the bottom corner of the camera. The heavy, cast-iron pan in his hand swung in a blur, and I jumped when it landed flat on Sylvie's face. Her head popped open, but Mateo lifted the pan again and swung down. I was suddenly so, so, so glad I couldn't hear anything, and her face was unrecognizable when he lifted the pan a final time. But then... Mateo smashed the edge of the pan into Sylvie's abdomen. Wincing as he heaved his whole body into the swing, I wanted to look away, but I couldn't. My mind focused on the scene digitized, immortal, in front of me, and Mateo stumbled away from the bed to rasp massive breaths. He dropped the pan beyond the edge of the bed, and I didn't dare blink even as he covered his face with his hands. How fucked up do you have to be so torn up about this? What did Mateo think was going to happen when he got a one-night stand drug addict pregnant? He was so delusional that he really thought things would go well? I mean, I could have felt bad for him if he had some tiny ounce of realistic expectation to his fantasy. And Sylvie, with the realization that she'd been using for a while and had hidden it, I just... I didn't even know. If she told me that second, seemed remorseful. I would have kicked her out, but I would have gotten her some help, too. She got pregnant on purpose, probably to extort Mateo, and then freaked out when he wanted to be a family. The using intensified, and I found out, and the rest is history. That's what it was, after all history. Sylvie didn't exist to me anymore and hadn't for a while. Because of her, I went through all this shit that I had nothing to do with. Sure, I met Theo, which was nice, and I got a new job with a drug lord that seemed like a good deal, but I didn't owe Sylvie any part of me after I kicked her out, and it took a bit to figure that out, but I did by myself. Why did Carlyle give me this? The question had no answer, echoing in my quiet apartment, and I popped the DVD out and put it back in its case. More importantly, why do I feel nothing? Again, my grumble had no answer, but that might have been answer enough as I shoved the disc case behind the bookshelf and resolved to forget about it. People came and went. That's how it worked. The people I seemed to trust always fucked me over somehow, and Sylvie just proved to be no different. 
What could I do about it? Nothing. Chapter 29 Theo Wagging my hand hard, the residual painful tingling didn't go away, and I ran my not-blown-off fingers through my hair roughly. Making breakfast together had seemed like such a great idea, aside from the fact Ilya couldn't use the stovetop, of course. Ever since picking up that stupid pan, though, my right hand had been having a fit. Thankfully, it wasn't terribly painful, but I could definitely do without the spasms up my arm right now. Remind me again why I have to follow you around like a dog in a place like this? Scowling as Carlyle glanced up from his phone, I flexed my ruined hand against the flat of the table. The mall we were in was packed, and his light, hazel eyes flickered to my hand as I sat back. You are a dog, Theo, at least when you're with me. Why does that have to be negative, huh? Do you know how good dogs have it in this society? I only grunted at that, forcing my fingers as straight as they'd go, which wasn't that much of an accomplishment. The sting zinging up my arm abated briefly, and Carlyle lounged against the booth with a short sigh. We're waiting on a friend of mine to deliver something. She's a bit of a nut, and this is the place she picked. I wouldn't have thought you waited for anyone, Carlyle. He seemed to constantly surprise, and he smirked at my observation. Over the past week or so since locking Mateo up in his house without so much as a flicker of an eyelid of emotion, Carlyle almost acted overly dramatic. It was as if he was trying to prove that he wasn't just a sicko with a bone to pick with his little brother. She's pretty paranoid, so I don't really have a choice. She does great work for me, though. Vague answers to not-so-questionable questions. Carlyle didn't give me any more than that, and I frowned as my lips thinned before clenched teeth. Interest sparked in his eye, and he flopped his head back before sitting up hastily. So, tell me something. What do you know about my operations? We've never talked about it. I assume Mateo wouldn't be able to give any straight answers considering he's twice removed. That's a dumb fuck question. I know your father runs the syndicate and that you're second in command or some shit like that. I honestly don't care about the details. I rolled my eyes at the surprise that brightened Carlyle's eyes and curiosity rippled across his hard features as I sunk in my seat. As long as I get paid, I don't give two fucks. I can count on my bad hand how many times Mateo complained about Daddy Dearest and being shoved into the corner, and I really wasn't paying attention at the time. Do you know what your name means, Theo? Irritation raked my eyelid, and I shook my head as Carlyle propped his elbow on the table to hold his chin on his fist. It means divine gift. Ironically, the name Mateo also means gift from God. You know what my name means? It was originally a girl's name, firstly. It means from the walled city. I really couldn't give a lesser shit, Carlyle. My bland tone earned me a smirk, but I didn't think too hard on what subliminal message he was trying to send to me. Why do you think I want to know what your name means? You don't. I'm only trying to make conversation. I just thought it was funny. Ilya is a boy's name, and mine was originally a girl's. The hairs on the back of my neck bristled, and my eyes narrowed on Carlyle as he feigned ignorance. You wouldn't think because of the connotation of an A at the end, but it fits her quite well. I'm sure you agree. Have you seen her chest yet? I bet you're going to tell me all about it. My lip twitched in a faint snarl, and Carlyle caught my gaze levelly. He was trying to push me to find a button, but this wasn't a month ago. I wouldn't threaten him. I'd just fucking pop his brains out of his mouth. Careful what you say, Carlyle, 
because I have a feeling that threatening to kill you won't do shit, so I'll have to really kill you to get my point across. Lucky for him, Carlyle didn't laugh, and he leaned forward with a graveness dragging down his features. I was jealous? My brow rose quizzically at the admission, and Carlyle smirked a little self-deprecating at me. It almost seemed like he was genuine, but even that caused my suspicion to rise. When Mateo hired you, I was jealous. I admit it. In all seriousness, when I met you, I kind of wanted to kill him myself just so I could transfer you to my service. You're not afraid to say it straight, Theo, and I appreciate that, especially in a person that's guarding my life. Right. I don't suppose you have a reason for not doing that. The more time I spent with Carlisle, the more I realized that he was a fucking asshole. He was a two-faced, smart, beady-eyed asshole that liked to play mind games, and I fucking hated it. I hated the conversations more than I hated Mateo's whining. However, Carlisle didn't require round-the-clock babysitting, so I had free time, which more than made up for some of the more unpleasant experiences. Do you remember how you felt the first time you met me? Carlyle's face twisted in disgust, and I shook my head as the soberness of the moment blanketed my skin in goosebumps. That's how everyone is, and I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it gets annoying. If I killed Mateo, you would have failed at your job, and, well, then you'd have to die too. Not exactly what I want. So I figured why not kill three birds with one stone? He so casually admitted interference that I had to double take, and I cocked my head as I sucked in a sharp breath through flared nostrils. Leaning back, Carlyle laced his fingers behind his head to blow out a breath, and I clenched and released my jaw, hard. I've had my eye on Ilya for a long time. My father hired her mother. Did you know that? Ilya seems to believe her mom was going to the FBI, but... Anyway, I started looking into it, and what do you know? I found her. I shipped Mateo off to California after I got word that she was there. I didn't necessarily consider he'd meet you, but Mateo goes through bodyguards like candy. It wasn't luck that you three got together. Well, not entirely. Every situation requires a bit of luck. He talked so casually even as his frown became more and more prominent and nasty and his biceps flexed under the strained fabric of his button-down. I didn't expect Mateo to get that thing involved, but that's an added bonus in my book. Maybe he'll break under pressure. Maybe he'll grow up and stop acting like an angry toddler. Either way, he'll finally be out of my hair. I've always hated him. You boarded him up in his house like he had the plague. You legitimately boarded up the windows and doors. It was fucking insanity to think that Carlyle had plans for me long before we met, that he had plans for Ilya, and he arched a brow quizzically. So? Mateo acts like a child. I'll treat him like a child. And children sometimes need a nice long time out to reflect on their behavior. Snorting roughly at that, I scowled when Carlyle frowned disapprovingly at me. Didn't you threaten to cut your own sister's fingers off when she was insensitive about it? How is my forcing my considerations on Mateo so outlandish? I can't wait to see how your kids grow up if you make that mistake. My grumble only darkened Carlyle's frown, and I cast him a pointed look. You never answered my question. You just changed the subject. I was genuinely curious. I haven't seen her naked. The flippant reply intensified the blood pounding in my ears, and Carlyle lowered his arms as disinterest masked his features. Regardless, I'm not interested in seeing her naked. I'm sure she's got some horrifying scars, and I'm not particularly attracted to that kind of thing. Although, I'm sure it's a different story for you, Theo. 
To be perfectly clear here, Theo, I have no interest in her. If she wasn't so ruined physically, then of course, but... Theo shrugged, and disgust crawled up my throat before his eyes wavered from mine. Twisting as the conversation stumbled to a halt, I frowned deeply as a familiar body stalked over. That chick worked at the same club as Ilya. Marcella, my darling. She slid into the booth next to Carlisle, sinking deep, until her head couldn't be seen over the top, and sighed a huge, exaggerated sigh. How is your flight back? About as bad as working in that shitty club for three years for nothing? Are you positive she doesn't know I'm in cahoots with you, Carlisle? Because I... Carlyle held up a hand to stop her, and Marcella's expression darkened as she glanced around wearily. I hate you. That's all I ask for, Marcella. Next time, don't do anything stupid, and I won't get involved. Do you have what I need? Casting me a suspicious look, Marcella stuck her hand deep into her purse, and my mind whirled frantically, trying to put this together. Marcella. Ilya had mentioned that name a few times, and she danced because she liked it, but her parents were rich and... and it was all a lie. That sucks. There won't be a next time. I'm never doing anything for you ever again, Carlyle. That was horrible. I'll never live that down. This is it. Done. Over. Never contact me again. Carlyle chuckled, and Marcella stiffened as he grabbed her neck and forced her head up. Watching outside their little bubble, I would have thought it was almost romantic if not for her thinned lips and pale cheeks. What are you going to do when I contact you again? The only person that says no to me is dead. He held out his palm, and she stuck something in it before he let her go and she couldn't get up fast enough to run away. Arching a brow, I kept my mouth shut because, well, fuck this shit. Chapter 30 Ilya Eight Weeks Later Straddling Theo's waist, I couldn't help but smile as his palms dragged up my calves, and he grumbled deep in his chest. Fucking creep, watching me sleep. His mumble tugged up from the corners of my mouth, and Theo cracked open his eyes to stare at me blearily. Kneading the butts of my palms against his chest, I relished his tired languish groan, and he reached to grapple my ass in powerful palms. You mad at me? What did I do to deserve this, huh? I'm not mad. My simple reply earned me a grunt, and I arched into Theo's hands to hum as warmth pooled in the pit of my belly. His cock stiffened against my thigh, and I rolled my hips as he spread my bare ass cheeks. Theo. Ducking my head, I ground against Theo as tingles shot down my spine, and my chest tightened when I brushed my lips along his jaw. Strong fingers squeezed and groped my ass, and he buried his face in my neck to nibble deliciously. Hopefully, this morning, things would go farther. The notion in itself was exciting, and my core clenched as I popped my ass. Goosebumps blanketed my body when my folds wrapped around his cock, and he pushed down on my ass to slather my juices along his shaft. Are you sure you can handle me, Ilya? Gasping as Theo sunk his teeth deep in my shoulder, I braced my fists on the pillow under his head, and he caressed up my back. Shivers lodged between my shoulder blades, and I shuddered in expectation as I nodded against his cheek. Yeah, I bet you think so. P please my lips trembled against his ear, and Theo swept his fingertips down my back at my whimper. Reaching around my thigh, he pumped his cock, and excitement almost numbed me as I spread my knees. Palming his chest, I bit down on my bottom lip as pink crept up on my field of vision. My ribs warbled from the intense desire that battered them, 
and my juices seeped out for me as he slapped his cock against my core. Why are you so fucking good to me, huh? The growl caught me off guard, and I paused as Theo teased my entrance with his left hand. His eyes met mine, and he frowned under furrowed brows at what must have been a troubled look on my face. What? What about this is good, Theo? This is what happened last time, and the time before that, and the time before that. We almost fuck, but we never actually do. Do you not want to? Sourness twisted his features, and I pushed down on his shoulders insistently. It's been weeks, and you won't kiss me. You'll stuff your cock down my throat, but you won't. Ilya, we talked about this. Take your bandages off. The fine hairs on the back of my neck stood up at that, and my nails dug into Theo's shoulders as I frowned darkly. He reached for my face, but I pulled back, and I climbed off him with his glare strafing my back. It's not unreasonable to want to see you naked. Just because your last boyfriend was a spineless bitch doesn't mean I am, too. In case you didn't notice, I've got my fair share of scars, Ilya. Whatever. Tiny angry tears pricked my eyes, and I stood up to run both my hands through my hair roughly. The long, rich strands sucked the heat from my palms, but it just ended up zinging down my face and sternum to ball in my chest. What's the point? Ilya, no! Whipping around, my face flamed as my hair sliced my cheek, and Theo stiffened with his feet on the floor. Pointing at the door with a trembling hand, I blinked back the sting in my eyes as my heart throbbed painfully. Get out if you're not gonna. You're a fucking liar, Theo. Everyone I know is a liar. It's been weeks, weeks, and all I get is, is, is your cock in my mouth, and you won't even kiss me. What the fuck? Sputtering wildly from the force of my emotions, my ruined skin started to burn from the flames that licked down my neck. This time, my bandages couldn't help me, and I heaved harsh pants as Theo stared at me with daggers in his eyes. His jaw clenched and released, the silence ringing louder and louder beyond the blood drumming in my ears. Goosebumps washed my arms, and my breath caught when he slowly stood up with a deep, stabilizing inhale. I told you before that I wouldn't say no to you, Ilya. I wouldn't take advantage of you, right? Stiffening when he took a threatening step toward me, I gasped harshly when Theo grabbed my face with his good hand. His frigidly cold fingers sucked the heat from my cheeks as his eyes blazed with icy sharpness that could cut steel. Short, sharp nails dug into my jaw, and a tiny sliver of fear lodged in my heart. It's been weeks, and all you get is my cock in your mouth? I won't kiss you? That's what you're complaining about? Do I want to fuck you? Are you really that fucking stupid, Ilya? My heart nearly stopped beating when he leaned in so close to my face, and I squeezed my eyes shut and held my breath in quivering lungs. I need it. I need your tight pussy around my fingers. I need to taste that slick juice. But you don't want to give me all of you, Ilya. I thought we had something deeper than skin. Theo's nasty snarl sent spit flying into my face, and I flinched when he bumped his right knuckles against my bad shoulder. I guess I was wrong. You're not obliged to show me yours, but I'm done investing more than you. If that's all you really want, to get fucked without any of the rest, go ahead. Stop it. My whimper earned me a vicious growl, and Theo pushed me against the wall but didn't press against me. The hairs on the back of my neck bristled wildly, and I squeezed my eyes tighter shut as his stubble rubbed my cheek raw. I thought we were beyond all this shit, Ilya. Do you really want to give this up? Are we just together to break up? Over a toss in the sack. That's what you want to fight about? Really? If that's what you think, 
that I'm content not having all of you, then I'll walk out that door and not come back. I'm trying. Theo was deathly quiet at my admission, and my muscles locked when he pressed his mangled palm against my chest. With the bandages, it didn't hurt. His gentle, bare touch, and my eyes popped open to catch his. Try harder. I don't know why you won't take your bandages off, Ilya, but you're right. What's the point of any of this if you still don't trust me? My heart hammered against his palm, and he tilted his head to brush his lips against my temple tenderly. When you take your bandages off for me, I want you to do it because you trust me, not because you think it'll get you laid. I just want to be closer to you, Theo. I was so fucking pathetic, and his cheek twitched when he pulled back. Carefully releasing my face, he caught my gaze and held it in a vice grip as he scratched his jaw almost casually. Do you think you can get that close without compromising yourself? That's the point, Ilya. You can't pick and choose. You can't decide in one moment that something makes you vulnerable, and then another thing, another moment. It doesn't work like that. An ugly blotch smeared across my lungs and strangled my heart, and I tore my eyes off Theo as shame crawled up my throat. He sighed heavily, cupping my cheeks in both his palms, and I pursed my lips thinly against the dense lump that tried to burst through. I won't wait around forever. If you can't be as honest with me as I am with you, then there's nothing more to say. Uh, Arr! Clearing my throat roughly, I licked my dry lips heavily as anxiety bubbled up like thick black tar in my gut. Are you on call today? No. The large gap between the fingers on his left hand shrunk a little as he caressed my cheek, and I ground my teeth. Where do you want to go? A cemetery. My eyes flickered up to watch Theo's expression from under my lashes, and he smiled so tenderly. If, if I start anywhere, it'd be there. Reaching to wipe his saliva from my face, Theo traced my lips with his thumb, and I tilted my head to rest my forehead on his sternum. Closing my eyes as he cupped the back of my head, I inhaled a shallow breath of his musky smell and held it deep in my lungs. I know it's different, Ilya. You do this a lot. Get all huffy about opening up. Kneading my scalp, Theo pressed his lips to my crown as shame rattled my ribs at his mumble. Trusting me will get you farther than this superficial shit. I don't think it's superficial to want to be under you. Taking him by the wrist, I dragged his palm down from my chin, and he tensed as he palmed my breast gently. Covering all his fingers with mine, I exhaled slowly, but my bandages kept the friction from his calluses from causing me any pain. It was almost symbolic, and he held my head firmer to his chest as his heart thundered against my eye sockets. It doesn't hurt like this. It doesn't feel good either, does it? No, not really. But Theo already knew the answer to his own question. Chapter 31 Theo Glancing at Ilya out of the corner of my eye, I pursed my lips against the frown that threatened to twist my face. Over the past eight weeks, things had stabilized for the most part. Ilya was actually a little excited to do some corporate espionage, and I got two days off of my choosing a week. I hadn't seen hide or hair of Mateo, but I knew he was around because, every so often, I'd hear one of the cleaning ladies talking about cleaning his pigsty of an apartment. After the whole mess with Sylvie resolved, he seemed reclusive and quiet, which was A-O-fucking-K with me. I liked the silence, and Carlyle wasn't too bad to listen to, at the very least. Tightening my grip on the wheel as we drove the rolling back roads toward Massachusetts, I rubbed my tongue against the roof of my mouth. 
You didn't tell me you used to live in Mass. Every time I thought we were getting a little closer, Ilya would push me back somehow. She hummed softly from the passenger seat, and I craned my neck as I adjusted in my own. Where else have you lived? Just Springfield and in Mexico. The short answer was more than I had a right to expect. I knew I was pushing buttons that I shouldn't. Ilya didn't abandon her family, didn't have that decision to go back and try to make amends the way I had. Her whole family had been burnt to a crisp, and that really sucked. But that was as much a determination as it was a drawback. I couldn't have a part of her, even though it was mightily hypocritical of me. After all, it wasn't like I had given her all of me yet, either. That would entail showing her how easy it was to kill someone, to snuff out a life, and all that potential with no regrets and no lost sleep. When I came back from the Marines, I lived in Washington, D.C. for a while. That sucked ass. It was so expensive. Maybe it'd be better to keep my mouth shut, and Ilya propped her elbow on the center console to stare at me. Her slender brows furrowed, and she puffed out her lips as I flicked on my blinker as we neared a stop sign. What? Since we're doing this, I'm kinda nervous. Arching a brow quizzically, I nearly choked on my own spit, and she frowned darkly out of my peripheral. The only guys I've ever had sex with were so drunk they could barely get it up. I was always on top. Sometimes I didn't even have to take off my clothes if I wore a skirt. It's just safer that way because there's this time where they're really grabby, and I can't do that. I already figured that out. Why do you think I go so far only to stop right before the good part? Her mossy green eyes brightened at my admission, and I cleared my throat roughly. Having a conversation like this was surreal. I never expected to have to explain myself to her. Grabbing tits isn't exactly something I think about, so I've been trying to get myself out of the habit. It's frustrating, I get it. But you gotta have a little faith in me, Ilya. Oh. A grim smirk tilted my lips, and I reached to rub her head and ruffle her hair roughly. Honestly, Ilya was really sad and pathetic, how she didn't expect people to act with her interests in mind. It had been months, and she questioned everything I did for her. She always expected to have to pay me back in some way. I'm making this difficult, aren't I? It was easier before Carlisle picked me up. Do you have any family in Mass now? Changing the subject rather than agree with her and make it worse, I paused at the stop sign as Ilya nodded. Do you want to visit them, too? Might as well. Do you ever go to see your parents? My cheek twitched at that, and I shook my head as memories flooded my mind's eye. Why not? They're still pissed at me about my sister. I mean, I don't blame them. I wasn't okay at the time, but Kelsey was still in the wrong as well. If I had to take a side, I'd take hers. I would have cut her fingers off. If I had the chance again, I'd do it without hesitation. Inhaling deeply through my nose, I lifted my right hand to stretch my mangled fingers taut, and tension prickled up my arm. I always hated her, stuck-up bitch. It's not out of character for her to say shit like that. I remember the day she was born. The fuck does she think that she's better than everyone else just because she's got the suburbia dream life? I had little twin brothers. They both died in the fire when the roof collapsed. I've got a bunch of aunts and uncles on both sides, but Carol was relatively drama-free at the time. Now that I'm older, I don't blame anyone for not taking me in. Everyone has their own problems, and despite being family, they're not obligated to take me on, especially with all the care I needed. That's not fair to anyone. The more she revealed, the darker, raspier Ilya's voice became, and I reached into the cup holder to check the GPS on my phone with a low grunt. Carol killed herself. 
I told you about that. Her husband took on her court case and didn't try to contest it. He probably didn't have any fight in him because of her death. In the end, she shirked it off onto others and got away scot-free. So, what happened to the money they owed you? I dropped it. He didn't even know what was going on. He thought she got a promotion and a bonus at work for some of the more noticeable stuff. I wanted to fuck her over, but she took the easy way out. He offered to pay some of it, or make a plan or something, but it was about the money, but not really about the money, you know? A harsh bark of shock escaped me, and I turned away from the road as Ilya sat back with a heavy sigh. I was young and stupid. I was already homeless, so it couldn't get worse, or so I believed at the time. It'd be easy to get a job at McDonald's or whatever. I speak six languages, and that's gonna get me somewhere. Well, it didn't, but I couldn't just go back. Fuck that. How come you always stick to your decisions unless I'm involved? My tease earned me a slight push from over the center console, and I leaned back to stretch my leg a little. No, seriously though, why do you make awful decisions and stick by them, but you waver on the good ones until they turn bad? Maybe I just like wallowing in my misery because it's comfortable. The unknown is scary. Snorting roughly at that, I shook my head, and Ilya frowned out of the corner of my eye. I don't know. Maybe it's because I care about your opinion. I smirked broadly as Ilya looked out the window, her hair falling over her shoulder to hide her pink cheeks. This was one of those moments that I always thought brought us a little closer, and then she'd fuck it up. But surprisingly, she didn't disappoint this time, and I arched a brow when she huffed softly. I know I just said I didn't blame him, but I still want to kick him in the balls for being an ignorant ass. Really, I couldn't say anything about that. I'd never met the guy, but I couldn't believe he was so trusting of his wife. Truthfully, a few grand of surprise remodel would have been understandable, but tens of thousands of dollars? Where do your parents live, Theo? The question threw me for a loop, and I reached to rub my head and neck in discomfort. Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. They cut contact with me after all that shit. My grumble of a reply earned me expectant silence, and I glanced over the center console as Ilya stared at her lap intently under furrowed brows. I've never thought of trying to reconnect with them. Are you gonna tell me I should? No. She reached to brush her fingers along her jaw thoughtfully, and I grunted softly. A knot formed in my chest, but I shook my head and focused on the road. We'd taken the scenic route up through Connecticut, and I managed to avoid most of the highways. Family is as much a good thing as a bad thing. Just because I don't have mine anymore doesn't mean you're obligated to suffer for yours. Chapter 32 Ilya I feel like this is the calm before the storm. Goosebumps blanketed my arms and legs, and I flexed my grip on the door handle as Theo jerked the emergency brake. The cemetery was deathly still and silent, and I inhaled a stabilizing breath before popping open the door. I don't like this. What is? This. I wasn't sure if that question had an answer yet, and I pursed my lips thinly as I climbed out of the car. We'd been driving for hours, but I wasn't stiff or tired. There was no apprehension running through my veins. There was nothing except this intense sense of foreboding gorging on my insides. This feeling had been building the past two weeks or so, and I wasn't sure if it was simply because Carlyle's grace period was up, or it was something more sinister. Granted, Carlyle was sinister in himself. Whatever he wanted me to do wasn't just basic blackmail. Is wanting to come here more about starting your job? 
As if he read my thoughts, Theo rounded the front of the car to sling his arm over my shoulders, and my expression soured. Glancing around at the beautiful landscaping and bright sun shining down on everything, making headstones glimmer, I only jerked my head in a nod. Don't be nervous, Ilya. Carlyle's not so bad once you get used to him. My parents were great people, and this is what I'm doing. I don't even know what it is I'm doing. Carlyle won't tell me anything. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be a baptism of fire. I rested my cheek on his chest, and we started walking toward the headstones, immersing me in a strange sense of surrealism. I'd never thought of being back here, and I thought moving to California would make that impossible. I don't feel anything but dread, Theo. I mean, being here? My parents and my brothers are dead. They're not ghosts or up in heaven. They're rotted in the ground, and they don't hold any sway on my life right now. I just... I came here because I thought it'd be easier to do it here instead of being trapped in that place. Do what? I'm not screwing you in a cemetery, Ilya. Frowning darkly, I didn't offer a response to that, and Theo palmed my head as we walked down the path. Do what, Ilya? To figure out my life. My answer earned me a questioning grunt, and I glanced over at the rows and rows of perfectly trimmed grass. Why didn't people treat others this well until after they died? Licking my lips heavily, I held back a sigh, and my worries seemed to roll easily off my tongue. What kind of person am I if I'm not starving and living under a tarp? I don't know. I thought maybe coming here would help me get some perspective on who I could be, because I really can't picture myself not struggling. That's kind of sad. Carlyle may be a drug lord or terrorist or whatever they call it these days, but what does that mean for me? How much of it can I ignore, and how much of it should I look at? These past few weeks have been great, but I can't open the refrigerator without effort. I can't leave that building without being gripped by an apprehension that I won't be able to get back in. Slowly, my tangent came to an end and I heaved a massive, exhausted breath as Theo kneaded my scalp gingerly. If I take my bandages off, I can't put them back on again. I don't know if I'm ready to take that step, Theo. Ilya. Resting his chin on my crown, Theo sighed heavily through his nose, and I gulped down the dense lump in my throat. No one really knows anything until they try it. There's never a sure answer. You can always be surprised by how you react to something. And yeah, Carlyle's a dick. But if you stay on his good side, he's not going to be a dick to you. He says it all the time that he really likes you. I think you should take that at face value and not worry about how he treats others. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Look at what he did to his own brother. My grumble muffled in Theo's chest as we turned to walk along the tombstones, and I sucked in a sharp breath through my teeth. That DVD he gave me? I was Sylvie's best friend for years, half a decade. And when I watched her basically getting murdered, there was nothing. I didn't expect that. I wasn't horrified or sick or even glad or, or anything. She hurt you, but either not that bad or your friendship wasn't as strong as you thought it was, Ilya. Sylvie was around, so you didn't feel alone. But how good a friend was she, really? As far as Carlyle giving you that DVD in the first place, I think he did it out of what tiny good place he has in his heart. Ignoring everything, she got some rich guy trapped. That says a lot about her character that she'd be willing to put someone through that for her own selfishness. I knew Theo was talking about the baby, not Matteo, and he tugged gently on my hair. If you did that to me, 
I'd probably kill you too. Well, it's a good thing I can't have kids then. His grim smirk was so deep I felt it through my hair, and I reached to grab his right hand and press it against my abdomen. Warm and hard, he put just a tiny bit of pressure on my bandages, and his other hand tightened in my hair. When I was sixteen, two years after the accident, I decided to get a hysterectomy. I was dating my first boyfriend, the one I showed my scars to, and if I did get pregnant by accident, all sorts of horrible shit would happen to my body. Despite all her faults, my aunt was actually the one that pushed it the hardest, even before we were told the insurance would cover it. Whatever happened to him anyway? Pausing our journey just before one particular headstone, I turned to Theo as rage blazed in his eyes and tightened his tone. I don't know. He never talked to me again, just disappeared despite having the same circle of friends. My mom always told me that if a guy does that, not to get hung up on him. Gesturing to the light-colored marble, I smiled sadly as Theo's gaze flickered to it only to jump back to me. She used to talk about guys a lot and how I should never compromise myself. I should never move for a guy, even across the street. I should never let a guy do anything that made me uncomfortable, from paying for something and up. Your mom's a badass. Turning to the gravestone, Theo tightened his grip on my shoulders and head as I hummed in agreement. She raised you to get through this shitstorm. It always amazes me how normal you are, Ilya. Normal. My mom's headstone glowed in the bright sun of late morning, and I sat down to cross my legs in the lush green grass. I didn't understand the concept of considering the dead just because they were dead, and no emotions tightened my chest as I stared at the name scrawled elegantly into the marble. I guess that's a good word to use. Theo dropped down behind me, draping his legs around mine, and I leaned back against his chest to soak up his warmth. Today was beautiful, but I couldn't enjoy it as my gut rot intensified. Tilting my head to stare at my dad and twin brother's stones, I licked my lips heavily as anxiety gnawed at the back of my throat. Things have been normal, haven't they? Am I just waiting for something awful to happen? My murmur earned me silence, and I closed my eyes to lean heavier against him. Settling his hands on my shoulders, Theo squeezed and rubbed softly, and I wished that just a little bit of his security would seep through my skin. What if I'm not cut out for normal? Then we'll just have to find something you're kick-ass at. That's what life's about, Ilya. It never stops. Only the lucky ones find that security. My lip twitched up, and Theo buried his nose in my hair to breathe a heavy, hot sigh that rolled down the back of my neck. We're just lucky to be alive. Chapter 33 Theo Today was a perilously soul-searching day, and I reached to rub the back of my neck absently as Ilya poked around in the gas station. Springfield was nice, everything was clean, and this was definitely a place I'd like to come vacation if the urge ever took me. Leaning on the checkout counter a little ways from the register, I watched her carefully, so carefully, pick up every single item on the shelf, look at the ingredients, and decide she didn't want it before putting it back. Your girlfriend's really picky, isn't she? The Boston twang of the cashier wasn't laced with snark or anything. In fact, he sounded kind of sad, and I glanced over with a curt nod. Her teenage face kind of fell, and I frowned under furrowed brows before turning back to Ilya. She picked up a protein bar and rocked back on her heels, but my mind caught on the cashier's question. Was Ilya my girlfriend? We'd never talked about it. We just ate together, practically lived together at this point. I fingered her, and she blew me, and then we fell asleep together. 
What the fuck kind of dumbass question was that? Of course we were together. This one. Ilya sauntered over to set her protein bar on the counter, and I didn't bother pulling out my wallet just so she could tell me to fuck off. She paid the stupid dollar easily, and my gaze flickered to the check folded neatly in one of her wallet pockets. Do you want to stop somewhere and grab some lunch, and you can eat that on the way home? Posing my question as we left the gas station, I swung my arm over her shoulders as Ilya shook her head. I'll get something somewhere. I'm starving. I thought you'd try to talk me out of going to my uncle's house. Shrugging as I pulled my keys out of my pocket, I flexed my bad hand as tension zinged up my arm. Why not? Why would I? Honestly, Ilya, I don't know enough about your shitty uncle to have an opinion. If you want to avoid being home and the fact that you work on Monday with this shit, which option is worse? That's how it looks to me, at least. And it was true. I didn't know, and I didn't really care. Ilya came here on her own suggestion, which meant that her anxiety over Carlisle was worse than her lifelong teenage trauma. I'm having a nice time, though. Oh, that's good. A smirk tilted my lips, and I squeezed her to my side as I remotely unlocked my car. I don't even know if they still live there. Maybe they moved. I don't know which I want more, them to be there or not. I guess we're gonna find out. There wasn't much else I could say unless Ilya said it first. What little I knew about these people, they were scum. Parting from me to head to the passenger side, she furrowed her brows troublingly, and I pursed my lips thinly. This wasn't exactly what I wanted to do with my day off, but I wasn't stupid. Ilya and I both had our ups and downs. We both had moments when we wanted something bad enough to say it, and then regretted it. Like fucking her brains out. When she told me so many weeks ago that she'd work with Carlisle, I couldn't think of anything but how accessible she'd be to me. We'd turn up the heat, do the thing, bump the uglies. But it didn't turn out like that. For all that talk, I wouldn't blow her back out just because I wanted to. It had to mean something. It had to be special. Maybe my not having been laid in a couple years made the notion more romanticized, but that was the easy way out. I was in love with Ilya, and I wasn't going to fuck her until I knew she was in love with me, too. What kind of bullshit is that? Hey, Theo? Humming softly in acknowledgement as I pulled forward, I glanced at the road under furrowed brows and Ilya sighed before continuing. I have a bad feeling about this. Do you not want to go? My probe gave me the exact reaction I was expecting. Nothing. Ilya sort of shrugged, her expression unchanging, and I wasn't sure if she was talking about working or visiting her uncle. A bad feeling about what? It took a lot of time and effort to get a straight answer out of her. I was always surprising myself with how much patience I had with Ilya. Her vague, dodgy replies and general lack of understanding of herself was something I'd grown accustomed to. After all, she never had an opportunity to know herself, and that's what this whole trip was supposedly about. I don't know. I just have this... This vague sense of doom, like something is going to happen. Anything that's not a direct threat to her, she doesn't know how to handle. Things have never gone this good before. Maybe I'm just overly pessimistic. Ilya. Pausing to take a turn at a green arrow, I scanned for any fast food place as her self-doubt distracted me from the fact that we'd fought instead of having breakfast. Okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't be cautious and thorough, but the whole doubting yourself bullshit has to stop. If you feel like that, there's usually a reason. You should trust yourself a little more when it comes to personal shit. I mean, you held your own against Carlyle the first time you met him, and he blindsided you and is generally pretty menacing regardless. Where'd that go, huh? He can kill me. That's straightforward, Theo. 
I couldn't argue with that point, and Ilya ran her hand through her hair absently with a groan of frustration. What's wrong with me? Why can't I just accept that I've got it as good as it can be, and not trying to ruin it by psyching myself out? Fuck if I know. Flicking on my blinker, I reached to rub my jaw absently as my mind whirred. Make a decision and stick to it, for better or worse. That's my best advice. It was a lot easier when I did things out of necessity instead of just wanting to do it. Ilya sat up, straighter at her own grumble, and I turned into McDonald's smoothly as she slapped her hands together. Arching a brow quizzically, I pulled up into the drive through lane before casting her a look. That's it, isn't it? I can do whatever I want now. I don't have to do anything I don't want to. You've never done anything, like, at all, just because you wanted to? Skepticism thickened my tone, and Ilya frowned under furrowed brows for a long moment before shaking her head. Seriously? Are you fucking with me right now? As an adult? No. I only did what I had to. I worked, slept, woke up, repeat. Until I moved here, I never had downtime. One time, I worked three jobs. That was while I was at the women's shelter. Scowling darkly at that, I covered my mouth as disgust coated my tongue. Suddenly, I wasn't hungry, but I was in line, so... Carlyle must have known that. That's why he gave me two whole months with nothing to do. I'm not used to doing nothing. He gave you time to go crazy with boredom? So you'd want to do something you like? I mean, that sounded like something Carlyle would do. He talked all the time about Ilya being so pathetic and how he felt sorry for her. Why would that be limited to after meeting her if he really did do all he could to find out all about her? It took you long enough to figure it out. This is the first time I've left my apartment since moving there, though. No wonder he feels that way. She is kind of pathetic. All I've done is hang out with you or watch TV or try it on clothes. I have so many clothes and I'm not even done yet. I'm flattered that I'm the defining factor on your sanity. Still, it seemed like such a simple concept and Ilya was looking for the one farthest from it. Downtime, rest and relaxation. She smiled as I inched my car up the lane, and I gripped the wheel with my good hand to reach over the center console. Even if that was the reason, how does that help you now that your time is up? You start on Monday. I, I don't know that yet. Maybe just the realization is enough. I mean, it took me two months to figure it out, right? Rubbing her smooth cheek, I pursed my lips and simply accepted that. Ilya looked for the worst of the worst in most situations, so ignoring the most mundane reason wasn't so out of character. It might have made her feel like an idiot, but that was something I liked about her. Now, if I can just get her to be a little more self-confident. Chapter 34 Ilya Music pumped through the house and I leaned on the driver's side door of Theo's car as I stared from across the street. That gut-churning, sinking feeling hadn't gone away, but it had lessened enough not to make me projectile vomit. Scratching my head as anxiety tingled my fingertips, I inhaled a deep, calming breath. Vehicles lined this section of street and crammed in the driveway, but everything looked exactly how I remembered. So. Are you going to go inside? Grunting at the question, I nodded even though I just continued to gaze, and my lips twisted in a frown. Don't make me drag you in there, Ilya. I drove all the way here because, why not? So you better get something out of this. It looks the same as it did ten years ago. If I held up a picture from back then, the only difference would be the car in the open garage. The suburb itself hadn't changed much either. A few trees here and there, a new sign. Focusing on the house, I exhaled slowly and nodded again before pushing myself off the door. 
They're having a party. Let's go crash it. Striding across the street, I could picture my cousins when I blinked. When they were eleven, of course, and pudgy-faced and happy when their mom bought their attention. Walking up the concrete path, I clenched my hands into tight fists as the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. The music was loud, bracingly so, and I had to bang on the door to get any sound to come back to me, let alone inside. Pressing his palm against my back, Theo stole some of the tension gripping my spine, and I rolled my lips between my teeth to gnaw hard. The door swung open with no warning, and I stiffened as my uncle's bright smile filled my field of vision. It took him a moment to recognize me, and his smile dimmed but didn't disappear as I awkwardly held up my hand. Hi. His bushy graying brows rose at my greeting, and I cleared my throat roughly. I was in Springfield, and I was hoping we could talk, but if you're busy... Uh, no, no, of course not. Sputtering slightly, my uncle glanced over his shoulder briefly before stepping to the side, and surprise prickled the bridge of my nose. Come on in. It's funny you decided to come today. Jack just got back from his deployment. You didn't know he went into the army, did you? No, I didn't. Stepping over the threshold, I blinked hard, and I gestured to Theo as his hand slipped from my back. Um, this is Theo, my, my boyfriend. Nice to meet you. I'm Jack, senior, of course. My uncle had a beer in his right hand, and Theo automatically stuck out his mangled palm. Jack grabbed it without thinking, and I held my breath as slight discomfort rippled across his features. Come on in. I never thought you'd come back here after what happened, Ilya. I wouldn't blame you. Me either, to be honest. I... I got a new job, and I went to my parents' graves, so I figured, you know, since I was here. Shutting the door behind us, my uncle nodded in understanding, and I silently wondered if he was so... so mellow. How have you been? It's been a long time. Uh, yeah, about that. It's a story. Do you want a drink? Congratulations on your job. What do you do? People I didn't recognize filled the house, and a few people I did, and I nodded as we entered the kitchen. Rounding the wall, I paused as a memory of my aunt sitting there with her purse and her mail spread out around her gripped me. A soft touch on my arm dragged me back. The reverie was a fraction of a second, and I shook my head vigorously. It, it's just an office job. I work as a translator. Straightening my shoulders, I followed my uncle to the fridge, and he opened the door with astounding ease. What about you guys? Jack went into the army? Yeah, he just got back from his second deployment. Nodding awkwardly, I took the dark bottled beer my uncle offered me as a sense of surrealism swept through me, and he leaned on the counter to sigh heavily. He scanned me slowly through shrewd, narrowed eyes, and I held my breath when he licked his lips in preparation. You look good, Ilya. I'm not gonna lie. I always hoped you'd come back so I could apologize properly. You look really great too, Uncle Jack. I don't know what I was expecting, but... He smiled fondly like he did when I was younger, and my heart ached as my words failed me. Running my hand through my hair absently, I glanced around the kitchen, but everything was the same. Jack even wore the same brand of cargo shorts. The same spatula was sticking out of the drain. It's weird. Well, not a lot has changed on the outside except the kids. They're all grown up now. So are you. His eyes caught mine, soft, brown, and warm, and my lip twitched in a frown. Why did you go to your family's graves? You don't necessarily believe they're listening still, right? Um, it's been really hard these past few years, so I figured that coming back would help me get some perspective. Plus, I had thought about it in the past, but I never had the opportunity. 
I actually was living in Southern California these past couple years. The admission earned me a hum, and my uncle's gaze shifted to Theo to fill with questions. Gesturing to him, the sense of an almost out-of-body experience intensified, and I cleared my throat heavily. Theo actually helped me get the job. I start on Monday. It's been a really long time since I had a stable job, so maybe it's freaking me out. I bet. Your mom came over when she got approached by someone about working for the government. Funnily enough, it was whenever Carol wasn't around. Or maybe not so funny. My eyes widened at the fondness that tenderized Jack's expression, and he twirled his beer in his hands, unopened and forgotten. I would have to listen to her go on and on and on about the job over and over again. She never shut up until she decided she was out of stuff to say, and then she'd just walk out. One time, she was here until 2 a.m. almost. I didn't know that. My dumb answer earned me a low chuckle, and my uncle twisted to grab the bottle opener with memories dancing in his eyes. I'm not here to complain, Uncle Jack. I wouldn't mind it if you were, Ilya. I... A soft knock interrupted him, and I twisted as his gaze slipped past me to a middle-aged woman I didn't recognize. Ah, Ilya, this is my wife, Marley. She was pretty, with wrinkles in the right places, and her grays were just the right shade. Smiling politely, she stepped into the kitchen, and I nodded curtly as tightness tingled the smeared skin on my chest. Something cold touched my arm, and I turned back to Jack as he held out the bottle opener for me. Like I said, it's a long story, but I think it's about time you heard the whole thing. Leaning back, my uncle took a deep swig of his beer, and I clenched my jaw hard as I tightened my grip on my bottle. We were getting divorced. Carol was always worried about bills because her lawyer was consuming her money. I couldn't stand her doing what she did to you, and there were a lot of problems for a long time beforehand, but the deaths of your family were what pushed me to take that step. You said you didn't know she was stealing? Jack gave a guilty, grim smirk and slight shrug, and I lifted my beer to my lips. I hated beer, but even it couldn't wash the sour taste from my tongue. I didn't know the extent, but I knew the moment she took the property managers to court that she'd waste it all and leave nothing for you. I wasn't in a position financially to stash money for you, or I would have done that. We tried to keep it up for the kids and for you, Ilya, but when Carol started remodeling the house, I knew you'd know that she was up to something. At the time, it seemed like the less horrible option for you to hate me instead of hating yourself. I wasn't expecting you to sue her for it, and I wasn't expecting her to commit suicide, but I was really proud of you for it at the time. I don't hate you, Uncle Jack. I don't even hate her. That's just using energy I don't have. Marley popped open the refrigerator out of the corner of my eye, but I focused on my uncle as a sigh rattled my sternum. It is what it is, I guess. It took me a long time, but I'm on track now. After she died, I wanted to offer you your room back, but you disappeared. I hired a private investigator, but you're really good at blending into crowds. Always have been. Needless to say, things stabilized after a few years. Jack was having a lot of problems in school, so he decided to go to a reform camp on his own. He's flourished. Grant is a senior now. He's doing well. I talked to them about divorce long before I actually did it, and I got lucky they were starting to get to that age where they had a contention with Carol. Of course, her death hit them hard, but for what it is, if possible, I believe in the right way. Nodding in understanding, I licked my lips heavily as my mind whirred furiously. Maybe, at the time, I'd just been so disinterested in anyone but myself that I'd never noticed. 
Maybe because it had been like that since I arrived, it was just normal to me. To be honest, the why didn't matter anymore, and I lifted my beard to my lips to neck the contents before inhaling deeply. Whatever concoction of words my mind was about to belch out was cut off by a shout, and I twisted as my heart leaped into my throat. Jack, in his full army garb, stood in the mouth to the kitchen, and the fine hairs on my arms stood up. He wasn't pudgy-faced anymore, even as shock reddened his features. My mind raced. What did he know about me? He was young when my parents died and I'd moved in. Jack started toward me, and I tensed when I realized he was going to tackle me. My heart stuttered, and the anxiety in my gut spread to my fingertips and toes. But in about the time it took to blink, Jack was on his back. There wasn't even the slightest thump against the tiles or faintest shudder of the floor. In one fraction of a second, he was standing, and then his knees were up against his chest, and he was staring at the ceiling. Don't touch her. Standing over Jack menacingly, Theo frowned darkly, and my cousin gasped stupidly as he caught up with events. My brows rose as surprise dried my mouth when Theo stuck out his good hand and he helped Jack to his feet to pat his back hard. Welcome back. Chapter 35 Theo You were right. This is way too good to be true. Something bad is gonna happen. Grumbling in Ilya's ear, I tapped my feet on either side of the outdoor lounge chair and glanced around the backyard. I have a feeling you're spot on, Ilya. This is the calm before the storm. Just when everything's going perfect, it's gonna fuck up. I realize that. I'm just gonna enjoy this for now, though. I grunted as I scanned the backyard, full of people I didn't know and didn't care to know and Ilya sighed as she hunched a little. I didn't expect things to go well at all, let alone. You expected them to hate you for their mom committing suicide? Nodding slowly, she leaned back into my chest, and I rubbed her hip as my gaze flickered around and around. I guess it's not unexpected, all things considered. Do you want to leave? Not really. Jack's got a crush on you. It's kind of cute. Frowning at Ilya's cheeky smirk, I sat back in the chair and propped my arm under my head. Jack hadn't seen a lot of action. That much was clear, but I didn't think he'd be so starstruck. What? I guess that just goes to show you why being a Marine is better than the Army. Dude's a baby. He's only two years in. That's a lifetime. I could remember my first deployment like it was yesterday. A lot of fucking sand, a lot of downtimes, and a lot of training. Now that we weren't actively warring with the bad guys, kids in the military had it easy. Firefights were simple things, after all, and being in one didn't make Jack a badass. He's a good kid, though. I bet he's gonna come over and ask you to show him some moves. Rolling my eyes at that, I only shook my head, and Ilya giggled a little as she twisted to face me. She looked good, fresh and glowy and happy, that happy of a person experiencing something unexpected. Would you show him something if he asked? I'd have permission to beat the fuck out of him. Why would I turn that down? She laughed again, and I savored the sound as it twinkled against my eardrums. Licking my teeth, I glanced over at Jack to find him mustering up the courage to approach me, and I hoisted myself up with a grunt. Truth be told, I just wanted Ilya to experience all the greatness that she could while she was here. Jack sized me up, and I could practically smell the tension thrumming through him under his uniform. Not gonna lie. Seeing that hurt, I hadn't put on my dress in ages, and I wasn't even sure where they were at this point. Wanna get punched? 
Jack obviously didn't expect my straightforward question, and I couldn't help but smirk when his brows rose in surprise. His face flushed, and he handed his beer to his friend as I rocked back on my heels. How long were you in for? I'd still be in if I didn't get my fingers blown off. Holding up my hand, which I knew he'd noticed a long time ago, I shrugged lightly, and Jack shuffled in discomfort. It'll happen to you eventually, though maybe not physically. The ones with missing limbs are the lucky ones. I've heard. Once I do my four years, I'm just going into college. Nodding absently, I scanned this kid from top to bottom, and he straightened a little and clicked his heels. You look like you'd do well in a fight. Are you going to try to find out? I took a moment to think about that before shaking my head. My hand-to-hand combat skills were shit now. Jack looked a little disappointed, and I exhaled with a big breath as I watched him deflate noticeably. So, why'd you come over here? To make Ilya feel good. Glancing over my shoulder, I reached to rub my head and neck as Jack smiled faintly out of my peripheral. I really didn't have anything to say to him, but I knew Ilya would appreciate the effort. She seemed different in this atmosphere, but it wasn't going to last. She came here for closure before her life took an irreversible sharp left. That was all. I consider myself lucky to get dropped like that. Grinning at that, I turned my attention back to Jack, and he tinged red up to his ears. I'm glad we're not on different teams. You should be. The ominous threat in my tone made me chuckle, and I shook my head a little at how fundamentally Jack understood the differences in our abilities. I'd kill you before you even realized you were gonna die. I'll take your word for it. The conversation stalled, and I didn't try to revive it before heading back to Ilya. The sun shone brightly off her hair and illuminated her whole face, and I sat back down behind her. I should probably savor the atmosphere, too. It didn't escape me that everything was going a little too well lately. Just like Ilya, I'd been feeling apprehensive about her starting work, but like fuck I was gonna say that to her. Today had been such shit. I woke up to an argument, got dragged up the coast, and now I was at a party full of people I didn't know. If that wasn't bad enough, I felt like this whole trip was a waste in some ways. I was honestly hoping that Carlisle would call me back so I had an excuse to go home. Just as the disgruntled thoughts slithered through my mind, my phone began to vibrate and I fished the thing out of my pocket. Speak of the devil. What? Leaning back, I held the speaker to my ear, and Carlyle's frown radiated against my cheek before he'd even said anything. Get back. I need Ilya. Reaching to tap on her shoulder, I pointed shamelessly at her uncle, and Ilya frowned under tightly knit brows. And don't take forever. Something just came in. She'll be up all night. Yeah. Hanging up before I muttered the confirmation, Carlyle left the line dead and my cheek twitched in irritation as I stood up again. Ilya followed suit, and I'd guess she heard that last part as she sauntered off toward her uncle. Rubbing my face in agitation, I heaved a massive sigh. The calm before the storm. We'd been here about an hour, an hour too long in my opinion, and I hoped Ilya got the answers or enlightenment she was searching for. I sure as shit wasn't going to jump through hoops to come back, and I watched her hug her uncle with a smile cresting her cheeks. What did Carlyle want? Only posing her question once we were out in the street, Ilya cast me a questioning glance as I pulled my keys out of my pocket. Do you want me to drive? You don't have a license yet. Even as I grumbled, an ache shot up my right arm, and I tossed her my keys. She caught them easily, nodding curly, and I rounded the back of the car before speaking up again. Don't get us pulled over. I don't know what Carlyle wants, but it involves you, 
so it must be something involving whatever internal drama he mentioned at the club. That seemed like a long time ago. A strange sensation filled me as I climbed into the passenger seat of my own car, and Ilya stuck the keys into the ignition before adjusting the seat. When I was a teenager, me and my friends used to go on joyrides and stuff. It's fine, I won't get caught. Don't kill me, okay? That's all I'm asking. I sunk in the seat a little as she adjusted the mirror, and the car roared to life. And I saw my fucking shit life flash before my eyes when she grinned at me from over the center console. Chapter 36 Ilya Theo? Theo, come on, it wasn't that bad. Grabbing his hand to stop him storming into the complex, I couldn't help but frown at how utterly freaked out Theo was, even as he shot me a nasty glance over his broad shoulder. You didn't die. That's all you asked, remember? You are never driving again. Jerking his hand from mine, he practically spit in my face, and I tensed when his eyelid twitched as it came close to me, so close I could count his lashes. Don't you fucking pull that shit around on me. You shortened a four-hour drive to one and a half. W well, yeah. Carlisle said not to take forever, and I knew driving hurts your arm. Sputtering a little in the full face of Theo's rage, I tried to take a step back, but he followed, and I gasped when he grasped my biceps. His short, sharp nails dug into my skin, and his eyes flashed as they narrowed into slits. That hurts. It's a fucking miracle we made it back. Never, ever again. Hissing at me, Theo's spittle splattered on my chin, and my heart stuttered when he shook me. You understand? I, I understand. Releasing me with a slight shove to jerk the door open, Theo left me in the parking lot, and I exhaled a shaky, thin breath. Glancing down at my arm, the deep crescents of his fingernails were prominent, a white half-moon in the sea of reddening flesh. My gaze followed a white line on the pavement, up the brick wall, and the courtyard that served as a parking lot enclosed by it. A bridge connected two buildings, technically, one for living and one for working. Oh. Hanging my head as I reached to cup my biceps, I frowned at the asphalt, and my face grew hot as my skin stung where Theod grabbed me. It's not like he told me to slow down. That was just an excuse, and not a very good one. Maybe my driving 110 wasn't the best idea, but I wanted to get back as fast as possible. Carlisle didn't sound happy from what snippets I'd caught, and... Everything all right out here? Slithering out the door like a snake, Carlisle frowned down at me, and I huffed as I crouched down on the balls of my feet. I take it it's not all paradise on the island, huh? He doesn't like how fast I drove. When I moved my lips, I could taste him, and Carlisle hummed softly in acknowledgement. An ugly blotch spread across my chest, and I sat back on the hot concrete with a grunt. What's going on that you wanted us back? I wanted you back, Ilya. Theo's off today, all day. Anyway, we've got some shit to talk about. I guess out here's not a bad place. It's probably not bugged, at least. Leaning against the wall to slide down, Carlyle pulled a pack of cigarettes out of his dress pants, and I took the one he offered me. He sparked up, wordlessly passing me the lighter, and I took a huge drag trying to fill the gaping hole that had opened up inside me. So, someone is two-timing me, and your job as of right now is to find out who. That's some useful information there, Carlyle. Running my hands through my hair, I suddenly wished I'd spent a little more time with Carlyle instead of being lazy as hell. How many languages do you speak? English, Spanish, and German. I can understand Mandarin enough to get the gist of a conversation, but I always have a translator just in case. I ran my hand through my hair, 
my lips clamping down on the cigarette butt, and the toxic fumes filled my lungs but didn't leak out. There are no bugs anywhere. My tech experts are good. I cycle out my aids, so no one stays as long as this has been going on. Why would you assume it's someone here and not whoever you're doing business with? You've already considered it, right? Carlyle nodded, and I flopped my head back to exhale loud and heavy. My mind whirred slowly, dragged down by images of Theo when I blinked, and I scrunched up my nose in distaste. How often do you swap out your cleaning ladies? The same chick has come by my place twice a week since I got here. I've never swapped them out. There's a reason these buildings are connected. Work stays at work. Tilting my head down, my question must have blazed from my eyes, and Carlyle's brows knit tightly. Unless someone decided they were too good for the rules, it's not like I have a guard or someone personally check everyone going through the bridge. You should conduct a raid, or trick some stupid assholes into thinking it'd be a good idea. Sucking on the butt of my cigarette, I shrugged at Carlyle's quizzical expression. When I was homeless, the police would raid the shelters every couple months for people hiding out there after committing crimes. I've been arrested a few times because of it, because of Sylvie, back when she would steal for drug money. Back then, they'd wait until the shelters all filled up, and then they'd hit them at the same time. I find it hard to believe that the police had that much manpower. Skepticism and intrigue infected his tone, and I shrugged as I exhaled my lungful through my nose. Two cops show up at the shelter, and any homeless person knows they got nothing to do with it, we stay down. Normal people see the cops, assume they already know what they did, and try to bolt. Carlyle grunted in acknowledgement of my point, and I sniffed hard as I stared at the white line on the concrete. If you don't know how, then you just have to find out, and not be suspicious about it. Right, and how do you suggest that, Ilya? Fake a raid? Carlyle barked a shocked laugh, but I was deadly serious, and my lips thinned around my smoke. I'm serious. You obviously have access to the people that can pull it off. The issue isn't even the believability of the raid after it started. It's getting everyone together without arousing suspicion that something's wrong. Obviously, you don't want to put your people through that if the dude doesn't even show up. That'd be an answer in itself, though, I guess. I'll consider it. Before we resort to such a drastic measure, I want you to listen to all the conversations I've been having and the threats I've been receiving. I've had them sent to your apartment. Nodding listlessly, I rested my chin on my knees as my mind wandered and became far, and the line began to blur on the asphalt. Ilya, are you sure you're all right? Do you ever feel really far away from someone even though they're right next to you? My gaze flickered up, and Carlyle's expression tightened and walled up like the brick stretching sixty feet above us on all sides. Taking a drag of his own cigarette, he held his breath for a long second, and I tilted my head to rest my cheek on my knees. I don't know what it is. I can't figure out what about me is so, so small, and I don't get why this is happening. We had a fight this morning about sex. I don't even want to have sex with him, really. I just want to be close to him, but he keeps pushing me away. Is it about your chest? His voice was surprisingly soft and tender, and I nodded as much as I could at that angle before he sighed heavily. You can't hide behind those bandages forever, Ilya. I don't blame Theo for wanting you to take them off, but you can't really be upset because he's mad you won't. If you can't have all of a person, there's no point in having any part of them, despite what people try to say. Why did you give me those two months off? My question must have been what he expected this time, and Carlyle crouched down in front of me. His cigarette hung out of his mouth, and he looked really, really kind-hearted. Plopping his palm on my head, he snatched his smoke with his free hand before offering me the tiniest, broken-hearted smile I never thought I'd see on him. 
You remind me a lot of my sister right before she killed herself. Lost, listless, unable to do anything because you're so out of touch with yourself. It's not the same, I know. She was lost because our dad raised her to not be anything, not care about anything, not do anything for herself. The opposite is just as true, Ilya. You care too much, you are too much, you do too much. My eyes widened as surprise rocketed through me, and Carlyle chuffed softly before standing up and fixing the crack in his demeanor. His expression closed like an iron shutter, and I stood on stiff legs before he spoke up again. Fix whatever is going on between you two. I need all your focus on this, and I need the man guarding my body not to be distracted. If you need more incentive than your own, I'll kill you, Ilya, because I won't tolerate drama interfering with the job. A dense lump formed in my throat and I nodded before Carlyle flicked his cigarette before opening the door for me. Chapter 37 Ilya Anxiety curdled my blood into a thick sludge at the knock that sounded through my apartment, and I winced when I stood up, and my shirt brushed against my scars. It had been so long since I'd walked around without bandages and my hands curled into tight fists by my sides. Shuffling heavily to the hallway, I paused in front of the door, and I could practically smell Theo from the other side. I wondered what Carlyle threatened him with, if he threatened Theo at all, and what it meant if he didn't. Was I really just being a self-conscious bitch? For reasons I couldn't properly mouth, I went back and forth, but Theo was always saying the same things. Take off my bandages. Grabbing the knob, the cold metal burned my palm, and I inhaled mightily through my nose before pulling open the barrier. Theo propped on the frame, his arm over his head, and he gazed down at me through intense, narrowed eyes. Goosebumps washed down my arms, and a cold sweat broke out on my back as the silence stretched. I came to apologize for grabbing you. Now that I'd had a moment to think, I realized maybe Theo wasn't upset about my going so fast as he was trying to seem. Maybe he was mad about something else. So many maybes and not many concrete answers when I could just ask him. You were right. I don't trust you even though I should. My mouth dried at my own confession and I leaned on the wall to duck my head. It was easy back before, because I could disappear if things went south. I could run away if I got scared. You were right, too, you know. The gruff reply sent a spasm down my chest, and I glanced up from under my lashes as Theo frowned grimly. I've wanted to fuck you since the second I saw you, Ilya. Just because I found out you're so much more, and I want it all, doesn't mean it's okay for me to go back on my word. Do you want to come in? He nodded curtly, and I lowered my arm from the door to gesture Theo through. My heart thundered harder and harder when he kicked the barrier shut and powerful arms braced on either side of my head. The wall seemed so cold against my back compared to his heat, and his eyes didn't leave mine for a fraction of a second. Unfurling my stiff fingers, I touched my trembling palms to his sharply defined abdomen under his t-shirt, and he clenched and released his jaw with a muted click. I've tried so hard not to fuck this up that I stopped being the person I was before I met you. The lump in my throat became dense at Theo's grumble, and I nodded dumbly in agreement. His abdominal muscles strained under his taut, thick skin, and my fingertip traced the fading edges of the scar that ripped up his side. Let's start over. Like the past eight weeks didn't happen. The bad parts, at least. I'd like that. My murmur rasped through my chapped lips, and Theo's skin twitched under my palms as his closeness set fire rampaging through my veins. We weren't touching in any way but my hands against his abs, my fingers running through his happy trail, but I had never felt more infused with him. 
His dark eyes blazed, and he slowly reached to caress my cheek. Desire skittered down my neck, and I sucked in a sharp breath when he trailed the back of his fingers down toward my sternum. Something somewhere in the dark, dank recesses of my mind snapped as Theo's fingers skirted the burn on my chest. His nose brushed mine, his features becoming skewered from how close he was, and my ribs threatened to concave as he exhaled hotly. My fingers slipped under the waistline of his jeans, and his curled around the high neckline of my tank top. It happened slowly, too slowly, and I couldn't breathe with Theo's lips hovering just a fraction of a centimeter from mine. Reaching down, I pumped his hard, silky, smooth cock once, twice, and prickles raced up my spine when his shoulder shuddered in my peripheral vision. Each vein pulsed under my touch, his hardness unrelenting even when I squeezed, and he thrust into my palms with a sputtering breath. But his eyes never wavered, even as he fisted my t-shirt in both his palms and yanked. Heat from his body surged up my chest when the thin fabric gave way, and I managed a shallow gasp before he captured my parted lips in a searing kiss. My eyes boggled from the shock of his tongue dancing against mine, and I pulled my hands from his jeans to unfasten my own. The tinkling of buttons popping and zippers pulling rose in my ears above my racing heart, and his belt clattered loudly when he dropped his pants. Theo tasted so good, so manly, so musky, and saliva pooled under my tongue as he cupped the back of my head to intensify the kiss. His little grunts reverberated through me, and I palmed his cock as he hooked his right arm under my leg to hoist it up. My core ached fiercely, need throbbing through me as I pumped his cock, and my folds spread as my desperation leaked out of me. Ilya. Theo. Swiping the bulbous head of his cock against my entrance, I sputtered a gasp as Theo nibbled my bottom lip. The intensity of the moment swept me away, and he hissed against my chin as hot, harsh pants ripped from my chest. Thrusting his length along my slit, he groaned into my mouth, and the passion behind his kiss tore me apart. Poising his head, I clamped down before he even entered my channel, and he tangled his tongue around mine. Theo's thick cock forced all the way in until his balls slapped my ass and his hips dug into my thighs and I saw stars. Stretching my walls as they undulated wildly in euphoria strangely muffled, his cock pulsed noticeably and his groan clogged my throat. His fists slammed against the wall, his hard chest rippling against mine as he inhaled sharply and my eyes rolled back in their sockets. This wasn't pleasure. There was nothing but white behind my fluttering lids, and I gasped when Theo pulled back. The ridges and veins of his cock caressed my walls, and he sucked the stale air from my lungs. His t-shirt brushed my front ever so gently, but I was drowning in the rapture only intensified by the sting. Fuck. Theo's thunderous growl rattled my bones, and he hoisted my legs around his waist and grabbed my hips with bruising fingers. Tearing his mouth from mine, he leaned back and stuttered a gasp of his own, and I scratched at the wall in an effort to hold on to something. His gaze bored holes into my face as pleasure dropped my jaw, and he pushed my hips down and thrust up in a brutal snap. Tensing, as a tsunami pulled back my ability to feel anything but where he touched me, I hiccuped a breath as Theo's cock gyrated against my walls. The clap of skin on skin echoed in my ears, and my eyes nearly popped from their sockets. Jesus fucking Christ, Ilya. My eyelids snapped open at the choked call, and I ground my teeth hard at the pure ecstasy playing on Theo's face. This was so long in coming, so anticipated, and I clamped down on him as pleasure rolled up my spine. 
My knees clung to his sides, and he flopped his head back as he pulled back to show off the muscles straining in his neck. The thick ridge of his cock caressed my inner wall surprisingly gently as he pulled back, and Theo ducked his head to capture my lips in a hot kiss. Powerful hands grappled my ass cheeks, and I choked from the jolt of rapture when he stepped out of his jeans to walk to the sofa. I'm gonna die with you, Ilya. Sitting down, Theo buried his left hand in my hair as the other fell to the side uselessly, and I didn't resist when he tugged gently. His eyes were black with desire, and they didn't stray from mine as they shimmered with conviction. I'm gonna die with you. I wish I could hug you. His pupils blew at my murmur, and Theo finally tore his eyes from mine. He turned beet red, like a cartoon, from his shirt neckline up, and I stiffened as expectation gripped me. Leaning back a little, I flexed my fingers, but it didn't really help the fear that rose up to shadow my thoughts. Theo blinked hard, his face an unreadable mix of emotion, but it didn't really matter when his cock went flaccid inside me. His cheek twitched and icy prickles swept down my sternum as he covered his mouth with his right hand. Shivers rippled up his arms noticeably, and he went even redder in the face before his eyes met mine for the briefest of seconds. J just looking at it. He craned his neck in what my sluggish brain recognized as embarrassment, and my eyes widened in shock. Clearing his throat roughly, Theo rolled his jaw and jerked his shoulders, but he couldn't get rid of the red in his cheeks. You're so beautiful, Ilya. T do did Sputtering stupidly, my jaw dropped when Theo flung his arm over his face, and my brain short-circuited. He hoovered up a shallow breath, and my brows rose when he lowered his arm to meet my gaze with voraciousness. Do, do you need to stop? No, turn around. Theo grumbled illegibly, and I pursed my lips thinly as I carefully stood up. He pumped his cock, and affection blossomed in my chest before he grabbed my hip and sat me on his lap. Dance. Chapter 38 Theo Shit. Choke it down, Ilya. I groaned in absolute bliss as Ilya's throat flexed around my cock, and she grabbed my ass to force me deeper. The bulge in her throat was mesmerizing as she hung her head over the side of the sofa, and I growled when she kneaded her hands greedily. Pulling out of her mouth with a gasp, I relished her rasping breaths, and I pumped my cock as she slobbered my balls with hungry little sounds. Yes. Theo. Her hoarse call bristled through my curls, and Ilya slid down to lay flat on the sofa and spread her legs for me. My need for her raged in an inferno that would never die down, and I rounded the armrest to palm her creamy, sticky thighs. Everything I'd been yearning for in my woman came rushing to the surface, and her tight pussy undulated. Cum leaked down her ass cheeks, and I almost wanted to take a picture. It was such a gorgeous fucking sight. But, truth be told, it was the thing she'd tried to hide that turned me on more intensely than I thought was possible. Ilya was basically flat-chested from scar tissue. The only part of her breast she had were the sides, and with her slender profile, she could hide it. What was left of the once large, firm globes folded over her scar tissue a little, and with the bandages, no one could tell. Theo? Tearing my eyes off the huge rectangular blotch of red and purple and pale, I nestled between Ilya's open legs as she wrapped her trembling hands around my jaw. 
Her mossy green eyes glowed, almost blindingly bright, and my heart threatened to burst from behind my ribs as I ground against her slippery folds. Capturing her lips in a heated kiss, I groaned as the burn lines on her thighs ruffled my leg hairs. You ready for me, you fucking sexy bitch? Pressing my forehead against hers, I reached my good hand between us, and a sharp prickly ache shot down my right side. Cracking open my eyes, memories floated in my glazed, blurry vision. At the club, when I grabbed Ilya's chest, I knew now why it hurt so much. Just the tiniest bit of pressure, and the whole fucking mass of tissue shifted. That was agonizing. Agonizingly hot. Yes. Sinking into her glorious heat at her breathless affirmation, I shuddered violently as Ilya writhed in pleasure beneath me. She gasped, her slender brows furrowing, mouth open, but she was so damn quiet as her walls hugged my cock so nice. Grinding my hips against hers, I clenched my jaw as tingles assaulted my tailbone. Shit. Pulling back, I rammed Ilya's cervix with a snap of my hips, and she mewled softly as she threw her head to the side. Her nails scraped my stubble, and I set a hard pace as my balls tightened. She was such a good fucking lay, and I teetered on the edge as I thrust viciously. Ducking my head to smash my mouth on hers, I savored her taste, and she melted under me in unwavering submission. Her throat couldn't compare to her pussy, and pressure tightened my abdominal walls as her walls rippled and shivered around my cock. Fucking come, fuck, come on my cock, Ilya, T tight. I couldn't last, and I sputtered stupidly through clenched teeth as I sucked in a breath through my nose. Sweat dripped down my arms and neck, and I thrust hard with a grunt as my balls drew up. Hot ropes of cum spurted up my shaft, and spasms attacked my muscles as stars burst behind my shuttered lids. Oh, fuck. Yes. Every ounce of energy I had left kept me from just collapsing on Ilya, and I gripped the armrest with clammy, trembling hands. Despite dying down, the waves of euphoria, the almost religious fervor of finally obtaining a goddess of my very own, ripped up my sternum, and icy prickles followed. Soft palms caressed up my chest, and I somehow managed to open my eyes to find her smiling at me. A divine gift. You're so beautiful, Ilya. Her smile widened, the redness in her cheeks darkening as I ducked to kiss her with a low, pleased groan. How could you be anything less? You're probably the only one in the world that thinks having no nipples is sexy, Theo. Pushing myself heavily back on my knees, I grabbed her arms, gently this time, to pull Ilya with me. She seemed so easy now, and I sprawled on my back to let her settle against my chest. Her sweat-slickened skin stuck to mine, and I glanced down the ruined plane of her chest with a stirring ache in my abdomen. True, she didn't have any nipples, but that was fine. Her scars were sexier anyway. Cupping Ilya's face with my bad hand, I stroked her cheek with my thumb, and I reached to swipe the television controller from the coffee table. Her weight was comfortable against me, and I buried my nose in her hair to take deep breaths of her. Tomorrow is going to be different, Theo. The murmur twinkled with a promise in my ears and I grumbled lowly in response when my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth. I'm gonna try to be better. I know you can, Ilya. Nothing worth doing is effortless. Just as the television blinked on, a soft beep echoed from the hallway to the front door, and Ilya tensed against me. 
Tightening my grip on her face, I held her where she was, and her jaw worked under my palm. Carlisle appeared around the corner, hand covering his eyes like he didn't want to catch his sister naked or something, and I snorted roughly. Put a blanket on or something, please. Ilya was only too happy to oblige, grabbing the throw that hung over the back of the sofa, and I frowned against her crown. I have guests coming on Tuesday, and both of you need to be there. This affects them, too, so I want you to hear everything everyone has to say about this whole mess. I'm decent. Well, not really, considering the cum dripping down your hair. Carlyle still lowered his hand, seemingly unaffected by Ilya's red blotchy face and obvious roughed upness, and he nodded firmly. Who are they? My father and brother? Surprise rocketed through me, and Ilya shot up with a squeak before I could even process Carlyle's declaration. They'll be here in about 37 hours. You have that long to go through everything. You have another brother? Carlyle grunted, and I inhaled a calming breath as my mind whirred furiously, trying to keep up with the conversation. Well, that's just great, isn't it? I thought this was a personal problem. It's not? You should have told me that earlier. I... I wanted to see what you'd suggest before mentioning it. I know what you're thinking. Why would I need you if this is a huge company-wide thing? The answer to that is simple, Ilya. You're unaffiliated and can look at everything with fresh eyes. Also, you have experience in the dirt that I thought would be helpful. The skin on Ilya's back rippled, and I covered the spot with my palm to feel her lungs shudder in a huff. Not to mention, it's all happening to all three of us at the same time. We need someone outside the situation for clarity, but also because we can't trust our own people, apparently. You trust me, though? The accusation earned Ilya a scowl, and I rubbed the smooth, porous skin on her back with my right hand. I could feel the fine hairs that she didn't have on her chest, and the muscles rippled so regularly without the bumpy clumps of scar tissue above them. Don't make me regret it. Carlyle turned on his heel, and Ilya sat straight until the door lock clicked into place before flopping back against me. Her groan of frustration shot straight to my cock, and I reached over her thigh to circle her clit. She threw the blanket off her in a fury, her knees bending high and grumbling as hunger gnawed at my gut. How long do you think it'll take you to get through everything he piled up in your kitchen? Dripping with cum from the both of us, Ilya's hot cunt flexed as I eased inside, and she gasped softly. When she came, she didn't make any sounds. She barely made any sounds anyway, but I thought it was cute. Leisurely curling my fingers against her quivering walls, I thrust my hard cock between her ass cheeks. I want to keep going. A couple hours? At least five? Smirking broadly against her cheek, I sucked in a sharp breath when Ilya rolled her hips eagerly. Chapter 39 Ilya You need to get down here, now. Carlyle didn't respond, simply hanging up at the graveness that roughened my tone, and I sat back in the kitchen chair to sigh heavily as I set down my phone. Do you think I can talk to you about this shit? Who cares? What's up? Standing over the stove, lording over sizzling bacon and eggs, Theo twisted to frown at me under furrowed brows. Do you really have to call Carlyle down here? He always ruins the mood. For a second, I debated what to say and waved my sheath of papers around absently. I'd gone through about half of the boxes of translations and hard transcripts, and I nodded at Theo's second question. These are all wrong, Theo. How come no one saw this? The translations are off. There's no way these mistakes should happen. 
Scanning the page, I held my forehead on my palm, and Theo grunted softly as he turned back to the stove. I don't get what's going on. No one with a grasp of the language would make these mistakes. Unless they were deliberate. These aren't regional dialect mistakes. They're just mistake mistakes. Slight ones, but obvious. To me, at least. Well, you've never met these guys. Maybe they've got their quirks. Maybe, but no. That objection was reasonable to a point, but it didn't account for the blatant mistranslations of simple words in simple context. My mind churned, and I flipped over to the next page before a shrill beep echoed out from the front door. Carlyle was leaning over my shoulder within a second, and I didn't hear the door shut, but that didn't matter. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I licked my suddenly dry lips with a thick tongue before parting them. These conversations are all translated by different people, right? Reaching to grab the sheet of paper I'd been scribbling on as Carlyle nodded curtly, I held it up for him. I wrote down all the wrong translations, and this is what I found. What is it? To be honest, I didn't expect to find anything so incredibly brazen in these records, and I twisted as Carlyle rocked back on his heels. These are just mistakes made in translation. It happens all the time. Read every third, first, and second word in that order. Now this was the troubling part, and I held my breath as Carlyle's expression tightened with irritation. His eyes narrowed before snapping to mine, and my heart stuttered under the force of his glare. It's a code. The people doing your translations are working together through the transcripts. They all have access to it, right? From anywhere they're called to work? Carlyle's light eyes flashed almost reptilian as he reset them against the page, and he cupped his chin even as his foot tapped rapidly. After I started cataloging the mistranslations, it became obvious that the people doing the translating were trying to do some clandestine bullshit. Who mispronounces the word money in any language? Especially considering that they were working for Carlyle's family. They had to be good. This is all you've found so far. I nodded mutely, and he tapped his cheek as he turned the paper over, his eyes bouncing from word to word in rhythm. How many transcripts have you gone through? A little less than half, but I have a feeling that your father's and brother's records contain a majority of the conversations. There's definitely not enough here, and you speak Spanish fluently, which cuts out your need for a translator for most of your business. Even though it had been months, I had no knowledge of what that business actually was, although I assumed it was illegal. Nodding with a troubled crease between his brow, Carlyle turned the paper to the front to read it again. I suppose it doesn't matter what they say. This is enough to do something about the translators that are doing this. It is. I didn't expect this. It's actually pretty sophisticated. Now... Carlyle palmed my crown thoughtfully, and heat crept up my neck when he started stroking my hair. His hand was warm and hard, and I watched him stare into space for a long moment before speaking up again. What to do? I hadn't planned on you figuring this problem out so quickly, Ilya. Pride thickened his tone, and my face flamed as Carlyle's gaze flickered to mine ever so briefly. Despite what he'd done to Matteo, I found it hard to believe he had such a soft spot for me. The genuinity in his eyes said differently, though, and I blushed fiercely as my scarred chest tightened. Wait a minute. Turning to Theo, momentarily forgotten by the stove, my face flamed at the amusement that glimmered in his dark orbs as they trained on me. What do you mean, what to do? Isn't it obvious? Fucking shoot them and get it over with. That's boring. Carlyle scratched my scalp even as he shot down the idea, and Theo grimaced darkly. I have something much, much more satisfying in mind although I'm sure you'll enjoy it just as much, Theo. Speaking of satisfying, have either of you heard the maids talking about Matteo today? 
He's all they ever talk about since word got around that your father's coming. They're placing bets about what'll happen. Speaking up as Theo busied himself flipping the bacon, I scrunched up my face in distaste as Carlyle's fingers flexed against my crown. I kind of feel bad for him, but... Don't. He's been locked in there for weeks because of his own inadequacy, as usual. Taking his hand off my head, Carlyle pulled a chair out and twirled it around to straddle the back with a heavy sigh. Ilya, you'll need to finish this another time. As you said, the rest doesn't matter. This is more than enough to implicate, which is more than enough for me. I'll inform my father and brother about sending me their records, but it'll be a while before we can set something up to deal with this. So, for now, I have another job for you. I was going to wait, but seeing as you're truly exceptional, you lay it on thick for a dude who thinks I'm disgusting. My cheekiness earned me a smirk, but it didn't last before Carlyle shook his head. What's the job? Technically, it's a job for you both. Gesturing to Theo, his eyes didn't leave me, and my brows rose in surprise. I've told you why you're here. You're going to infiltrate a party hosted by the Italian mafia and drug someone for me. Infiltrate? Nodding firmly, Carlyle gripped the low back of the chair to lean away from it, and I gulped down the dense lump that formed in my throat. I mean, okay, what does that entail exactly? I'll give you the details after my dad and Iran leave. It's not for another few weeks, but it'll probably happen before we can set up the translators. You said it before, we can't arouse suspicion. The next planned function between us all that requires all the translators is around Christmas. I thought you'd appreciate a heads up. Gnawing on my inner cheek, I only nodded at that, and Carlyle tapped the flat top rung of the chair. I could see the cogs working in his eyes, and he cocked his head back a little. Make yourselves presentable. We'll talk more during lunch. Right-o. Tapping two fingers to my temple, I couldn't help but smile when Carlyle chuckled before standing up and pushing the chair back in. What should I wear? Whatever makes you comfortable. Leaving me with that. Carlyle sauntered out of the kitchen and then my apartment, and I reached to ruffle my hair as my mind raced. To me, it was so easy to spot. Such a simple concept to use a code in plain sight. No one double-checked this stuff but the translators themselves, so no one faulted someone for making an occasional mistake, days and weeks apart, especially if they didn't know it was a mistake. I wonder if anyone caught on outside of this. Throwing my question out there, I grabbed a short stack to flip through it, and Theo grunted from over the stove. These translators are pretty much cycled around depending on where they're needed, so they have conversations with the same people. Do you think any of them noticed the slip-ups? How would I know? I only speak English. My lips twitched up at that, and Theo shook his head before gesturing to me from over his shoulder. Anyway, it doesn't really matter to me. All I'm good for is being a meat shield, and I'm okay with that. Watching the muscles roping just under his tanned skin play along his back, I propped my cheek on my fist on the table. I hadn't gotten a chance to ask whether or not Theo had been threatened by Carlyle, but I got the sense that he hadn't, which meant he came and apologized on his own. I wished I could say the same. But Theo would never have to know that it wasn't my choice to take off my bandages. Everything turned out fine. I was fine. And I had the sneaking suspicion that things would only get better from here, regardless of how crazy work would get. We, us, Theo and I, we would be good together. Chapter 40 Ilya Adjusting my curled hair over my shoulders, I nodded at my reflection, and dull brown eyes gazed back at me. Feminine pride bubbled up in my chest at how different I'd managed to make myself look now that I had proper products. Lightening my hair had been easy, and I flexed my toes against the carpet as I stood up with a happy huff. 
Do you want help with your bandages? Pursing my lips thinly at the offer, I pulled open a drawer that contained nothing but rows and rows of medical-grade bandages. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, so... Arching a brow quizzically, Theo leaned back on the lounge leisurely. He didn't seem offended, and I kicked the dresser drawer shut as I scratched my head thoughtfully. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. I didn't bother elaborating as I held the end of the roll up to my hip and my brows furrowed in concentration. I hate watching this. My heart throbbed at his grumble, and I turned to Theo as the most unhappy grimace stained his expression. The scar ripping down the side of his face flushed an angry red, and his lips thinned when I sat the bindings down next to him. Bracing my foot low against his chest, goosebumps swept up my leg at his hard, steady heartbeat pulsing through me. Blood drummed in my ears as he caressed up my calf, his left hand creeping unabashed over my inner thigh. Dark eyes met mine, and my mouth dried with the undeniable urge to smash my lips on his. I didn't fight it. Couldn't fight it. Straddling his waist, my mind went blank as Theo stuck his hand between us, and I grabbed his face to kiss him hungrily. Now that I had him, I couldn't stop, and his groan clogged my throat when he forced his tongue between my teeth. Tangling his tongue with mine sweetly, his taste tingled along my buds, and I smiled into the kiss as he worked a finger against my clit leisurely. When we get back... I'm gonna fuck you again. The murmur sent delicious shivers down my spine, and I pulled back to gnaw on my bottom lip. I wanted to suck Theo's cock. The urge curdled in my gut almost to the point of pain. I wanted to sit on his face and feel his beard burning my thighs. I wanted to make up for the past two months in just one night. We'll be okay, Theo. Smooth, scarred skin brushed my cheek at my mumble, and Theo didn't protest when I stood on my feet. Clenching and releasing my fists by my side as need sloshed in my chest, my knees wobbled dangerously, and hot, short breaths ravaged my lungs. The weight makes it better. I'm not so sure it can get better. I definitely wasn't expecting him to say that, and my brows rose as he flopped his head back to let out a tight huff. Hurry up and get dressed. Do you remember in California? Grabbing the bandages, my heart refused to calm down, and I licked my dry lips heavily as they tingled with need. You told me once that you wished your fingers weren't gone so you could appreciate my ass fully. Theo barked a laugh and nodded as I started my bandages at my hip again, and a fond smile stretched my lips. Things seemed so simple back then. He was kind of creepy and awkward, and I wrestled so much with it. Deep down, maybe, I acknowledged that that comment was what made me even more confused. Because he wasn't just a creep foisted on me by Sylvie's bad decisions, that was when I realized, man... I was in trouble. I remember. Honestly, Ilya, it's hard to remember shit before I met you. It just seems like there was nothing there. Being with Mateo was basically a dull, endless routine of strip clubs and trips that were all a blur. And before that, obviously, I mean, I got blown up by a tire. Oh my god. I couldn't friggin' handle it anymore, and my hands trembled as Theo continued to rant, stuck in his own head. Wrapping as fast as I could without risking having to redo it, I blinked hard as saliva pooled in my mouth. I know I said this before, but all I wanted to do was fuck your brains out since the first time I saw you at the club. After a while, I realized, you know, your chest and that shit... Screwing you with the bandages on was a disservice. I didn't want to be another name on a list of bad experiences. If I was gonna fuck you, I had to do it properly. It really... I guess I got more interested in that than trying to make you happy or feel accepted. 
That's the thing that sucked the most these past two months, isn't it, Dilia? I mean, you're a pain in the ass, but I only made it worse by demanding something you didn't want to give me. That's fucked up. After you nearly killed me on the ride home, I realized what the fuck's the point of trying to set up everything the way I think it should be. It's not like I'm fucking myself, you know? Things aren't supposed to work like that. I'd reached just under what little of my breasts were left when Theo sighed heavily, pausing to rub his face roughly. My job was shoddy, but I didn't much care because a dress would be going over it anyway. I wish we both figured that shit out weeks ago. The interruptions are gonna fucking kill me. To be honest, arching slightly as pristine white sheets rumpled my skin together, I cleared my throat of its hoarseness as a cold sweat broke out on my back. I have too much shit for it all to be on you, Theo. I know. I'm just saying that if I was gonna come in your mouth, what's the point of forcing you to take your bandages off? That's all. My gaze snapped up at that, and Theo propped his elbows on his knees to glare at the ground without noticing how hot and bothered I was. Or maybe... He did notice, but he just chose to ignore it in favor of having such a grave conversation. I thought it wasn't as big a deal as it was. I have scars too, right? So, obviously, if I can handle it, so can you. That's wrong. I'm sorry, Ilya. God! Blinking viciously against the fierce sting in my eyes, my squawk rasped my throat, and I whipped around before Theo saw me ruining my makeup. Forcing a breath through my nose and past the dense lump in my throat, I craned my neck and shivered violently. The strain of his words settled heavily on my shoulders, and I ground my teeth as my face grew hot. Theo's rustling jeans sounded overly loud in my ears, and I tensed when he wrapped his arms around me to hold my hands. Taking the bandages in his right hand, he pressed his cheek against my crown, and shivers strafed my spine. Shit. Shit. Theo! I was going to destroy what I'd spent the past half hour perfecting, and he grumbled deeply against my back. The quake eased some of the tension clinging to my ribs, and I sucked in a shaky breath before Theo tugged my bandage taut. He basically confessed his love for me, his regret at the very least, and I knew that it very well may be the closest he ever got to actually saying the words. What the fuck? What the fuck? Sniffling hard as Theo worked on my bandages, I tilted my head back in a futile attempt to breathe. He kept his mouth shut, his hands steady, his lips thin against my crown, and I prayed that my makeup wasn't smudged, because then I'd have to start over, and if I had to start over, I was gonna... Oof. The awkwardness in the room went from one to a hundred so fast it choked me, and I tensed as my head snapped to the door. Carlyle clearly knew what he'd interrupted even as he held up his hands in mock surrender, fake, plastic guilt stretching his smirk. I'll wait in the living room, I guess. My scars weren't totally covered yet, and I frowned when Carlyle turned out of the doorway to clamp his hand over his mouth tightly. Before he'd even disappeared beyond the frame, his entire face twisted with disgust, and all my warm, tingly feelings drained away. At least I don't make you sick with disgust. Rolling the bundle up my back and over my shoulder, Theo grunted lowly as I managed a trembling sigh. I guess it really doesn't matter for other people. Chapter 41 Theo I can't fucking take it. Ilya and I had such a good, good moment, and fucking Carlyle had to ruin it. The gun holstered against my hip burned through my jeans, and I wanted to fucking vomit as rage boiled my insides. Glaring at him even as two cars pulled through into the quad that served as a parking lot, I stuffed my fists into my jeans. Not that it helped at all. 
I wonder what they're like. Carlisle and Mateo are so different. Ilya's mumble barely breathed the blood drumming in my ears, and I grunted lowly. My eyelid twitched with how fucking hard I glared at him, and I knew he could feel it, that dick. Theo, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna fucking beat him until he shits himself. At least Carlisle had the decency to look ashamed of himself in Ilya's apartment. He didn't apologize, of course, but that didn't matter. He fucking knew Ilya wasn't dressed, and he still chose to interrupt and see that shit. Rubbing my arm, she didn't say anything more when the cars parked in front of us, and I hoovered up a massive breath in an attempt to calm myself. I sincerely hoped that Carlisle would walk in on me blowing Ilya's back out so he could see the way a real man treats a woman with a little physical baggage. The door behind us cracked open, and I twisted to lay eyes on Matteo for the first time in months. He wore a nice suit, but he looked older, more haggard, and wouldn't meet my gaze as he slunk past. Obviously, he had a hard time wrestling with the reality of the situation, but at least he didn't come outside in a stained shirt and reeking of alcohol. Oh, the stories the maids told when they thought no one was listening. Normally, they came around twice a week to tidy up, but they had to make daily trips to Mateo's apartment because he was such a fucking slob. I wasn't sure how anyone could make a mess like that in just 24 hours, but apparently, he did. But Mateo crawling out of his hole also meant that his father and older brother coming here wasn't something to take lightly. Running his hand through his hair, he stood next to Carlisle but a good distance away, and I rolled my shoulders to get rid of the tension zinging through me. A car door popped open, and I cleared my throat roughly of the expectation that clogged it. Truth be told, I expected a slender tall guy with a few good wrinkles and a cigar hanging from his mouth. Carlisle and Mateo's father was tall, true. He was slender, sure. But the huge bright smile that showed off his strong features belayed the menacing attitude I was positive he owned. His bald head shimmered in the sun, and his super expensive suit and shoes were wrinkle-free and polished to perfection. He even wore a funny tie with purple polka dots on it, and I scanned him slowly through narrowed eyes. My boy. Ignoring Mateo completely, the older man pulled Carlisle into a hug as his deep baritone crawled up the brick walls around us. Clapping Carlisle on the back, he held him by the shoulders at arm's length to grin with pride. I see you're doing well. Spain's been good to you, Dad. The older man nodded, and my brows furrowed when he turned his full attention to Mateo. Just like with Carlisle, they hugged, but there was nothing but concern etched into that sun-baked face when they parted. How are you, Mateo? You've had it hard, kid. Mateo struggled not to cry in the face of his father's worry, which, I guess, was more telling than any words. Cupping Mateo's jaw, his dad stroked his cheeks, and I shared a curious glance with Ilya. We'll talk about it later, okay? You'll get through this. It'll be hard, but I know you can overcome anything. Yeah. Only offering that hoarse reply, Mateo nodded curtly, and I almost felt like I was watching something I shouldn't. Tearing my eyes off them, I focused instead on the person who stepped out of the SUV after him and rocked back on my heels. That must be Oran. The dude was a textbook nerd upon first glance, with sleek glasses, no jacket, but he wore suspenders. However, tattoos sleeved up his arms and disappeared under his rolled shirt, the plain white button down thick enough to hide the ink. Oran shook hands with Carlisle but refused to look at Mateo, and dark brown eyes flickered around the courtyard. I see nothing about this place has changed. It still looks like a run-down college housing building. Disdain dribbled thickly from Oran's mouth, and Carlisle shot his little brother a snooty look. 
For a moment, they glared at each other, but Aran eventually cracked a smirk that barely tilted his lips before the tension snapped. It's good to see you, Carlisle. How's life across the pond? Oran shrugged his thin shoulders at the probe, and Carlyle huffed a bare laugh. Boring. I'm moving back. I can't stand that fucking country anymore. Keen eyes drifted my way, and Oran lifted his nose as he scanned me, his gaze pausing at the gun on my hip. I see you've got a new guy. What happened to the last one? He didn't do his job, so I replaced him. Oran grunted lowly at that, and his eyes turned to Ilya before he decided she wasn't worth his time. Let's head inside so we can discuss this issue we've got. Right. The father, whose name I didn't know, popped up between his two elder sons, and my brows furrowed as confusion clung to my ribs. Let's head inside so we can eat. It's been so long since we've gotten together. I wish your mother was here to see you all get along. Tolerating each other is more what we're doing, Dad. Carlyle gestured to me, and my gaze ping-ponged between the three of them before I realized neither of them brought bodyguards either. This is Theo. Wonderful. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up when the old man strode the short distance to me, and I automatically pulled my right hand out of my pocket. He grabbed me with a force I wasn't expecting, and I clenched my jaw against the pain that rippled noticeably up my arm. His grin widened, this time accompanied with a malicious glint in his eye, and my pupils narrowed into fine points. I'm George. You're a sociopath is what you are. This whole fucking family was fucked up, which put them all in a perfect position to lord over us commoners. George dropped his act for the briefest second, a dry laugh bursting from his throat before he shook his head. You've got jokes. I like that. He squeezed my hand, hard, and my lips thinned as he pulled back to release my palm. My arm cramped visibly, but I beat down the pain as shrewd eyes blackened with age scanned me from top to bottom. I think you're a good fit for my son. Anyway, enough with the trivialities. Let's head in and eat. I'm starving. I went and grabbed the door, and George hung back as his sons filed past me. When it was his turn, he shot me the most scathing dead-eye glare possible, and my lip curled in a snarl in return. So, the old man's got secrets. Of course he did. The act was convincing, and I wondered if his kids knew he couldn't feel anything for them. Stay away from him, Ilya. Leaning down to mumble in her ear as she passed, I grabbed her forearm to squeeze insistently, and Ilya nodded with a knowing look. Muted concern shimmered beneath her fake brown lenses, and I frowned darkly. He's way more fucked up than the others. Yeah. Releasing her soft skin, I held my own arm and flexed my fingers and thumb as my skin spasmed up toward my elbow. Are you okay? I'm fine. Nodding hesitantly, Ilya started off down the hallway, and I inhaled deeply to hold my breath. Exhaling slowly, I straightened my shoulders and stretched my stiff fingers a few more times on my way behind her. Whatever was about to happen, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Chapter 42 Ilya I nibbled at the edges of my plate, too busy watching the table out of my peripheral vision. The tension was so subtle, but I could cut it with a dull knife. I could taste the lies every time I opened my mouth, and, not for the first time, I wondered what the hell I'd gotten forced into. These men were brothers, but they fucking despised each other. Or they were really good actors. Either way, it was almost impossible to breathe under all the testosterone in the air. So... What are we doing about this issue, Carlyle? 
Glancing up from the edge of the table for the first time in almost half an hour, I tried not to stare too hard at Oran. He was clearly the kind of guy that liked to ride a motorcycle, but only drinks expensive champagne off a pair of natural tits. He leaned back gracefully, propping his lean arm behind his head, and if I looked close enough, I could see his father in his face. Obviously, the suspicion is enough. Something clearly happened to make these idiots think they could get away with this. If they're idiots for trying, what are we for being fooled for so long? The savage question earned a gruff snort, and Carlyle set his silverware down with a soft tink as his father sighed. It's a smart plan, Oran, and you shouldn't underestimate that just because it makes you look bad. Personally attacking someone because they got the better of you is distasteful. I won't know how long it's been going on until I have your files, but it's safe to say it's been a while. I only just noticed the discrepancies a few months ago, which is telling in itself. It doesn't really matter why, either. Now that we know without a doubt, the question is, how are we going to deal with it? Carlyle spoke with authority, and he clasped his hands on the table to nod to himself. Obviously, I'm going to kill them. The trick here is to avoid them doing it somehow while not raising suspicion. We can't just drop them all, but we clearly can't keep them involved in our business. Obviously. Jutting his chin out, Oran glared at his brother like Carlyle was an idiot himself. Nothing he said hadn't already crossed all minds in the room. Frowning slightly under furrowed brows, I stabbed a piece of steamed broccoli in the charged silence. Get to the point, Carlyle. We're not set to require all of them in one place until Christmas. This is the obvious route to go, but I've got a better idea. This was the first time I'd heard of this better idea, and Carlyle glanced warily at me. I understand that we're not patient men. I want to get them together to interview a new translator for me. The fine hairs on my neck and back stood up as Carlyle put me on the spot, and I pursed my lips thinly against my frown. His look was barely a second, but all attention was suddenly on me anyway. Setting down my fork, I straightened my shoulders and made a point to chew him out later. Her? A sudden sense of caution swept through in a powerful wave, and I clenched my jaw hard at the disgust in Oran's tone. Why would you trust? Shut up, Oran. Carlyle was the boss here, and Oran clamped his mouth shut as ordered even though he didn't look happy about it. Drop the Almighty God Act. Just because you're pissed, you're not the smartest person on earth, and it doesn't give you the right to be a dick. I brought her on not because I trust her, but because I believe she can get the job done. She's a means to an end. When this is over, I'll decide how much I trust her. It's surprising what you can find in the gutter, isn't it? Speaking up from directly across from me, George stared with a gaze that reminded me of dead fish eyes. Suppressing the shiver that burrowed between my shoulder blades, I hid my hands under the table, but I knew he'd seen the tremor that raked them. It's definitely a much speedier and stable plan than waiting for Christmas. With all those people around, it'd be a difficult thing to execute. I don't understand why you insisted we come to this shit stain when you have it all figured out, Carly. I held my breath as Carlyle became physically agitated at his brother's slight, but I couldn't take my eyes off George's. Something in there seemed almost like familiarity as if he knew me, and I didn't look away until he did when Carlyle stood up. Rounding the head of the table, he strode, confident and in charge, to Oran, and I jumped with a squeak of shock when he unceremoniously shoved his brother right out of his chair. Carlyle stepped his heel on Oran's cheek, pinning him down, and Oran didn't try to fight it. Watching it was like watching animals scuffle for dominance, and Carlyle only lifted his Italian leather shoe when Oran went limp on the floor. Don't insult me in my own home. I won't warn you again. 
and you know what happens when I get pissed off. Flapping his jacket to make his point, Carlyle walked around the rectangular table to stand behind my chair. My lungs burned with stale air, but I didn't dare inhale or even blink as he set his hands on the back rung. I insisted you both come here because this was a conversation we needed to have in person. Whether or not you approve, I'm doing what I think is best. I won't let five people call into question everything we've done. This will get out, that's certain. What we can't let happen is avoiding the ripple effects. Very well said, Carlyle. We indeed need to set an example. The syndicate will be gripped in upheaval if we don't deal with this the right way. The syndicate? No one answered my silent question, and Oran sat up to adjust his glasses with his head hung low out of the corner of my eye. Our tendrils spread far. There's no telling what the bugs at the bottom would try if they were confident enough. George's words rang through the dining room, and Carlyle nodded above my head before leaving my chair to take up his own. Finally, I managed a shallow breath, and he cleared his throat roughly before speaking up. So, although I have this planned, my question is this. I want to know what you think is the best way to deal with them. From what I've been able to gather just on my end, there's about seven million in unaccounted money that's been stolen. I want to know what you think is worth all that. Shouldn't we leave that to the experts? My only suggestion is that whatever we do, we live stream it. Goosebumps washed my arms at that flippant consideration, and Carlyle nodded firmly at his dad. Of course, you already know that, Carlyle. I do. Since this affects all of us, I wanted your opinions anyway. The notion that Carlyle was planning something incredible that he didn't want anyone to know about hit me right in the gut. This was all a distraction from... from something. Frowning under brows furrowed in confusion, I turned my stare back to the edge of the table and fiddled with the cloth that lapped over to brush my lap. What about you, Matteo? You've been awfully quiet. What do you think about this whole ordeal? The moment slid by on pins and needles as Matteo sunk into his seat and grumbled nonsensically, and I couldn't help the disgust that coated my tongue. Come now, surely you have something to say on the matter. I don't, no. He sounded so much gruffer than those times I'd heard him speak, and I actually felt a little bad for Matteo. He'd been through a lot, whether it was his own making or not, and his dad smiled sympathetically at him. I don't really care about it at all. Good of you to have the option. Oran's snark was back in full force, and Matteo only slipped deeper down into his seat. Regardless, your opinion doesn't matter anyway. Talk about family drama. Man. Chapter 43 Ilya Why did you say that Christmas was the best option when you knew it wasn't? Pointing an accusatory finger at Carlyle, I scowled darkly when he shrugged carelessly. You know, trust goes both ways. Just because you're my boss or whatever doesn't give you the right to manipulate me to fuck with your family. The fact that you figured it out and Aran didn't is telling. We were outside, a cigarette muffling Carlyle's words, and he sparked his lighter with disdain dragging down the corners of his mouth. He thinks he's so fucking smart. All he does is complain. I swear, he probably doesn't even need those glasses. Carlyle? Holding up a hand to silence me, he took a deep drag of his smoke, and I exhaled hotly through my nose. Annoyance roiled through me, and he blew smoke above my head before leaning against the wall to cross his ankles. Do you think my father doesn't know who you are? The question made me pause, and his frown deepened. Nothing happens without him knowing. I may run things here in the States, but he runs everything. He has Mateo fooled, 
but Iran and I both know better. Why do you think Iran's under our father's wing? He's trying to wrest control from me. I told you Christmas was better because the only thing that doesn't fool my father is a genuine reaction. There's no point in trying to lie to him. So, so, what? This is some internal power play? Why am I always getting sucked into shit that has nothing to do with me? Frustration thickened my tone, and I ran my hand through my hair roughly as Carlyle's cheek twitched. Translator? Fine. Drugging someone, I can probably do that. But this is dangerous, Carlyle, and I... Ilya, extending his arm to offer me his smoke like some sort of fucked-up olive branch, Carlyle's eyes narrowed on me until I took it. Anxiety gnawed deep in my gut, and I took a huge drag in an attempt to snuff it out. Relax, you're not some key part. Don't mistake your involvement in my scheme to outwit my brother with taking action. You did exactly what I needed you to do. Make your brother look like a dickhead so you could swoop in and save the situation? Smoke bubbled from my nose and mouth as understanding pushed it from my lungs, and Carlyle nodded firmly. There's one thing I will never let happen, Ilya, and that's giving control of something so powerful to someone like Oran. I know you noticed. He's got no sense of humility, and everyone is beneath him. Those that can't do, judge. I nodded dumbly, and Carlyle reached to caress my cheek with a warmth in his eyes before sneaking the cigarette from my mouth. I've been playing this game a long time, and you're right, trust isn't a one-way street. It has to be built, and building it means taking risks. In this case, it was small. It was really obvious. Are you sure he didn't notice you set it all up? I'm sure he did, but that's the beauty of it. It was so obvious, why didn't Oran notice and back down? My eyes widened in realization, and Carlyle smirked a little. It wasn't about how sneaky I was. It was about how obliviously stupid Oran can be. If he could, he'd shoot anyone that did anything he didn't like, and that list is very long. Not to mention, if Aran did know I was setting him up, he deliberately chose to push himself into a corner, which is arguably worse. He'd save his self-dignity, make everyone around him an enemy, rather than accept the facts. I'm always so appreciative that you were born first. Stepping out from behind the door, George smiled as I tensed, but Carlyle didn't seem all that surprised, and if he was, he hid it well. This fucking family, ugh. George scanned me from top to bottom, and I stood up a little straighter. Aren't you just the cutest thing, just like my daughter, God bless her soul? My brows rose in surprise. That was the first thing Carlyle said to me, too. Uh, thanks? I wish I could have met her. He waved a long, gnarled hand that didn't show any signs of arthritis at my comment, stepping out into the shadows cast from the tall buildings. No, she was pretty, but truly stupid. My jaw almost unhinged at that, and Carlyle chuckled fondly as his dad's smile widened. From what my son has shared with me, you're not the same. My condolences about your family. I wanted to reach out, but you disappeared. You knew my parents? George nodded, and my eyes flew to Carlyle as his expression turned grave and stony. You knew he knew me? Your mother was the only person to ever connect me to anything. Nerves dried my tongue even as it sneaked to swipe my lips, and I crossed my arms over my chest. As if seeing where my mind was going, George shook his head, a sad, almost plastic expression fixed on his face. I was upset to hear she'd passed. I offered her a job if being a policewoman ever fell through. She declined, of course. I hate wasting talent like that. I... I appreciate it? Awkwardness surged through me because I believed him, even though I knew better. 
He might be reciting from a book, but that last bit. Shaking my head, I turned to Carlyle, and he exhaled smoke out of his nose under furrowed brows. What now? Now I wait to see what Oran will do. The problem with seeing everyone is below you is that you consider them to be inconsequential. I'm sure he'll try something. I nearly choked on my own spit, and my face grew hot while Carlyle sucked on the butt of his cigarette leisurely. I don't allow violence in my home. You're perfectly safe, Ilya. The fact that I have to be reassured about my safety? I swear to God, Carlyle, I want it in writing that if anything happens to me, I get to stab you in the arm or something. Pushing himself off the wall, Carlyle loomed over me, but I stood my ground. I didn't even have to crane my neck to glare at him in the eye. Taking the cigarette from between his lips, he held it out to me again, and my eyes narrowed before I reached to take it. Fine. If anything happens to you, you can stab me in the arm. Right here. Tapping his bicep over his shirt, all seriousness glittered in his eyes, and Carlyle ran his hand roughly through his hair before stepping back. Regardless, this is a waiting game now. Even if Oran manages to surprise me, we need to set up your interview, and Mateo is a problem for me. I have too much going on to babysit him any longer. He's my boy, Carlyle. I'll take care of him. For a second, George's mask disappeared, and he developed the most monotone, flat expression imaginable. It's about time he grew up and took responsibility for his actions. I don't think he's quite got the message yet. Scary. He really is a sociopath. We'll talk about that later. I've already sent out the email. We're just waiting for confirmation. The interview will happen on Saturday. That's more than enough time to set up the live feed and make arrangements. Until then, Ilya, I want you to keep going through my files to find out what you can. The rest are being sent over as we speak. I can keep them digital if you find that easier. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, I doubt there's much there since you don't use interpreters as much as your father and brother. Nodding to myself, my mind whirred in that direction as memories of all those words flashed in my mind's eye. Do these guys know I have all the transcripts? Probably. Why? What if they ask about it? Amusement drenched Carlyle's features, and even George laughed at me as embarrassment sloshed against my ribs. What? If they know I figured out what they're doing, I... Ilya... Plopping his warm palm on my crown, Carlyle smiled a genuine smile, and heat suffused my cheeks as I held my breath. You really are the cutest. You're not being interviewed. When those five get here, I'm going to torture and execute them on a live stream. You probably won't even know they're here. Oh. Carlyle's scarier than his dad. It's official. Carlyle truly didn't care about anyone. He wasn't mentally ill. He just had no regard for human life unless it suited him somehow. Jesus Christ. Chapter 44 Ilya The door to my apartment swung open like a beautiful black hole that wanted to suck me in, and I wanted to let it. My feet hurt? My brain hurt. The cuticles of my fingernails hurt. Damn it. Shuffling heavily down the short hallway to the living room, I flicked on the light sluggishly, and I had half a mind to throw myself on the sofa. Finally, a shrill shriek burst from my throat, and I held my arms to my chest to cup my face as I whipped around. My heart threatened to climb out of my throat, and Aran lifted himself from my kitchen chair that he'd been sitting in, in the dark, for God only knew how long. I was thinking you'd never get here. This is my place. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. 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 Gulping hard, I backed up when Oran stepped across the threshold to the living room. Wh what do you want? I'm not having sex with you. You wouldn't have a choice if that was what I wanted. 
The hairs on the back of my neck bristled, my goosebumps intensifying as Aran stalked toward me like a cat watching a bird. That's not why I'm here. That was an awful answer if you wanted my cooperation. His dark eyes flashed behind his glasses, and I crossed my arms over my chest despite the fierce pull on my skin. Get out. I don't want anything to do with you. You haven't even heard my proposal. You just said you'd rape me without even thinking twice. My snipe sunk deep into the pit of my stomach, and Aran arched a brow in surprise. Fine. What is it so you can leave and I can lock all the locks behind you? I know you're new here. Do you even know what it is exactly you're getting into? Oran fucking sat on the low wall separating the kitchen and living room, clasping his hands between his knees, and his surprise faded into seriousness. A barrage of emotions rushed between my lungs, and I pursed my lips thinly in an effort to regulate my breath. You do know this is a criminal organization spanning nationality and all borders. You looked uncomfortable at lunch. I get the sense you're not used to violence or discomfort. What's that supposed to mean? Watching him now, so close that I could see the flecks of gray in his eyes, Oran didn't seem nearly as dumb as Carlyle believed. Why are you asking me that? Doesn't it upset you that you've been dragged into this through events out of your control? What the fuck is he getting at? Taking off his glasses, Oran stuck them into his shirt pocket, and I could clearly see that he was just as smart as he thought he was. I'm not going to lie. You've had it rough. Do the benefits outweigh the risks for you? What benefits do you think I'm weighing against? Oran knew who I was, just like his dad and Carlyle. Unless... My brows rose, and he frowned as something dark flashed in his eyes. You didn't do any research on me, did you? That's why you're here. Carlyle somehow stopped you from being able to, and you're trying too hard to read me. Everything about Oran was a lie. And it was hilarious. I laughed an almost manacle cackle, and tears sprang to my eyes as I sat back on the armrest of the sofa. Huge, heaving bubbles of mirth burst inside my ribcage, and Oran's glare bounced off my chin when I threw my head back. My chest tightened, and I curled my shoulders in an attempt to ease the throbbing just under my skin. My laughter echoed through my apartment, and I covered my face after a moment with clammy palms. Oh, oh, oh my God, oh shit. Sputtering wildly, I cracked open a stinging eye only to bluster a giggle through helplessly thin lips, and Aran started turning red in the face. Unable to contain how idiotically comical this was, I squeezed my achy cheeks together, but it didn't stop my laughter. Oh, I, I can't breathe. My lungs burned, everything burned, and I wiped my tears off my face before noticing that Aran had physically relaxed as he sat, tapping his heels together. The sight of him smiling faintly quenched my chortling, and he slid to his feet to saunter toward me. You remind me a lot of my sister. Bracing his arms on either side of me, his eyes glimmered brightly with affection as he came so close his nose brushed mine. Sucking in a sharp breath, my eyes widened as the fine hairs on my face bristled at his soft expression. Do I seem stupid to you, Ilya? Or is it all an act? Am I just a really, really good liar? Or do I have the situational awareness of a rancid lemon? I... My voice faltered when Aran's eyes narrowed into slits on mine, and my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth. No matter what it is, I don't want anything to do with it. It's the same thing I told Carlyle. I'm staying out of whatever's going on between you two. I hope you do, or you'll end up just like her. Dead. However bad you've had it, Ilya, it's nothing compared to what'll happen if you get caught in the middle of dear big brother and I. Shivering at the threat that rolled down my sternum, I clenched my jaw as Aran reached to tuck my hair behind my ear. You shouldn't have come here. I haven't regretted it so far, and just because you're confusing won't make me. 
Thanking God that my voice didn't waver, I frowned as I lifted my hand between our faces, and Aran leaned back with a slight, knowing, infuriating smirk. Get out. With an attitude like that, not even my father will dare piss you off. Aran turned up his nose at me, his smirk widening, and my eyelid twitched in irritation. Even if he was a mystery, that fucking haughtiness was all too real. Good night, Ilya. Whatever. He didn't stop retreating from my apartment at my grumble, and I only breathed a shaky breath when the lock clicked damningly on the doorframe. Slumping hard, my brain churned furiously as the past thirty-five seconds or so flashed behind my lids when they shuddered tight. A sociopath. A heartless bastard. An expert liar. This is so frustrating. True to my word, though, I didn't regret coming here even if the choice had been more or less made for me. The door beeped shrilly, and the reason I was here, dealing with all this shit, came waltzing in to cast me a curious dark glance. I thought you'd be asleep by now. Theo scanned me critically, and I inhaled through my nose as my heart stabilized against my ribs. What happened? Today sucked. I wasn't sure what to tell Theo, or what he would feel comfortable keeping from Carlisle, and he grunted lowly as I dodged the question. I just... I don't know what I was expecting, but everything is so confusing and dramatic, and I feel like I'm watching a bad soap opera. If you don't like it here, I'll tell Carlisle to fuck off and we can leave. It's fine here, but that's because I know not to let the internal politics screw with my head. The offer knocked the air from my lungs, and Theo stalked toward me to sweep me off the side of the sofa. We'll sleep on it. I'm gonna wait and see how this week plays out before I think up any real thoughts. Winding my arms around Theo's neck, I rested my cheek on his shoulder as he carried me to my room. If it's a one-off, I can deal with that, maybe. Things like this heat up and cool down. It's never a one-off. I hummed an acknowledgement as my eyelids became heavy, and Theo squeezed me reassuringly. I won't let anyone hurt you, Ilya. I know. It's the things I don't know that make me nervous. He didn't reply to that, but I knew the next few weeks were going to be nuts. Tightening my arms around Theo's neck, I soaked up his warmth. It was better to focus on him than the looming disasters waiting to happen. This has been Theo, A Dark Mafia Romance. Written by Raven Scott. Narrated by Jack Callahan. Copyright 2020 by Raven Scott Production Copyright by Raven Scott